Welcome everyone to Live at 3D Experience World 2024. Jesse, what's going on, man? Not too much. How are you? It feels like it was just yesterday that we were at the live desk together. Man, I was going to say the same thing like five minutes ago. We were in Nashville. Like I blinked. Here we yeah, are again. Here we are. Um, I remember last year our, our big prop, which we had people signing. Maybe we'll have people sign this prop as well. Maybe. Uh, was we had the, the cowboy hat, remember? Yeah. That was, of course, as you mentioned, that was back in in Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, we're in another temperate uh, city here in the USA, yep. Dallas, Texas. And uh, we had to, and we'll talk about this, uh, I want to leave a little bit, uh, a little bit here, uh, as far as detail for this, this longhorn skull that we've created. But we had to make something that was topical, right? Uh, but yeah, we have people, you can see sort of in the background, we have people piling in for general session. This is sort of a pre-show. We have tons of activities planned for you today. Uh, you probably saw, yep, there we go, there's the camera. Um, we have tons of activities planned for you today. We have, we've, we've had an agenda published for, I think, uh, it feels like forever, yeah. like weeks. Yeah. Um, so we've, yeah. Uh, we flip flop positions at the desk, so now I get to see everybody and be distracted. Yep, had to, uh, had to keep it fresh. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> this, is, this is a big year, right? This is a really big year for the event. Uh, I'm sure you guys saw 25th year of World. Right? We went from SolidWorks World and Evolved into 3D Experience World just a, a few years ago. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I was looking at some of the, some of the event statistics uh, for this year. And for those of you who can't be here, I'm so sorry you, know, you can't be here. We're, we'll try to bring as much as we can of the conference to you here on, uh, on day one. Uh, but I saw you know, there's 100, and we actually played some of these stats on the lead-in, Jesse. Yeah. 130 instructional sessions. Mm. That's a lot. That's a lot. <laughs> Maybe more, more than you can get to in three days, but of course, uh, definitely, a, definitely a, a variety. Yeah, we've, we've talked, Sean, you and I have run into a couple of people just in the you know, past couple of days setting up that this is their first time here. Yeah. And we've, you said, you know, like, it's almost an overwhelming amount of stuff that you could go to. There's always two or three sessions that it's like, okay, which one of these am I going to pick from? Because every time slot, there's like multiples that you want to hit. So that, that's, the, that's the challenging part, I think, sometimes it's just, there's so much, and it's all good. I like, I like this new dynamic. I, <laughs> last year was, of course, the first yeah. year in a while that we were back in person again, uh, which was awesome. You got to sort of re-remember why it was so great to, to be in person versus you know, always doing every single thing virtually. Yeah. Um, but yeah, seeing you get distracted yeah. by, the, by the smiling <laughs> faces, like, hey, look, look they're, uh, yeah, every, they're on internet TV. Yeah, every four <laughs> minutes. Uh, so I mentioned 130 instructional sessions, right? Um, 65, and these are my, well, actually, I'll get to my favorite in just a moment, but uh, 65 hands-on workshops. I was going to call those out as your favorites, so now I want to know what your actual favorites are, because I thought those were your favorites. Well, you know, I, I started here at SolidWorks as a community manager, mm -hmm. and we actually created, I believe, the first meetups at World uh, just about four years ago. So okay. meetups, yeah. we have over 20 meetups. Yeah. Which, uh, which I always tell this story. Uh, yep, there you go, there's the graphics. So we, uh, th that was born out of a conversation I had at a world event. I think it was like 2017, 2018. Yep. And uh, Tom Smith, uh, two-time Model Mania champion, I always yep. tell the story, said, hey, it would be great if you guys had birds of a feather sessions at world, you know, ways that you can meet people that do what you do. Um, you know, basically a, a sort of specialized space you have, I think we're almost at like 5,000 registered attendees. Yeah but a specialized pace to get to know people. So that's, those are my favorite types of sessions. Yeah, and I mean, that makes sense too, because you, you and I were talking, like we, we bumped into some people that it's the first time here, and I can't wait to catch up with some of those people, even yeah. at the end of today, and see what they think. But they, they said, even just within those couple of days, there's, you know, there's nothing going on until just right now. And even just in that short span, it was like, this is already a lot more than I thought it was going to be, you know, coming from the outside. And obviously, you know, Sean, you and I, we try to bring as much, uh, much to you guys who can't come uh, as we can, but you, you can't catch everything. It's just, it's so expansive, you know? So even just showing up before the event and saying, wow, this is a lot more than I expected. Um, yeah, it, I'm excited to check in with those guys today and see what they think. Yep, so we saw, uh, if we could just put on uh, the day one agenda for, for today. Today, the, the way that we tried to structure uh, our proceedings for 3D Experience World, they, they've definitely changed year over year. If you tuned in with us last year, first of all, thank you uh, for, for doing that. Uh, but, but second of all, we tried to make it so that if you really just wanted a taste of what, like, all the, a medley of what the conference had to offer, uh, we really tried to make it so that today was that day. Yeah. Today is going to be the longest stream we have. We're going to about, uh, I guess, yeah, till about 3 o'clock Eastern. Um, but we have 
basically um, almost everything you could uh, hope to see in little glimpses, of course. Yeah. Little experiential glimpses at uh, 3D Experience World. So yeah, we, we have right here, um, you know, the opening general session. Uh, we are not so far away from that. Uh, starting about a half hour in, uh, tour of the Hive, which is like the community yeah. networking space. We'll learn all that's what that's about. Uh, intro to Model Mania, uh, one of the most popular topics, right? Uh, exclusive interview with Manish Kumar, Salary CEO. Uh, could sort of get an extension on all the great product announcements that we'll get during general session, assuredly. Uh, I, I was able to get a sneak peek, so I can, I can say that. <laughs> uh, recess in the playground, so you get to see a little bit of the shop floor. Jesse and I will take our own tour. Uh, we've sort of selectively not gone through uh, a lot of it yet. Yeah, I, I've made maybe like 10 laps through there already, and I'm, I'm excited probably for that session more than any others today because there's just so much in there, so I'm, I'm pumped for that one. Yeah, so we'll spend uh, quite a bit of time. And uh, we're actually going to have some more people as part of this pre-show. It's not just going to be us for <laughs> a half hour. We're going to have people popping in and out. Uh, and actually, I uh, think we have someone here, uh, Arian. Uh, let's see if Arian's... Uh, See, he might. I think he's actually. I think he might be getting uh, mic'd up here. Uh, but let me yeah, actually. Yeah, Arian, one of the guys that we were talking to yesterday, first time here. Be excited to sync up with him at the end of the day and and see. Yeah. So we'll we'll see him see in, in, in just a bit. I actually wanted to let's uh, let's just get right into it. Um, he's one of those people, and this, uh, as far as this conference goes, right? Like this is one of those events where you're walking by people. I think we all know what the feeling's like. You're walking by people in corridors. And you're like, I know that face from somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Like, I kind of want to shake your hand. Of course, like day, day one, you're like fully immersed in the, yeah. in the socialization again, right? You're like, oh, I'll, I'll just introduce myself, right? But Ariane is definitely, definitely one of those people, right? That, um, you know, you look at and you're like, yeah, I've seen you specifically on YouTube. Yeah. Uh, so we, we were with Ariane actually yesterday. Uh, yeah, I think he's, he's over there. He's, he's doing some event activity. Uh, but we were actually with him yesterday, first time meeting in person. Yeah. But we benefited from his videos, and we actually had him on an episode of SolidWorks Live uh, not too long ago, but it was, it was all virtual. Yep. Um, so he runs a channel uh, called SolidWorks with Aryan, right? And it's basically dedicated, uh, it's SolidWorks Tutorials with Aryan. So it's basically dedicated to uh, showcasing tutorials and how to's. Uh, with SolidWorks. I think he has something, some crazy number of subscribers, right? Yeah, I, I will have to ask him when he gets on, but yeah, it's a lot. Yeah, so if, we have you've, a, uh, if you've ever searched for SolidWorks anything on YouTube, you've, you've seen his stuff. Yep, so we have a, we have a full session. It's like an hour long. Uh, we were actually uh, kind of co-planning it with, with Ariane yesterday uh, over lunch, and uh, it's, it's a SolidWorks session. It's a SolidWorks technical session. I'm really excited for the tech sessions at the desk this year. We, we were kind of brainstorming that a little bit after Nashville last year, and we were like, oh, man, we really want some tech sessions here. I'm, I'm so excited we got that to happen. That's going to be super fun. Yeah, that, Both that, of those I'm, I'm really excited for. That will be uh, a ton of fun. Um, so yeah, we're going to have Ariane there. Um, and yeah, we, we'd even show a, a clip of, of Ariane's channel here. Uh, we've been talking about, yeah, you, you see his face, you definitely know. So if, yeah, if we just pull up that clip of, of Ariane's uh, YouTube channel, uh, you'll definitely sort of recognize him there. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll pull that up. But yeah, it, it's, uh, he's one of those people, again, you just search SolidWorks tutorials with Ariane. Uh, he has all sorts of tutorials there, all sorts of playlists. Um, oh, yeah, there we go. Uh, so, yeah, there he is. Yep, so we met him first time in person uh, yesterday. Uh, so his, actually, his website looks, or his, his YouTube at this point looks, this is actually his channel intro video. Looks a good, good bit different, a lot more content, a lot of more diversity uh, of content. But, yeah, uh, he's going to be here with us at the live desk. And like you said, those tactical sessions, uh, we'll have one on day three as well with Kara yeah. Tucker from Gibson. Uh, so yeah, definitely. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to both of those. We were just having coffee yesterday, just sitting around a table. The laptop came out immediately. We went right to SolidWorks tips and tricks. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we were swapping tips. He taught us some things. We taught him some things already. So we were. We've, 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 learned, we've learned stuff. With we just started just just a moment ago. We've already learned stuff. What was what was the one that he he mentioned? It was a uh, edit sketch uh, circular the sketch pattern, yep. pattern. Editing yeah pattern yep so you just go into relations you can do this today i and it's like no one knows everything yep. about solidworks right like he you go in uh, you right click on the uh, the the relation for your circular or sketch uh, circular pattern and yeah you basically an can just edit. edit edit pattern right there who knew did not know that um, i don't remember seeing that in any book either that's the kind of stuff you can learn that's why you come right <laughs> like a little stuff like that that you take back to your to your jobs. Um, so like I mentioned, uh, Ariane will be joining us a little bit later. I think, he, again, he got tied up. But you, you walk down these corridors, like you just see everyone. You know, he probably has fans like, hey, like, let's take a selfie, right? We've been saying that. So this, 
I don't know if you can really see on the cameras, but this goes a long way down. It's like a 15-minute walk from where, <laughs> where we are down to the end of this, this hallway. But when you add in all of the people that you want to see, it turns into like a 50-minute walk from here to here. You just keep getting caught by somebody. It's like, hey, how's it going? Haven't yep. seen it. This is the only time of year we get to see each other. So yeah. it's, uh, it's one of those things where you can't get anywhere on time because you run into five people that you wanted to talk to. And this is your chance. Yep. You definitely get your socialization in. You definitely yep. get your steps in and your learning in. Um, so I mentioned Ariane will drop by with us later. It'll actually be like the last like big session for today. Yeah. Uh, if you go to our YouTube channel, uh, SolidWorks, uh, so the SolidWorks YouTube, you'll see all the streams that we have uh, for tomorrow and the next day. We'll, we'll continue to talk about those throughout the day to remind you. Uh, yeah, just wanted the playlist, to say that. probably the best way. The playlist is, yeah. yeah. So if you go to the playlist tab, or probably even on the, the home tab by now, there's actually a place you can go. Um, and then 3dexperienceworld.com. We should have, at this point, like a live button, uh, like a blue button that you just click on it and go to whatever is live. And if we're not live, it believe it just goes right to that playlist you mentioned. Um, so yeah, uh, let's, uh, let's, let's keep, keep moving on here. Yeah, and we'll have a couple reminders of that too, because we did change things up a little bit, multiple links. Last year, we just did one link for each day. So uh, we made it a little bit more targeted. Hopefully, that will, that will help you guys find the info that you're looking for now and later on. But we'll have a, we'll have a few reminders throughout. You'll, as you're heading over to the Hive after general session, I'll give a reminder on where to find us and Yep. How to keep going. If you found us already, you're one step one. You there you go. Step one. So we actually have, I believe, uh, some guests over there. Uh, so we have uh, Leonard, Leonard Tyndall, uh, who's another person who is uh, nowhere near located uh, over in Dallas. I see him over there as well as uh, Matthew Hall. Uh, whenever these guys are, are ready to get mic'd up. Oh, they're walking over now. Hey, guys. Hey. What's going on? Going, Great John? to see you. Good to see you. Good to see you. All right. Leonard. Uh, I'm so used to, and, and we're so used to, we were talking about uh, Arian from SolidWorks Tutorials with Arian and saying how, like, oh, we're so used to seeing him online, like online only. Uh, I haven't seen you in quite some time, but I've seen you definitely very often on LinkedIn with your SolidWorks <laughs> tips yeah. from the train. Uh, I wanted to give you just, just a platform. We have, we have hundreds and eventually thousands of viewers uh, viewing online. I wanted to give you a bit of a platform just to talk about, you know, what is... Uh, uh, your tips from the train, you know, what are they about? What inspires you to make them? Well, uh, basically, I commute, a lot, I commute a lot to work. So I have maybe an hour and a half to work. Mm -hmm. And, well, I just uh, ran out of Netflix, so I started doing <laughs> solo <work> tips and tricks. <laughs> uh, and now, yeah, and now I've also gone over to doing 3D experience and, yeah. It's, uh, it's interesting. I, I often feel I run out of Netflix. It feels like uh, an impossible problem. But the thing is, I never know what to watch. So eventually, I just quit. Yeah, <laughs> <exactly>. <laughs> I'm sure it's a, it's a problem that's, uh, that's pretty common to all. So uh, you are not from the US. No. I'm uh, um, from Denmark. You're from Denmark. Yeah. Uh, and you guys, you are from the US. Yes, I am. But you guys traveled together. And you got here in sort of a, a uh, I'll call it circumspect, Weird way, <laughs> uh, different way yes. yeah, yeah, different way for sure. Nope. Could, could you could you tell our viewers like what, exactly what you guys and and we will reveal this kind of throughout the, the the show what we have on the proceedings. But can you reveal to our viewers kind of what you guys did? Yeah, you want, <laughs> want me to take this? Yeah, sure. Yeah, so uh, okay, yeah, uh, no, no, you go ahead. <laughs> Come on, let me. Yeah. No, you guys have been together too long. Yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> they're getting a well, little punchy. We have a mutual interest in trains. We both love trains, and I, I've always watched his tips from the trains on LinkedIn. And last year, I proposed to him, well, why don't we go to World uh, via train? You know, get to America, we go by train, and let's see how we can plan it through the three D experience platform, and see what kind of carbon savings we can get out of by going via train. Yeah. You guys made a made a try. If we could just pull that up, the uh, the, the journey uh, that that they've that they've started here. Uh, I think we have a clip. It was like one of your first videos, and we'll just kind of have it in the in yeah. the background here. But uh, yeah, so you mentioned a little bit about you know kind of the the carbon footprint yep. um, and all that. And you were you you've been pretty prolific with the amount of videos you've created, yeah. just capturing this journey. Yeah, talk about the the process and everything. I mean, I wanted to do something special since I don't know when I get to do this again. <laughs> So I thought, okay, uh, first I want to do a prologue, which I did four of them. And then afterwards I want to create three, um, three videos about the journey itself. I mean, the prologue, I wanted to do something with um, different styles each time. So uh, as you can see, I've done, I did something about uh, what's called, um, sorry, I just lost, uh, lost it there. <laughs> <laughs> Heist movies, I did yeah. something with that. Uh, the standard documentary, I tried to do the different styles with that, so yeah. That was fun to do. That's awesome. Well, look, hey, look, there's general session. 
Uh, there's, there's someone in there right now. Of course, if you have ever tuned in to Worlds, you know that eventually there will be a stampede of yeah. people. <laughs> pardon the pun. Uh, but <laughs> but uh, yeah, this it's the safest packed. place to be. Yeah. So you, yeah. chose, you, you, chose can, you can hide here. You can be safe with us. Awesome. Uh, but Matthew, I wanted to mention to you guys, you briefly, uh, before you guys go, I know you're, look, you're antsy to get your seat. Oh, there's people look, heading in right oh, there. They're running. There we go. So you guys got to get your seats. We've got to let yeah, you go. Yeah, but um, <laughs> got to give a quick shout out to the, uh, the communities, online yes. communities, right? Uh, being yeah. in person is great. But where can our users go? Uh, what's the best way uh, for them to find communities, ways to get to know one another? Yeah, to continue engaging with us, just go to swim.3ds.com. We have a newly refreshed uh, platform experience, yeah. so check it out and continue conversations there. Ask your SolidWorks questions. And there's a great community of helpful users that just want to help people succeed through our communities. So. Awesome. Well, guys, look, the seats are going to be taken. I'm going to let you go. <laughs> yeah. But uh, thank you. Thank you so Thanks, much for, for jumping on. Later. Thanks, Jesse. Thank you. See you, man. Thank Great you. to see you guys. Good Thanks. to see you. Yep, so uh, a familiar, familiar sight. Uh, there we go. People were, people were walking in. We got the lights, we got the, got the music, got the atmosphere. We will uh, be pitching it soon uh, to, to that kind of area, getting closer and closer to general session. Uh, but yeah, we, we'll have to get seats eventually too. Yeah, I, I hope I so. I hope someone's looking out for us. I, yeah, I was going to say, I, I didn't actually have anybody save me a seat, so hopefully, uh, hopefully somebody's remembered us. <laughs> you guys are probably wondering though, uh, again, we're having people popping in and out of the desk as part of this pre-show activity. I hope you're finding it entertaining. Uh, feel free to leave a comment, like the video, subscribe, of course, uh, to the SolidWorks YouTube. But I wanted to bring on uh, another set of individuals uh, to actually tell a bit more of the story of how this uh, Longhorn Skull was, uh, was created. I think we have Noah Zeef and Sean Farrell. Let's see, see these, if these guys are out there. Noah, Sean, you guys out there? There they are. Yep, I see them. Let's see, so is this one, I, I actually picked this one up. Is this like in one piece? Yeah, well, I, th I think it was Hey, what's together. up, Sean? Hey, oh, guys. Sean? Good to see you. Good to see you, too. No, what's hey up, Sean, man? How are you? Good to see you. So yeah, we had to, uh, we had to briefly discuss uh, this design in the beginning. We didn't want to like give everything away because we felt like we'd be taking uh, some credit away from people like yourselves and Gian, uh, who who made uh, this th these designs especially. I think they're so cool. So what we have here, I guess this is just like a, a sort of fully formed, uh, just sort of a regular longhorn skull, right? So, and then that one's like fully sort of. Uh, digitized, fully modernized, and then we have the one in the middle, which is the largest one, right? Which is uh, sort of uh, almost like a transitional shape. Yeah, yeah, kind of like laid out here, so it's clear. Yeah, the, the kind of backstory was um, we always tried to do a project like this. Last year we did the action figures. Yeah. And this year the logo of 3D Experience World was kind of this half digitized longhorn, and we thought let's try and bring that to life. So that's what we kind of did. And really what we tried to do is kind of include the design evolution of Zaldwerks. So um, this uh, left horn here was made with traditional surfacing techniques, you know, like ones you would find in Zaldwerks. And then it got more complicated for this longhorn skull here. So shout out to our man on the street, Gian uh, yep. Khaleesi, who designed that in X-Shape, which is our cloud subdivision modeler. And then he sent it over to me and I took it into our next cloud app called X-Generative Design. So we added this mesh pattern and then we got even more complicated with this last horn here. We uh, included one of the newest uh, products on the works portfolio called Lattice Designer. Okay. And we kind of added this gyroid uh, shape. Kind of gets kind of heavy, but yeah. And I think Noah, not to interrupt you, but yeah, I think yeah. just the supporting visual. I believe we have a we have a video of the of the three D model. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. If we could look at some of the the three D modeling that you did here. Uh, so I believe yeah, you mentioned it was a X generative design. Yeah. So here we go. Uh, so x generative design, I think what we're looking at here uh, in this, this animation um, that you captured yeah, so is actually self-division model, right? Yeah. yeah, so this is X-Shape, mm -hmm. which heard, uh, we've heard about for a number of years. I would say in the past, and surely you're, you know, you're the product expert here, but in the past year, there have been so many enhancements to X-Shape. Oh, yeah. So many. Definitely. Um, but yeah, so you, you basically use that to get the sort of core surface shape. And then, uh, yeah, we'll see in a moment. You give us some, some clips of... Uh, the sort of X-generative, more sort of algorithmic looking yeah. uh, design. You know, what's yeah. crazy about this process to me was we kind of kicked this idea around for a few minutes, right? And then we we're like, okay, who, who are the people for the job? Obviously, you know, you, Gian. Within like, the, by the end of the day, these guys, it's something spit back to us. Like, it, it's so ridiculously fast how you guys were able to you know, put something together and, and bring that. Obviously, we ended up going around in circles a little bit and playing with some different ideas and things like that. But this idea went from like 
concept to fruition in like an afternoon. Yeah. Well, we had a lot of fun doing it, you know. And the great part about it is all of these apps they're made to work together. Yeah. So it wasn't like we had to take so much time using like different softwares. They're all on the platform. You know, uh, Lattice Designer is an A app, so we could take this geometry, bring it right in there. So it wasn't even like we had to spend that much time going back and forth between yeah. products. It was all right in front of us. Yeah, yeah, true. Yeah. Very cool, very cool. I, I wanted to, to mention as well, you know, the way that we got this printed, you know, our connections. The 3D Experience Lab network. I know you're, you're part of the 3D Experience Lab team. Yeah, uh, yeah tell, our, tell our viewers a little bit about, I guess, the, the role that, that, that 3D printing plays in a, in a project like this. Yeah, so um, 3D Experience Lab is a startup accelerator for Dusso System and uh, we have fabrication labs all over the world. Um, four of them so far. One in Boston, one in Munich, one in Pune, India, and, and one in uh, uh, Paris where the headquarters is. So at each of these labs we have, you know, 3D printers, uh, laser cutters, um, and various, you know, forms of CNC machinery to help uh, startups and makers prototype their, their designs. Very cool. Yeah, and I think we have a clip too of, of the actual uh, 3D print of um, some of these designs. And uh, oh, and what we have here, right, uh, in the background, we have the X Shape Masterclass, uh, which, of course, X Shape was a huge part of this. Because, uh, you know, you look at a conference like this, especially, you know, I know you guys, you're watching virtually, you're probably thinking, there's probably all these sessions on these, these apps that I could learn how to model, you know, better and faster. Uh, I feel like I'm missing out. You know, of course, you can come to 3D Experience World 2025, never miss out again. Uh, but, this x shape masterclass, this is something that you and Gian worked quite hard on, right? Yeah, this is over an hour and a half worth of subdivision sculpting content. So if you're wondering where to start, you want to know how to make these cool designs, um, it's all on YouTube for free. You could also get the start files uh, for free. So yeah, definitely uh, check out that. You guys that did resource. an amazing job on this yeah. course. Yeah. I think, Thank and this you. is well worth taking because if you're going from you know conventional surfacing, like you were saying, to something like sub D modeling, it's it looks really easy, and it's like, oh wow, I can like I can just push and pull this. But it's really a different mindset of of working. Once you get that mindset, then it's very fluid. But it would be easy to go in and say, I don't I don't know how to get this to do what I want. So running through some of those courses that you guys put together are is a great idea to just give you a kickstart and say, okay, now I understand the the process because it is it's a different method of thinking yeah, uh, there's of learning modeling. Curve. Yes, there's a learning curve. For yes, sure. and once you get the hang of it, it's like, oh man, this is just like. I can just do what I think, but you have to figure out how to think to, to right. get it to do exactly. what you want. And yep. I think there's a video there. Of it yeah, I really enjoyed it. This felt like there, this should be like an ASMR experience. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 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 I, was, I was looking for like, <laughs> we're sending you mics next time. <laughs> it always surprises people. They always ask, what orientation did you print it in? And actually, this is the SLS model. Mm -hmm. So this was in a different technology, but the, for the FDM technology, we actually printed it like that. Okay. Ah. So we added support underneath the nose and stuff. Um, but yeah, it, it came out really great. The, I'm really happy with thank it. Thank you guys for all awesome. your effort on that. Well, I think we're, we're actually going to uh, head over uh, shortly to the, uh, just right outside of general session, right? We have a live feed of general session to Gian. He has a couple special guests, but I want to thank you guys for, for coming on. Yeah. Thank you so thank much. You so much. Yeah, yeah, please grab a Thanks seat. Yeah. And maybe save us a seat as well. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I just saw, uh, uh, Jess, yep, I just saw a glimmer of, of Gian. I think he's, he's, he's out there. Uh, but yeah, he's he's out there with with the people right outside of with general the session. Uh, he's he's getting set up, trying to find trying to find some special guests. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, the, it's trying it's to find some special guests. We're I think we're in a <laughs> sea of special guests. Oh, see, the problem is not finding special <laughs> guests. I should clarify. It's it's getting people on the microphone. They're like, I need to get a seat. Like right. I need to get a seat in the front. Right. Like, yeah, it's I, a I conflict of interest. Yeah. We're, we're we should have planned maybe a little bit differently. Yep. So I think we have I think we have Gian right now, if I'm not mistaken. There he is. What's up, Gian? Hey. Thanks, everyone. There you go. Thank you. We're here. It's absolutely electric here in Dallas as everybody is flooding into general session. We got designers, we have inventors, engineers, students, makers, everyone. I'm here with one of our talented models. Modelers, Alan Vargatu, and I think he holds the record for the most amount of sessions ever presented at World. We'll see, uh, Alan. I'm not sure about that, but yeah, yeah, this is something that we enjoy doing. Presenting How many here. so far? I think I, I kept count. So uh, 43. So at the end of this week, they're going to be like 43. 43, and you have five, right? This this year? Yes. Five sessions. Yes. And so so you're, you're not sleeping then? Just all coffee. You don't need to sleep, right? Basically. Uh, no, no, no. I'm sleeping well. I'm sleeping yeah, well. Sleeping we're well. we're good. Yeah. All right. You're just such a pro at this. So what are you most excited for at World this year? Meeting meeting my 
fellow SOLIDWORKS users, uh, being part of the community, it's, 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 it's a blast. Yes. And uh, pretty much learning, not only by attending other presentations, but also by presenting, because the audience is coming back with questions, with ideas, with even disagreeing with me, I can learn something, right? So it's all about brainstorming. And of course, seeing the crazy new products and the enhancement to the products that are coming. Wow, 43 presentations. Do you still have some users disagreeing with you, like making it better, keeping uh, the conversation going? I, I hope I hope they will disagree with me because uh, SolidWorks is, allows the user the full freedom to get the job done so many different ways, right? Right. And uh, they might come with better ways or tweaking certain, certain techniques. And this is what I'm after. I'm just looking for the ultimate uh, workflow, so to increase productivity, to make your life easier, and uh, really to go home rested because you didn't have to fight with the model. And exactly. Yeah. yeah. We don't want to be fighting with it. We exactly. want. To, we all want to model like total pros, just like Absolutely. you. Absolutely. <laughs> well, thank you so much. Thank Alan. you very much. I'm super excited to see some of your presentations, and we'll catch you soon. All right. And I have two more, two more extremely talented people, just in general. I've known them forever. They are YouTube famous at this point now. Um, I'm going to let them talk about their YouTube channel, Our Next Make. Uh, Chin Lu and Sal Lama, great to have you here. Thank you. Actually, I'm going to have Sal talk about Our Next Make. Our Next Make, yeah. So Our Next Make is your YouTube channel. You guys have been doing for about a year now. That's okay. Yeah, okay. So can you tell us a little bit about it? How's yeah, it so yeah. So uh, hopefully everyone knows by now that SolidWorks for Makers is out in the, in the world, and you can you can get your uh, hand on the license. We uh, started a year ago making projects every, every week and posting them on YouTube to inspire people to make whatever they want to see in their world. In their world, like you can make it, you can design it in SolidWorks, and you you can actually create it. It's really amazing. Yeah. So I'm gonna also plug that if you're here, you should definitely go over to the Maker Zone because our booth is there as well, and we have this awesome puzzle box that is just completely one of a kind. If you love escape rooms, you gotta go try it out. And there's a lot more stuff in the Maker Zone. Do you want me to talk about it? Yeah, please tell me what, what else is going on in the Maker Zone. What have you got your hands on? Yeah, so we have um, a bunch of cool stuff like combat robots. We have you can come and build your own droids. There's like R2D2 going around and. Gil, the, the, also another droid. You can also see this animatronics for um, like Wally, how his head works. Yeah. Um, and there's so much more. There's also, I think, MIT's there with Fab in a Box. So, so there's, you know, you're probably gonna get sucked in, and you won't know the, what's happening in the rest yeah. of the conference because you'll be at the Maker Zone. Yeah. If you step in the playground, there's a good chance you might not step out. Exactly. But that's amazing. And our next make has been going on for about a year now, right? So how many of you guys, videos have you guys made at this point? You know, you keep in track, well, like Alan. Well, yeah. <laughs> The, the YouTube helps us keep track. We I think we're at 200 videos, but a, lo a lot of them are shorts. Yeah. We have, I think, 50 full-length videos where we actually go deep into designing and making the project. Uh, and we cover a wide variety of skills and manufacturing techniques. So we love working with wood. We love laser cutters and 3D printers and CNC routers. We try and mix it up, and we show all the things that you can do with SOLIDWORKS for makers. It's not just SOLIDWORKS. You've got X design, X shape. It's, it's a ton of really fun stuff. I know, I've seen you guys use X-Design and X-Shape a little bit in there before, and I know I have a couple designs myself in X-Shape that we're gonna make happen this year, right? Are we gonna make them? Oh yeah, we are planning a trip down to visit you and work yeah. on a project for sure. All right, definitely. Well, this is amazing. Is there anything else that you guys wanna share with our online audience before we get started with general session? I mean, it's just, I don't know if you hear the buzz. It's so electrifying and it's, I think everyone's really excited just to see what's going to happen. And I mean, there's so much interactivity, so much networking happening. Yes. And I've learned from so many people that's either been a veteran using SOLIDWORKS or are just starting out. So it's just really nice to hear all those stories and just really have great conversations. So, absolutely. I want to say one more Amazing. thing. Yeah. Please. I'm so glad that everybody watching today is watching, but if you can get here next year, we want to see you in person. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Please, please get here in person. It's not the same when you're tuning in remotely. You'll get to see a lot of the cool stuff, but it's just different when you're here. You know, you get more out of it. And like I was talking to Alan before, you know, it could be one tip or trick that really just makes the whole trip worth it to come here. And you just don't know unless you show up at these sessions. All right, well, I'll see you guys in there in general session. Thank you so much. Good seeing you again. Good to see you too. All right, thanks, Jesse and Sean. Back to you guys. So we got, we, we are like 30 seconds, a minute away, whatever it is. Uh, Lonnie Johnson, we have to talk about that. Yeah. So keynote speaker for today. 
Uh, if you don't know, inventor of the Super Soaker, mm -hmm. the Nerf Blaster, and many, many patents. <laughs> yeah, much more. Uh, so we'll, have, we'll also have a bit of an extended conversation uh, with, with Lonnie for uh, the pre-show for day two's general session tomorrow. Um, but yeah, I'm excited to hear from Lonnie. I, yeah. I, I've actually, admittedly, I've never heard, seen him give a keynote style talk, but he's always been a fascinating, you know, of course, any, any guest that we're set to talk to, you research them and you kind of learn what they're all about, you yeah. know, how they, how they think, uh, the things they've done. Uh, every single interview I've read of his, he's, he's just a fascinating person. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm really, really excited about that. Of course, uh, general session, what you're about to watch momentarily is always chock full of product announcements. We mentioned the keynotes. So really, especially day one. Day one is like the day where you see like a big splash. If you're a SOLIDWORKS user and you're wondering, you know, what's, what's next for me? You know, what's next for me in, in the areas of design with SOLIDWORKS on desktop? Uh, whether it's uh, simulation tools, whether it's manufacturing, you know, anything that you're looking for. Uh, data management, of course, that's a big, yeah. big topic, especially last year with the announcement of cloud services uh, back at World. So general is going to be huge. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's going to be a good one. And obviously, it's the general session. It's <laughs> right. It's, it's first thing in the morning. It's what everybody looks forward to. It sets the tone for the whole event. So uh, it's going to be a good one. Everybody always enjoys it. We always enjoy it. It's going to be no exception this year. Absolutely, absolutely. So we're, we're kind of, we can see, we can have a, a live feed right here. You have a live feed right here of, of general session. Everyone's still getting seated. We are just moments away. Uh, but yeah, let's go through. I, I know viewers kind of pop in and out. We had a 30 minute pre-show, right? Uh, which hopefully you guys have found it entertaining and enriching, kind of seeing some of the sights and sounds and the faces really of 3D Experience World 2024, the 25th year of, of World. But yeah, let's, let's talk about this ag agenda again. So right after, we'll keep this stream going after general session. Right after that, we have the tour of the Hive. It's the community networking space. It's really the heart. You know, if you're a champion, a SOLIDWORKS Champions program member, if you're a user group leader, that's the big place. And then Model Mania, right? That's, that's huge, right, Jesse? Yeah, yeah, Model Mania is always, it's always one of those fan favorite things, right, you know? And it's one of the things that coming to this event, you know, Sal just talked about, like, if you haven't been here, you've got to get to one of these events. That's one of the cool things to do in person, right? Those, the announcements when you know, they, they bring up the winners, it, it, it's just, everyone loves that. It's so much fun. And obviously, if you're one of the ones who wins it, it's, it's such an exciting thing to be a part of. It's, it, yeah, it, we, and I, I had this, this interview I, I did with Jen, Dor Jen Dirksen. She actually is running Model Mania. Um, and so she was kind of taking us through the, the, the sights and sounds of the booth and you know, what that feels like. And I'm just getting word, and we can <laughs> see right here, I'm just getting word that General Session's about to start. So thank you so much. Tune in for General Session, all that. We will be back uh, all throughout the day with more content with 3D Experience World. of the sun is 27, 27 million, million degrees, degrees Fahrenheit. Fahrenheit. That's 7,000 degrees Celsius. 7,000. But how much energy does an idea it take? In space. Underwater. In the air. It all it it all it all it all in your head. In your head. The Earth is covered in 140 million square miles of water. 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 The world's oceans contain enough potential energy to power the planet. How much energy does a design take to come alive? 
to move, breathe, to soar, change the world. What powers this time, this life, this thought, these ideas, these designs? Who creates it if you don't? If, if we, we don't. don't. How much energy does it take to redesign the world? To change how we live together, for each other, for this world, for today. And the next. And the next. And the next. And the next. Imagine what's possible if we imagine what's possible. Imagine. 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 Please welcome Tracy Wilson. Good morning! Ah, oh, good morning, everyone! Welcome to Dallas, and welcome to 3D Experience World 2024! Uh, yes, I love the energy of this amazing community. And starting with the wave yet again, what a way to bring it this morning. I hope you've all had an amazing year since we've been together last. Now, I know you are eager to get right into the great content we have planned for you over the next three days. So let's get right to it. Please welcome Senior Vice President of 3D Experience Works, Jean-Paul Bessy! Thank you, Tracy. Oh, let me, let me lock the car, you never know. <laughs> Good morning. Welcome to 3D Experience World 2024. I'm so happy to be with more than 4,500 of you here in the auditorium and uh, more than 10,000 connected to uh, the live stream. Oh, that is a 1965 Shelby Cobra retrofitted to be all electric by our friends of eMuscle Cars here in Dallas. And thank you, Kevin Emre, for making this possible. There is another beautiful car on display in the playground for you to admire. The car goes from zero to 60 miles per hour in 2.3 seconds, 625 horsepower. Amazing. I said, let me try that. But they put a 5% limit on the power. That was the only way, the only way for me to be able to enter uh, on stage with the car. So I said, okay, disappointing, but okay. I, I know my son Giovanni is very jealous. He's a, a car enthusiast and a car uh, hacker. I'm sure he would have found a way to disable that 5% lock in no time. When he was 16 and he got his first car, he founded a club called the Night Runner. I suspect for not so legal car racing. So my wife asked me, what is your son up to? I said, don't worry, honey, it is a chess club. <laughs> you know, I, I don't have a very strict parenting style. Anyway, my son is amazing and he is SolidWorks certified. This event is what? Our best ever. Not just because of what you will see here on stage, we have an amazing program, and what you will see in all the breakout sessions all over the convention center, but because of you. This is a, an amazing community, the strongest, one of the strongest community in the world. And we have been together for a very long time. In fact, this is the 25th anniversary of this event. So we will reflect a little on the past 25 years, but more interestingly, will work together to imagine what the next 25 years will look like. Now, speaking of the future, I'd like to welcome on stage the person who has been our compass and has defined our future for so many years. Please welcome the, the SOSYSTEM Executive Chairman, Bernard Charles. Hello. 
Gian Paolo, I envy you. I want to drive this car. Yeah, but we need to disable that 5%. I agree, I agree. <laughs> I'm so happy to be with you. And I was supposed to be, it was supposed last year to be my last presentation for all of you. Uh, Pascal Dalloz, my successor, took over as a chief executive officer of Dassault System uh, on January 1st. And um, I had to pull back. But I love to be on stage to talk about the future. And uh, this is why. Uh, by the way, Pascal uh, had to stay close to his uh, father. He got a health accident uh, this weekend, and I told him, okay, I'll do my best to replace you. Anyway, that being said, uh, I've been uh, developing that system for the last 40 years. Uh, what a journey. And uh, now it's the leadership of Pascal that will take care of you. He loves SolidWorks, he loves the brands, and he has a wonderful uh, career at Dassault System. We have been working together for 20, 25 years almost. Uh, he's an engineer by design. He was in R&D. Then he took the strategy, all the brands, 12 world-class brands now at Dassault System, uh, including, of course, SolidWorks. And then he became chief financial officer, chief operating officer, and now he is the right man at the right place for the next 25 years. He and I developed the roadmap for the 2040 uh, uh, vision. Uh, it's well architected today. And I want to talk to you about a few of those ideas because you are the most vibrant design community on the planet. Do you agree with that? Yeah. Of course. I remember to be buying this startup company, SolidWorks, in 1996. Uh, in 1997, a year after the IPO of Dassault System, which I did, on uh, look at how we have been able to build a wonderful world leadership on the design excellence. So where is design going forward? We have unflattened the world together, making 3D available for more people around the globe, and, and now it's accelerating. We have introduced the, the idea of the platform, we have moved the power of SOLIDWORKS to take advantage of cloud, and this is going on with an extraordinary uh, speed now. And of course, the question is, what are we going to do with the big elephant called AI? And how is it going to play in the new world of design? Uh, I want to talk to you briefly about it and show you a few illustrations which are going to be available in the platform on the, what I call the magic SOLIDWORKS, connecting modeling simulation on AI. Because, of course, the time has come to reinvent the way design is done, to reinvent how life cycle goes from product life cycle to resources life cycle. Because one day you will have to design your waste. You will have to design not only the product, not only the experience that your consumers are having, but designing also the waste so it can be a resources for someone else. This is what is happening. And the future of design is now a big play around the world. So because life is magic and the power of design is magic, I would like to illustrate to you a few things which are really illustrating where we are going with the magic of design. Uh, let's imagine we have to design. I would have loved to design this car, but a bike, an electric bike. OK, in the future, you will have a new user interface that tells you, you will, you will talk to Magic SolidWorks saying, show me an underbar made of recycled materials. And the system will automatically uh, select it. Then you can ask Magic SolidWorks, can you create for me a mimic of a Picasso art? And I want to sketch it. And could you, could you create a part that will, co will come from that shape? And the system will automatically launch all the processes to really recreate from that sketch the 3D object. But you can also ask, Magic SolidWorks, can you reduce the weight? Give me 
different alternatives to reduce the weight. And in a few minutes, the AI, the Magic SolidWorks, will launch all the design apps on simulation to really generate automatically collection of solutions, design solutions for you to pick from. So the future of design, in our view, is the power of revealing connection between modeling, simulation, on AI, all inside the platform. In fact, we started this 10 years ago. It was used for a very, very confidential program uh, to do generative design for certain very advanced defense program. And now we are at the third generation of those AI engine to integrate them in the platform. So the 3D experience platform powering the magic SOLIDWORKS is going to provide through all applications new type of AI-based interfaces to create and optimize and evaluate different design alternatives. Another example is the power of universes. We are doing virtual twin everywhere for everything, for everyone. So let's assume, in this case, Laura, uh, a consumer, wants to set up. And I remember last year I talked to you about Home by Me and the gigantic content of information available there. Laura wants to scan her um, room, and she wants to redesign. So she will really scan it. The AI, Magic AI, will create the room, and she will be able to select from different furniture, different ambiances. She will be able to select, I like this, I would prefer that style. Can you merge this with this other? And the AI engine will reveal to her all possible alternatives to create and reshape. So here you are, you scan, the AI engine rebuilt the room, and from there you can adopt, adapt the styling of the room automatically by just picking what others have been doing and publishing on their social network called Home by Me, sharing those information on creating an environment. We call this the new, new universes, whereby virtual twins, what you design every day, will be able to merge with the reality of the context in which your clients are going to use the products you design. Because at the end of the day, the value in your customer eyes is the value of the use of what you design every day. And the value of these universes is really what some others call metaverse, omniverse. At the core of the future of the solar system is these universes merging everything together. This available on the cloud in a highly secure environment. And you know, the massive content of information available across the planet of all design which have been done, past on future ideas can be fully exploited, really revealing the IP which is inside. The fact that cloud is revealing that is a way to share this new type of knowledge with the highest level of cybersecurity standards. And I know many of you using cloud today have shared with us, with John Paolo and us, how critical the cybersecurity is becoming for your world, for the world of designs. So in the future, the next 25 years, it's about integrating modeling, simulation, AI, to create virtual twins on virtual universes where users, designers, will be able to create things from the gigantic patrimony you have established with your clients that you can share together when it's authorized, of course. Welcome to this new world and more to be revealed. Those capabilities that you have seen will be available in the next 12 months and will show you a totally new experience with the magic of SOLIDWORKS. So John Paolo, I think you are supposed to join me back here. Are you driving the car? Are you racing? I, I, was, I was playing with it. <laughs> so, I think, Gianpaolo, you know Pascal very well. You have been working with him for so many years. Uh, 
uh, on the, I trust that you two are going to design the future of how magic SOLIDWORKS can be revealed to the world. Okay, okay. Thank you very much. Enjoy the, the event. And thanks again for your passion, vibrant pa pa passion. The world of design is a big world, and this is what we do all for you. Yeah. All the best. Thank Tom you. Paolo. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Bernard, for this commitment, this amazing vision. I think we have a strong plan for the next 25 years, don't we? Anyway, let me take you back uh, 25 years ago and revisit SOLIDWORKS in those early days. I'm sure many of you remember how SOLIDWORKS looked like back then, you know? At that time, engineers were uh, mostly designing steel on drawing tables or 2D CAD. The early 3D CAD was uh, very complicated and also very expensive. Now, SOLIDWORKS changed all of that, offering a vision of a more intuitive way to move ideas from the mind of you, of the designers, directly into 3D. And at a price point and on computers that everybody could afford. Back then, it was a radical idea, and you were wondering for sure if you could trust the promise of such a young company. I'm sure that some of you back in the day were thinking, change is difficult. Can I trust this company? Can I put the future of my career into SOLIDWORKS? But you know, first some of you, then many, took the leap, and this community was born. And uh, together, we changed the game forever. And along the way, we built a mutual respect and trust. I would say that the trust that we have now is the best outcome of the past 25 years. We have been here for you and with you for all this time, sometimes uh, arguing, always listening, but we never let you down. We never broke our mutual trust. 25 years, that first convention of SOLIDWORKS, the world looks different. You look different. I look different a little bit. The early adopters are now managing large business, complex situations, successful. And some of you are also mentoring the next generation of designers, but again, you find yourself at the crossroad because again, we are here to offer a radical new vision for the next 25 years. Accurate 3D digital models are not sufficient anymore. We need to work together in a different way. We need to bring those models as close as possible to reality, optimizing every ounce of material and see how they affect all aspects of real life before they are realized. We wanted to offer you the tools to imagine, simulate, and create the world you wanted to live in. For this, we have built a platform architecture that can scale from the microstructure of material to the macrostructure of an entire city. We have built an artificial intelligence based backbone that can model, reuse, and enhance your knowledge. We have built an infrastructure that can keep your data safe, always available, and yet put all your constituency, your, your employees, customers, and supply chain together in one unified place. The solid walls that you know and love is the cornerstone of the story and at the center of this uh, beautiful architecture. And this is 3D experience works. It comes with a better way for you to create better products and the new vision of the virtual world that can improve and extend the real world. Today, like 25 years ago, we are with you along this transformation. Because the only company that will survive in the future are those that we create better products, higher quality, optimizing technology and resources. I think we have a key to help you make that happen. 
Now, are you ready to bring your company to the future? Are you ready to make that leap once again and trust us? Last year, we started the, the path with a simpler way to connect the value of, uh, to the, the value of the 3D business platform. Since July 2023, every new seat of SolidWorks comes with cloud services, and uh, thousands of you have the ability to share and mark up design with anybody in the world, store and revise your projects, manage and control your entire business with top cybersecurity standards. In the coming months, we will continue along the way of simplification and provide solutions that will pack amazing power. For example, we have bundled the power of multi-physics simulation in a single solution because real-world behavior is complex and needs to be studied with the right science and in a very holistic way. You heard Bernard, modeling and simulation together is the key, enhanced by artificial intelligence. Nobody else has this capability today. So stay tuned while we roll out a whole new set of solutions that will, bring, that will help bring your innovation to life better and faster. Many of you already agree that the only sustainable way forward is to connect the dots from ideation and requirements all the way to how and where your products are used. Virtual can match reality down to the smallest and yet very important detail. It is possible to work together on one secure platform, always up to date and offering a single source of truth. Over the next three days, you will hear from many customers who are already working down this transformation path with us. Let me introduce a company that has been around for a long time, always finding a new way to be at the top of innovation and quality. Please welcome from Japan, Kenya Yamamura-san and Masahiro Endo of Nagano Automation and Aoki Kakinuma-san from SolidWorks Japan. Please, a big applause. Hi, JP. Thank you, Yamazuki. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Kakinuma san Okay, very good. So, very nice to see you again after, after our first meeting in Tokyo that uh, really blew my mind for what uh, you told me. So, please tell us uh, what, uh, when uh, Nagan Automation was founded. Oh. This is for you, yamamura san Thank you, JP. Mm. Uh, first, I appreciate for inviting us. Mm. We are very excited to attending this event. Mm. Uh, hello, everyone. We, we are Nagan Automation from Japan. Uh, our company is established in eight, uh, 1982. Oh, wow. Mm. Uh, <clears throat> oh, I'm sorry. That's a long <laughs> time. <laughs> uh, we have been committed to developing production line for our customers by utilizing uh, our knowledge in various industries. Recently, the number of designers has increased to 80 persons. Okay, amazing, amazing growth. Congratulations. Yamamura uh, san, what does Nagan Automation do today? Okay. Uh, our mission is to provide production line to manufacturing company. It's completely specialized order products, order product on customer requirement. As a result, our customers are from various industries such as automotive, medical, and consumer equipment. Recently, we have been busy with battery for automotive uh, production, uh, production line to achieve for zero emissions. Very, very interesting. So, uh, this is a question for Endosan. When was computer-aided design first introduced in Nagano Automation, please? Hi. はじめに2Dカードの導入を1992年に行いました。その時は図面の資産のデジタル化が目的でした。3Dカードの機械設計の本格導入は2014年です。First, we introduced 2D CAD in 1992 to digitalize 2D uh, drawing asset. Then in 2014, we introduced 3D CAD for mechanical design seriously. Very good. So, you recently adopted the 3D Experience Works portfolio, and thank you very much for that. 
can you tell us what was the problems that we are you were trying to solve? And the sun again. Thank you. Hi. CAD system will more and more be used. CAD is a computer design tool for the head of the head. However, we have many suppliers. We have suppliers who have built the products in the factory and build the factory. To have a more efficient CAD system, CAD is what communicates what is in the designer's mind. However, we have a large supply chain. Many of our parts are made by our suppliers and assembled in-house. So, for that reason, the customers and suppliers are required to use all the software platform. That is why we chose the 3D experience. So we needed a platform that everyone involved in the project, including employees, customers, and suppliers, can use. And we found 3D experience. Very good. So how are you planning to use 3D experience works to achieve your goals? First, we found SolidWorks very user-friendly. そしてクラウドでのデータ管理をすることで業界最高レベルのサイバーセキュリティさらに IT 機器やメンテナンス費用の削減をすることが可能となります。And data management in the cloud gives us a peace of mind of the high level cyber security available in the industry today. In addition, the budget for the IT equipment and maintenance will be reduced. 最後に 3D エクスペリエンス 3D エクスペリエンスにワークスにを使ってすべてのサプライヤーとシームレスに連携することが可能となります。Lastly, but more importantly, we can have all our suppliers work with us seamlessly. With 3D, 3D experience works. Very good. Thank you. Thank you very much, Nagan Automation, for uh, your testimonial. Big applause, please. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And uh, thank you to Otsuka Shokai, our partners in Japan, and Surumi san for continuing for helping uh, uh, Nagan Automation achieve their goals. So, Nagano, as you have heard, is a great example of a company that owes their continuous success to the decision to transform and adopt the right technology for their mission. They moved to SolidWorks with 3D Experience Works, leveraging the platform to work safely and seamlessly with the entire supply chain. Very, very interesting testimonial. And now, I would like to introduce a company that is defining a new industry altogether and is exploring what is possible with 3D Experience Works today by using the power of all the brands available in the portfolio. Please uh, welcome on stage the co-founder and chief executive officer of Arthur Bass, Philippe Glonner. Oh. Hi, Philippe. Please don't lose the microphone, you know. <laughs> We are on a budget here. So, <laughs> I, Philip. <laughs> no, it's not true. Uh, Philip, thank you for uh, coming uh, all the way from Germany to see us. I was very impressed when we first uh, met in Darmstadt uh, with uh, uh, your vision of the future of um, you know, transportation, public transportation. Please uh, uh, tell us uh, what are you up with uh, uh, with Arthur Bus. Yeah. So, our vision began about mm. two and a half years ago. And the vision is to revolutionize the fossil fuel dependent public transport sector and turn it into a modern emission free ecosystem. So public transport, it's about bringing a lot of people from A to B in a simple way. So our solution is a bus, very simple. But can we also do it emission free with the same convenience as a fossil, fossil fuel powered vehicle? And the answer is yes, we can. So we built the most advanced hydrogen bus on the market 
and launched it in 2022. It's called the Arthur H20. And the entire virtual twin you can see displayed here. It consists of more than 80,000 parts and is located as one complete assembly on the 3DX platform with the actual homologation to put this on the streets. And to give you some specs, it has a range far beyond 400 miles. It's electric powered with around 250 kilowatts in the wheel arches, so it has a lot of power. And the main power source is a fuel cell. So that's pretty much it. It's the benchmark in terms of efficiency, range, and performance. Okay, very, very good. Um, maybe next time I come on stage with a bus instead of a car. You, you know? can try, but, yeah. don't, but don't put <laughs> limits on the power, please. Okay, so uh, why did you select the 3D Experience Works to imagine and realize this uh, bus, this amazing bus, and to get money to build it? <laughs> the reason is quite simple. We actually have three reasons. It's performance, safety, and flexibility. So, in terms of performance, the speed of integration of new parts and designs, because we created the whole vehicle from scratch. It's not MAN or Mercedes, it's Arthur. And we are talking about more than 200 suppliers to get to the top in the automotive and obtain an actual OEM license. And that's what we did. And to protect our IP in terms of safety, because we have a holistic and innovative energy concept to power this beautiful vehicle, but it doesn't stop there, and that's also the reason why we went to the platform. As you can see here, we need to understand modern mobility more from the perspective of where's the energy coming from, how do we distribute it, and how do we use it? And that's what we want to create here, also on the platform. As you can see, it should start today that we connect these sectors with the actual mobility case. And we also offer our first refueling stations, so basically put this in one solution and also put it in one platform. Thank you, Philippe. I think, I think you have redefined the concept of performance. You said it's an end-to-end -end type of uh, measurement because the ability to integrate, show, and simulate 80,000 parts in one place is the true definition of performance these days. Have you seen anything like this happening elsewhere? Yeah, probably in the movies with uh, <laughs> Iron Man or something like that, when he like, op opens up like, the whole drawings and all of it. That's the first time I had it like, with some goggles on it uh, at my office, and we say, okay, let's explode this thing. And we actually did it. And, okay. Uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's so all. we are movie great performers. So thank you very much, <laughs> Philip. Thank you. Great, thank you great, great testimonial. End-to-end -end throughput. That's the true definition of performance. Keep that in mind. So Nagano and Arthur Bass show that to stay at the top of your industry or to define the new industry altogether, as uh, uh, Philip is, is doing, requires so much more from your design. It requires a reliable and secure way to work together. 200 suppliers for, uh, for Arthur Bass and many more for Nagano. The ability to capture and share knowledge and artificial intelligence plays a very important role here. The unwavering conviction that virtual and real can come together to realize the world we want to live in. So, we believe that this is the significance of the 3D Experience World's portfolio today. And when we gather again 25 years from now, we will remark that it was different than anything that we had ever seen. But I can tell you that one thing will never change for the next 25 years. We will continue to improve and commit to your success. And most importantly, to consolidate your trust. So thank you and enjoy this amazing 3D experience world in Dallas. Thank you. Thank you, GP. Thank you. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> this community has come a long way over the past 25 years. Congratulations. You know, it's exciting to hear about how 3D design powered by simulation and AI can help you to reimagine the future. And to tell us more about when you can see some of these specific technologies in the SOLIDWORKS portfolio, please welcome CEO of SOLIDWORKS, Manish Kumar. Thank you. Good morning, Dallas. 
Are you guys having fun? Joe, are you having fun? Thank you, man. This is the most fun week for me in the entire year. And you know what? I'm going to say, share a secret with you. I get paid for this fun. <laughs> Please do not tell that to my bosses, uh, Philippe Florence. <laughs> you know, this is the increment season. <laughs> we don't want that. <laughs> so uh, again, good morning. Let's try to roll the show. Last month, I witnessed an amazing live conversation between an amazing personality, Bernard Charles, Philippe Pasco, and an Aviation and Automobile Hall of Famer, Alain Mulali. I learned a lot. He shared a key mantra of his leadership. It is PGA, and it is not Professional Golf Association, by the way. It is profitable growth for all. His vision is that creating value for all the stakeholders is important, but you should also focus on creating the value for greater good. After listening to what he said, I realized that this is what you exactly have been doing for the last 25 years. Working together, you are changing lives. And today, I will focus on one such life, life of Bastian. He is the SolidWorks Visualize leader. So if you have ever used SolidWorks Visualize, you you have touched him in a, in a digital way. As a kid, Bastian loved soccer, but he couldn't play because of his type 1 diabetes. He always had to check his blood glucose level, blood sugar level. He had to take insul insulin shots, which made playing really hard. You can imagine yourself to be of, if you were that kid, how hard it was for you. But then something amazing happened. Few years ago, Bastian discovered this continuous glucose monitoring technology. It attaches to his body. It constantly monitors his blood sugar level, and it sends alerts to all the attached devices, various devices. His doctors can keep track of it. It even controls the insulin injectors automatically. I learned about his use of this technology and his participation in a half marathon in Germany during a chance meeting in Boston Logan Airport. And this is where we took all those pictures. Now a kid, imagine a kid who could not even play soccer, finishing a half marathon. This community made it possible. You made it possible. A big thank you to you. <laughs> Let's go a bit deeper, though. To change Bastian life, someone had to challenge the status quo. Someone had to start on the journey to deliver an experience of a wearable device. Now, design is definitely one of the very important steps. And we have been there for you almost for the last 30 years, making it easier for you, making it collaborative for you to create a precise virtual twin, right? But at the same time, this experience needs to be robust. You need to run scientific simulations in virtual environment to test the robustness and performance of this experience. And our best-in-class simulation portfolio helps you deliver the right product the very first time. But is it it? Actually, this is not it. Devices need to interact with each other. Data needs to go somewhere. Access needs to be controlled. Actually, you are looking at a system of systems design. And something like this must have a very precise set of requirements. You must define a very precise set of tests. You have to go through a very stringent record management for regulatory compliance. You need to monitor tests. You need to collect the data, keep it for validation. And regulatory bodies have many such requirements that you need to follow. How will you manage all these aspects? And this is essentially our vision working together, connected by a unifying force called 3D Experience Platform, all the different brands of DASO systems, we provide to you everything that you just saw. By the way, I did not cover the clinical trials. We have that covered, too, with Medidata. Now, you will ask the question, why do we do that? Because we want you to focus on making 
the world a better place by delivering life-changing experiences while we take care of all the details for you. And of course, design is the most important part of this equation because I'm, I'm CEO of SolidWorks, so of course that's gonna happen, right? But design itself is changing. It is collaborative, teams are dispersed. Data that you must create, it must be used in the downstream operations. The shapes and sizes of the devices that you use, the operating systems running on those devices, they are diverse and we recognize that. And keeping your evolving needs in mind, in my simplistic view, SolidWorks only has two flavors as of today. We come with the platform or we come on the platform. Today, SolidWorks that you know, you love, that you have been using for the last 25 years, 30 years, it is the same SolidWorks, but it comes with the platform. It gives you an option to take your collaborative design needs into your control to the next level. And the other flavor, it comes on the platform, completely browser-based, device agnostic. It runs from anywhere, on any device. And by the way, both these flavors are here to stay. I will repeat, both these flavors are here to stay. We are going forward with SolidWorks. Now, to help me with the first big announcement of the day, let's have Michael Jackson from Cadence on the stage, please. That was great music. I feel like dancing. <laughs> yes, and we should. With a name like Michael Jackson, I should be dancing. Welcome, Michael Jackson. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Manish. Now, let me have a small quiz. When you see these images on screen, yes. what do you see? I see elect electronics. Really? I see mechanical objects. OK. How about electromechanical systems? Deal. Deal. Okay. In fact, Manish, product complexity in every industry is exploding due to trends like increasing electrification. Cadence is the leader in electronic design automation, developing AI-powered tools for PCB and semiconductor design and analysis. And SolidWorks clients are shifting from, exp uh, shifting from product thinking to experience thinking in their product development processes, where the value of the product comes from the users. And it exponentially drives the demand for connected electromechanical devices. Today, Cadence and DASA systems unveil the first cloud-enabled collaborative electromechanical experience, purpose-built for ArchidX, Allegro X, and 3D Experience SolidWorks. We did it to make it simple and user-friendly, which is the tra trademark of SolidWorks brand. This new integration provides electrical and mechanical engineers with an unparalleled collaboration experience. The combined solution optimizes and accelerates the end-to-end -end electromechanical systems development process. The new integration offers seamless and scalable capabilities to customers of all sizes, from startups to enterprises, and this partnership brings together the best of the electronics and mechanical worlds. And the best part is that we provide you with the holistic view of your entire manufacturing data on DASA Systems 3D Experience platform. So one last question, Michael. When is it going to be available? We are launching it in July. Stay tuned. Absolutely thriller, Michael. Yes. Thank uh, you, Manish. Anything else you want to say? You know, I, I, I'm an MJ, Michael Jackson, but Manish Jackson is going to be dancing in some competition, I understand, tomorrow night. So everyone get ready for that. You're all invited. More on that tomorrow. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yes.
Now, almost everyone starts with off-the-shelf component when they try to create their very first electromechanical device, especially during the prototyping phase. And for such need, we want to democratize the electromechanical design. And I'm pleased to announce 3D Mechatronics Creator to further unify the experience development on the platform. With this tool, you can work with smart off-the-shelf components and create electromechanical products with the ease that is the trademark of SolidWorks brand from anywhere using any device. We will begin with an invitation-only mode with general availability, availability by end of the year. Now, the next announcement is about uh, draft side. So many of you handle your 2D drawings using draft side. But at times, you need to be at a client's place. You need to still access it. You are away from your desk. And for those needs, we are going to announce today draft site creator. It's a new product that is on the platform again. Now you can view, edit, or even create new, your new 2D drawings from anywhere, any device including when you're on site at a customer location. With this new technology, combined with 3D Experience platform, we will transform the way architects and construction professionals collaborate today. Our future problems will be more complex, and the next generation is going to solve them. It's crucial to provide them with the right skills and knowledge and know-how. Teachers are already meeting this need. They are already meeting this challenge. And to support them, to make their work easier, we are launching a teacher role. With this, our teachers will be able to create courses using existing templates or create new ones and even share them. You can manage class-based courses. You can extract classes from those courses. Invite your students easily with all the right roles. And you can collaborate with students Provide them with your feedback, with markups, live, without any delays, and many more such things to make your life simpler. You will get more in-depth information during this entire conference. Thank you, Florence. <laughs> in fact, I would say that the teachers deserve a big round of applause from you guys because they are changing the world. Now let's switch gears and talk about AI, because as Bernard said, it's about modeling simulation, but all together with AI and composed together. Even before chat, GPT made AI a household name, we were talking about AI. AI is not a new thing for us. And we have already released capabilities for you. You use mate helper, selection helper, sketch helper, auto, de auto detection of annotations. You already have them today. These are AI-driven capabilities. And many of those, many more AI-driven capabilities are coming to you. Few that I can share with you today uh, uh, are image to sketch, command prediction, and we are going to have auto drawing creation. And you heard it right, we are going to take your model and be able to create your entire drawing using AI. And I'll cover them more in depth tomorrow in the tomorrow's general session. But today, let me show you something amazing. Now, this one blew my mind. Last year, we launched Make By Me, which is a free tool which is now used by more than 130,000 makers. And they have created more than 600,000 different models. Using these models, we developed a new generative AI tool. Here are the results. Imagine you want to create a bookshelf, OK? For now, our prompt is a bounding box. We are 3D guys, right? You create that bounding box, and AI generates a bookshelf for you that fits in that bounding box. What you are seeing is AI generating that shelf with no manual intervention whatsoever. Now, some of you may claim that it can, be, it can possibly be done with, uh, with automation, right? And you're right. What happened next is what blew my mind, and that is the interesting part. To the same AI model, we fed a lot of coffee tables. And doing no programming at all, now we are able to generate coffee tables. Please witness it firsthand. Done with the same bounding box prompt, this is the amazing nature of generative AI. Models can learn with new data, from new data. By the way, it was released two weeks back, 
So perhaps this is the first generative modeling tool that is in production. And keep in mind, this is not image. Image, the way I see it is that if you try to create an image using generative AI, if image looks good, you say it's a beautiful image. If it is not good, you may say it's modern art, right? Not true with 3D. If we are trying to create 3D, you have to be able to manufacture it. So it's very important for us to be able to create something which is manufacturable. So our, our life is much harder, but we delivered it. Now, if you generate a lot of different variations of a sim of similarly shaped model, you can imagine the future. So hopefully, you are as excited as I am. I will cover AI in much more depth tomorrow. Please join the general session tomorrow. Einstein said that experience is the ultimate knowledge. And our quest is to learn from that, those experiences, extract the knowledge and know-how from that experience, and help you build new experiences while protecting your IP. Uh, I'll repeat, protecting your IP, protecting your data, and protecting your sovereignty. So today, you know what, SolidWorks, AI is a reality at SolidWorks. It's not a future concept. Future is now. Now, to conclude, thank you for your energy, your passion, your enthusiasm. Let's keep on having fun, and please do not tell Florence and Philippe. Let's go forward with SolidWorks. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much, Manish. Well, there is a lot to look forward to this year, regardless of which flavor of SolidWorks you use with cloud or on cloud. And remember, you'll be able to learn more about everything new in SolidWorks tomorrow morning and at the user sessions throughout the week. And now to introduce us to the first of many community members who are innovating in several industries, please welcome Vice President of Strategy and Community 3D Experience Works, Suchi Chang. Thank you, Tracy. Good morning. How is everybody doing? Yeah. Well, good morning and welcome to 3D Experience World. In this vibrant community of over 7.5 million, guys, 7.5 million of you, designers, engineers, students, entrepreneurs, we stand at the forefront of innovation. We are shaping the future through technology. Innovation is the key to unlock a world of possibilities and open new exciting opportunities. We are inspired by your leadership across various sectors in healthcare, pioneering diagnostic breakthroughs for early illness detection, advancing remote medical devices and robotics in AR VR, merging the virtual with real, with smart wearables and revolutionizing industrial automation. In the automotive industry, redefining mobility with autonomous and environmentally friendly vehicles from electric to hybrid and even hydrogen powered solutions. In renewable energy, reducing production costs through sophisticated automation and AI. Your creations have the power to change the world for better and with SolidWorks and the 3D Experience platform, you are equipped to do so. So in next three days, in my sessions, you will see examples of several innovative companies on this transformative journey. So first up is D-Box. So D-Box, or drone in a box, is revolutionizing the skies. So please welcome Linus. Linus. So I met, uh, I met Linus. Linus, how are you doing? Well, I met Linus in Lithuania last year. D-Box has created the most advanced autonomous drone box integrated with AI-powered software. Imagine the possibilities when drones think for themselves. So Linus, welcome. Uh, take us back to the beginning. What really inspired you to create D-Box? Hey, Suchit, um, thanks for having us here. Well. We got inspired to create D-Box because we realized that the only way to go is to automate enterprise-level drones as much as possible. Our company's journey began with large-scale photogrammetry projects, and we quickly realized that 
although 90% of the time drones fly autonomously, we still have to be there on site and swap batteries manually. Also during COVID, we were chosen to monitor the whole city of Vilnius using drones. We flew, we flew drones automatically, but the only person unhappy was the one swapping batteries. So we thought there has to be a better way to do it. That's why we created D-Box, fully autonomous drone in a box solution. So yeah, let's, let's walk over there, show us how really the autonomous drone solutions work. Right, so, well, D-Box is a game changer in drone automation. We have created a network of D-Boxes that are scattered around cities on rooftops. Each of these boxes can automatically send drone for a mission. And that is achieved by implementing three key points. Firstly, the pilot does not have to be on site anymore. In fact, the whole network of drones can be controlled from anywhere in the world using internet connection with just one press of a button. Secondly, the D-Box is like a garage for the drone. It protects it from harsh environments like rain and snow, and also controls the temperature inside so the batteries are happy. And finally, a fully autonomous robotic arm swaps the batteries and charges them autonomously in parallel. This way, our operations maintain 24-7, day and night. Our systems are being used for city infrastructure inspections, city 3D modeling, first responders, farmers, and many more, you name it. As we like to say, only sky is the limit of yeah, what can and, be done using D-Box. Absolutely, and they, these guys are doing an amazing job. I was in Vilnius and Lithuania on a rooftop seeing this really in operation. So, so tell us, Linus, a little bit more about how SolidWorks and 3D Experience Works have really helped you in designing and creating this. Yeah, so SolidWorks has played a key role in our development journey. By joining the 3D Experience Works, startup program, we gain access to a comprehensive suite of tools ranging from 3D, modeling, PCB design, flow simulations, and it allowed us to quickly share documents between our team members. We've also been invited by a Lithuanian reseller in Rea to use the resources of the 3D Experience Works Excellence Center at Manufacturing Valley. That enabled us to rapidly evolve D-Box from initial sketches to 3D models, to prototype, to final product. This synergy of tools and talent was a perfect recipe to create our fully functional D-Box prototype in under three months. And I would like to thank SolidWorks and the whole team for making this happen. Well, if you wanna, if you wanna, like, if you wanna know more about D-Box, please find us at the startup area. We'll be here for the whole conference. Uh, absolutely. Thank you, Linus. Thank you very much. Thank you for the amazing stuff you're doing. Can't wait to see what you do next. So moving from the skies to the street, next up is Glückskind, creators of the award-winning Glückskind AI stroller. Well, their mission is to ensure parents and their little ones can explore and navigate the world safely and comfortably. So please welcome Kevin Huang, co-founder and CEO, to share that inspiring story and how our software has been helping them in their journey. Kevin? This is the product. Oh, let's stop it, stop it. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I, you know, when we were talking about it, it's going pretty fast, but you can control it, can't yes, you? Yes, we yes. can. And we can turn on automatic rock, maybe, be just yeah. like this, too. Uh, absolutely, this is amazing. So Kevin, share us a little bit about your journey. How did it all get all started? <laughs> Hello, everyone. Thank you, Suchit. The idea for Gluskin came from our personal experiences as my co-founder, Ann and I, became parents ourselves um, when, when we had our first daughter. We found the challenges we observed in the parenting space were echoed in the parenting community, which made us wonder, what if the baby stroller, an essential parenting gear, could be a bit better, a co-pilot, if you will. Um, this led us to some simple experimentation, as you see, uh, with a regular stroller, some rope, and an electric skateboard. We took it to some of the nearest uh, hill, uh, hills nearby, and as soon as we were able to get it to move effortlessly up a hill and stop whenever I stopped or whenever I moved without, no, uh, without touching it, we had an aha moment. Uh, we knew that this was the future. This feeling was magical. So, 
So that that is really, uh, by the way, it's uh, rocking. Huh? You put in that rocking mode. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that, which this ultimately led us to develop uh, the LS stroller, which features what you see right now, the automatic rock my baby, as well as push and brake assist, so and hands-free strolling, so that parents can really focus on the little one instead of having to worry about multitasking. Well, so that that is amazing. Tell us a little bit more about how you use our software for design of LS because I know there are a lot of complex design parts making it easier, uh, loading conditions and all of that? Yeah, of course. So SolidWorks has been foundational to our creation, from proof of concept to simulation to actually production right now. It's been pivotal every step of the way. A great example is actually the main joint right there. Um, typically, traditional strollers have three moving parts uh, that rotate relative to the main joint while also being solid to achieve the strength needed to be durable enough to endure a 150 pound load. In our case, because of all the sensors, we actually have four parts that needs to rotate. And it has to be hollow so that we can pass wires through to actually feed those sensors. So to put into perspective, a typical autonomous pedestrian robot, for example, the Starship, weighs about 77 pounds um, and has a maximum load of 22 pounds, whereas Ella which is also semi-autonomous, it weighs only 32 pounds and has a carrying max load of 150 pounds. So to achieve a 6x in load capacity while decreasing the weight was thanks much to the simulation that was done as well as like combination of testing in the real world with fabrication. Yep. And what about 3D? I know you've used the platform as well. How does that help you? Yeah, 3D experience, on the other hand, has really streamlined our collaboration process with our industrial designers as well as our manufacturers around the globe. Having a controlled and streamlined file sharing process um, and collaboration process, we were able to bring our product from just ideation to actually production in about three years. Right. So I, I know that Glukskin AI Stroller is a leap uh, forward in parental convenience, so what's next? Yeah, well, Suchit, one of the tenets of Glickskin mission is to make parenting easier. And we've achieved significant advancements in the safety and, and convenience of our strollers, yet we realize there's still a vast landscape of opportunities to explore. We're thrilled to apply our innovation to other products in the pedestrian space, as well as support and enrich the journey of parenting that lies ahead. Oh, amazing, so thank you. Thank you for being here and showing us the amazing Ella. Thank you. Thanks, Kevin. By the way, both, uh, both uh, Glukskin and D-Box have been part, were both nurtured and accelerated through the SolidWorks for Startup program. So as we wrap up today, the next two days in my session will continue to display the innovative leaps achieved through SolidWorks and 3D Experience platform. We have just only begun to scratch the surface. Join me tomorrow as we delve deeper into more groundbreaking stories, all part of our shared journey in shaping the future. Thank you and see you tomorrow. Thank you so much. Thank you, Thank you Sujit. Wow, the Startup SolidWorks program really does help turn those napkin sketches into reality. Well, best known as the inventor of the Super Soaker water gun, our next guest holds over 100 patents, the vast majority of which are energy related. He's a leading developer of the next two generations of battery technology, ceramic solid state batteries and lithium air batteries. He also received the Breakthrough Award from Popular Mechanic Magazine for an invention that converts heat directly into electricity. He is also involved in the Johnson STEM Activity Center, which empowers students from diverse and underserved communities. Here to share his story, please welcome Dr. Lonnie Johnson. Good morning, everyone. First off, I want to thank SolidWorks uh, for supporting the Johnson STEM Activity Center, where we work with inner city grade school students, um, exposing them to STEM and having them have fun with STEM before they get apprehensions about feeling like this is something that they can't do. They have fun and they experience success and that will carry them throughout their lives. I also uh, want to acknowledge uh, 
one of my greatest supporters, in fact, my greatest, absolutely my greatest supporter, who uh, has been with me as a partner uh, for 32 years now, my wife, Linda Moore. Um, thank you so much for being here. You know, this whole idea of innovation, creativity, uh, building, designing, engineering, technology advancement, this is all about a human experience. Human beings are problem solvers. It's what we do best. We're literally built to solve problems. So I'm gonna share my personal history, uh, take a little bit of an advantage since this is Black History Month. I'm gonna give you a little bit more background about that, but putting my experience into context with history and then take a little look forward and leave you with a challenge. I was in high school in the 60s. This is during the heart of the Civil Rights Movement. Um, President Kennedy, uh, I, when he made his Boone speech, I was about 12 years old and I watched that speech and I hung on every word because I was very excited and very interested in engineering and wanting to be an inventor. And that was a, a big deal. Um, but then it was a year later uh, when George Wallace stood in the door in 1963 and was trying to prevent, prevent um, three black students from registering at that university. And President Kennedy sent the National Guard down to the University of Alabama to escort those students on the campus so they could register. Well, it was literally four months later that President Kennedy was assassinated. Several assassinations happened uh, during the 60s. Um, president Kennedy's brother won the California primary for presidency. Uh, in 1968, he was assassinated. Um, Malcolm X was assassinated in 75. Uh, and Martin Luther King was assassinated in 1968, my senior year in high school. So you can imagine how that impacted my outlook on the world. The civil rights movement had its positive side, but it also had the negative side. It, it was a really tumultuous time here in America. There were cities literally burning all across the country. Uh, the uh, Vietnam War was going on in the 60s. Um, and at that time, the uh, draft was going on. So people were being, relatives, friends, people you knew were being drafted into the military to go fight. And so you would know people who spent time in, in the war, who were killed, relatives that lost, and so forth. Uh, so all of this was going on, and I was you know, determined to be an engineer. I'm about 74 years old now, and um, many people who remember that time in the 60s, and they talk about wanting to make America great again, I'm trying to remember what time is that? Because I feel that our progress forward Human beings are problem solvers, as I said at the beginning. We move to make things better. We may struggle with each other and go back and forth, argue and even fight about what's the best path forward, but generally we move forward. I wanted to um, emphasize the fact that when President Kennedy was assassinated, I was determined, and, and maybe because of that, I was more determined to um, become an engineer. He was my hero. I felt that, you know, I'm gonna get, really get into this science and technology. And the fact that so many leaders were lost in that time, I felt the responsibility to demonstrate that black Americans uh, can continue to make contributions to America, just as we helped create a wealthy country as slaves, but now we had the opportunity to create prosperity and actually participate in that ourselves. This is me in high school in 68, the same year that President Kennedy got assassinated. I was watching these robots on TV and nobody told me that they had people inside, so I didn't know any better <laughs> than to try and build a robot. Digital technology didn't exist back then. What looks like eyes is actually a real, a real tape recorder. It was all analog. My decoding system actually was a commutator that, was, that I would wind up. It actually had a rubber band and a little relay that would actually step to different positions so that I could actually control the various mechanisms in the robot. His arms were pneumatic. He could swing on his base. My uh, sister's um, tape recorder, his watch, his eyes, and my brother's uh, walkie-talkie is the antenna, and that's how we transmit signals to the robot. 
I went on to um, Tuskegee University. By the way, the robot that I did not mention, he won first place in 1968 at the University of Alabama. This was just, a, you know, again, in the 60s, just a few years after Governor Wallace had stood in the door. As you can imagine, that was a major personal victory for me. Um, so I went on. Uh, there were still this apprehensions about uh, blacks attending university because nobody, even, even after winning first place, and the judges were all selected from industry. They were not necessarily professors on campus there. And I think that was probably the reason for the objectivity. But no one asked about my grades or showed any interest in my attending the University of Alabama at that time. So I attended Tuskegee University, and I'm really appreciative of that because I had what I feel was a much better experience. I received my master's degree in nuclear engineering, bachelor's in mechanical. I was commissioned into the Air Force and uh, worked on the B-2 bomber as the first flight test engineer assigned from the user command, strategic air command. And I was also worked for NASA for a while. About 10 years in each, I worked on the, as a uh, fault protection engineer on the Cassini mission to Saturn. I was the um, uh, power systems engineer on the Galileo mission to Jupiter. And I also did orbit insertion analysis for the Voyager mission, which is still going, by the way, and we're still getting data from that mission. But that was my day job. In the evenings, I would work on my own projects, my own ideas. And one of those what turned out to be the super soaker. And I was actually, I've had this long-term interest in the environment. And I was actually working on a new type of heat pump that would use water as a working fluid instead of Freon, because Freon's bad for the environment. So I was experimenting in the bathroom with some nozzles and came up with the idea for the water gun. And I was having trouble getting people to uh, understand some of the more hard science ideas that I had, and even getting investors was an uphill climb. So I felt I could create a toy, earn enough money from that to support my habit. <laughs> So now I'm focused on the environment. This chart, by the way, is from a, a, there's a NOVA program called Polar Extremes. If you have a chance to watch it, I encourage you to look at it because it explains how, they explain how they go back 400,000 years to get this data. There are three lines in this chart. The um, blue line is the average sea level. The red line is the temperature of the Earth. And the black line is the level of CO2 in the atmosphere. And you can see over those 400,000 years, those lines track each other fairly closely. But if you come all the way over to the right here, you see the temperature there at 14.55. The um, ocean level is in that range. But the top here, 377, the flag up there at the top, the CO2 level is actually off the chart. Those of us who understand inertia, momentum, and things like that, will appreciate the fact that the impact of that CO2 level may not be yet manifested. So how much worse are things going to get before they start turning around and becoming better? And that's something that I worry about. And that's why I'm working on energy technology now. I've invented this engine that converts heat directly into electricity more efficiently than the existing engine, and particularly focused on low temperature heat, which is something that we don't do very well. Um, I've invented a new battery uh, that uses glass electrolyte instead of liquid. And it holds about twice the energy of lithium ion. So cars will be able to go about 600 miles instead of 300 miles on a single charge. So I'm excited about that. And those technology, we've actually spun those out into separate independent companies. And, and they have their own CEOs at this point, and also independent funding which is good for me because Super Soaker can only go so far. <laughs> um, so now I'm actually working on uh, a, um, another company invention that I intend to spin out that will condense humidity from ambient air to produce fresh water and do it more efficiently and less expensive than existing systems. I want to transition. I said I was going to talk a little bit about my experience as an innovator in the context of history. Uh, if you look, I'm sure a lot of you have seen charts like this. They're very, 
very common. But this goes about, back about three and a half million years, and it basically reflects um, evolution of human beings. Over those years, we've improved ourselves, but we've also improved our tools. The second from the left there, the tool that's being held uh, uh, is, is a rock. That's about um, two and a half million years ago, two million years ago, a rock was one of our earlier tools. They pro progressively got better. We got fire, we got spears with stone tips, but eventually metal tips and so forth. It took about two and a half million years of evolution, but then fast forward to about uh, 500 years ago. This is Columbus's flagship. Not that I'm a fan of Columbus, but the point is that this was the state of technology at that time. It took the Queen of Spain to commission, commission that voyage, as we know from history. Uh, the ship is fabric and wood. Um, it took about um, 70 days to come across the ocean, traveling about two and a half miles an hour. Five, fast forward 500 years later, uh, the Saturn V left the um, Earth orbit traveling at a speed of about 25,000 miles an hour. 500 years of advancement in, in pushing technology, problem solving, what pre human beings do, what we do best. Um, and those pictures, by the way, they are to scale. Um, that's the relative size of those vehicles. The telephone is only about 120 years old. And now we have smartphones. The point here is that technology is advancing. The transistor was invented 76 years ago. You can see what the, how crude it looked back then, but now we can put about five, a little over five trillion transistors on a single chip. This is enabling technologies, AI and, and uh, things like SolidWorks and other things, advancements that we're starting to take advantage of and really enjoy and take for granted. The internet is only about 30 years old. This typewriter, by the way, in that image, that's what I used when I was in college. That's the exact model that I had. And when I was in high school using encyclopedias, I had to go to the library to look up things. But now we've got the internet. We have information at our fingertips. So we've gone from rocks to cell phones uh, uh, in, in two and a half million years it took to do that. But these, they were both <laughs> literally communication tools. You could send a message with that rock just as well as you could send a message <laughs> with the cell phone. Masayoshi Song um, says that um, in about 30 years, I think it's gonna be less than that. I think it's more like 15 or 20 years, but uh, AI is gonna have essentially the capability of the human brain. Uh, the average human being has an IQ of about 100. Einstein was about 200. But imagine AI with an IQ of 10,000. Now, you know, the challenge with computers to me when I think about that is like, okay, they can communicate more efficiently than we can. Uh, when one knows something, they can all know it almost instantaneously. Uh, they're already um, doing things better than we can do, certainly. Obviously, I don't need to emphasize that or talk about that much. But we now have created CRISPR. We can re-engineer ourselves. We know how to change our genetic code. Um, I can remember when I thought, used to think that self-driving cars you know, would never happen because it's too complicated to program them because you can't anticipate everything that could happen, every event. It's just too complex, but now they're here. Um, I can remember as a kid thinking, geez, I want to be an inventor, but all the great inventions we invented are developed already. But little did I know. I submit that there's no way to envision the long-term implications of technology. There was no way that Wright brothers, uh, when they developed their first flight, it traveled for about 12 seconds, 120 feet, um, top speed of 6.8 miles an hour. There's no way to envision at that time a, a vehicle that could fly at 7,000 miles an hour, hypersonic. Um, dreams, imagination, 
inspiration. No, that's star stuff. That's what inspires us. We're problem solvers. We're looking for ways to move things forward. Technology advancement is what we do. And it's an ongoing activity. So the question is, where are we going? What are we going to do with the knowledge as we continue to create, as we continue to even develop abilities to modify ourselves, implantable medical devices, all of those kinds of things. When I see people on their cell phones, I see tattoos, I see you know, uh, body piercings, I think to myself, are we going to eventually go online? Are we going to start re redesigning ourselves? Is that going to be our next step? As the environment starts to change, will we do things to ourselves to make us more robust and able to handle the environment if we don't turn things around? Where might things go? I don't have the answer, but what I do know that there are a lot of questions and I know that there are a lot of exciting things to look forward to. And I wish that uh, I was much younger uh, so that I could uh, experience and see some of the things that are gonna come from the great powerful tools that you guys will be able to use going forward. You can't stop human progress, but what you can do is shape the direction. Uh, you can use moral character, uh, honesty, ethics, uh, principles, incorporate those things into technology. Um, and don't leave anyone behind. Gay people, black people, white people, pink, yellow, skinny, fat, tall, short, we come in all shapes and sizes. God made us all. If you've been blessed with abilities, recognize that you did not create yourself. Share the blessings with others. You're all inventors and creators, obviously, because you're here. And no doubt you have experiences like this guy sitting here with his invention and people are standing around being impatient and, and um, wanting you to come on, go with them and stop wasting your time. And they have no idea what that submachine gun is going to do and what its impact is going to have on their hunting game. As you move forward uh, with problem solving, remember my favorite quote. Uh, Kevin Kluge said that Nothing in the world can take the place of persistence. Talent will not. Nothing is more common than unsuccessful men with talent. Genius will not. Unrewarded genius is almost a proverb. Education will not. The world is full of educated derelicts. Persistence and determination are alone omnipotent. The slogan press on has always solved and will solve the problems of the human race. Remember the rock and the cell phone. They're both made of the same materials, minerals from the earth. It took the human brain to turn rocks into cell phones. The human brain is the ultimate tool. Each of you have one, and it's up to you what you do with yours. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you for inspiring us and thank you for empowering us. Thank you. What a beautiful human journey, empowering us to live our lives to persist on. So very good. Well, we turn now to an annual tradition here at 3D Experience World. Don't miss this demo. That's right. This is a comedic skit that blends in fun software demonstrations, including previews of what's to come in SOLIDWORKS later this year. Join us now as the tech marketing team weaves a whodunit that could happen to, well, any of us. What is up, everybody? It's your boy Chad here, live streaming on all things Extrudo. Extrudo, extreme engineering energy. Ah, uh, yeah, today we are covering fails from the fourth annual Extrudo Cup. Just moments ago, a wicked wreck from the MVP Corp team on the very first corner. The team owner, the so-called mass billionaire, yet to make any public statement ever. And you know, Chad, he has his theory on who's behind the mask, but more on that tomorrow. 
But for right now, be sure to like, subscribe, and drink your Extrudo! Extrudo! Extreme Engineering Energy. <sighs> A little help here, bro? My arm is still super jacked. I mean, I couldn't even watch my climb video this morning. It's a little early for an extrudo, isn't it, Andy? Mike, I can't sleep. And how exactly did we crash on the first corner? I mean, my FEA results were flawless, man. Four years, four <sighs> failures. My CSWE is being wasted here, people. Yeah, we all need to be reassigned off this project. You know, maybe this crash was a good thing. Happy Monday! Oh, Brenda, you know this is the designer's lounge. No interns allowed, even if it's been, what, five years? Listen, just because I haven't killed a tree printing out business cards doesn't mean that ownership hasn't tasked me with keeping you on track. Does anyone want an extrudo? Uh, I guess it is almost lunchtime. Toss me a Boolean blast. Uh, sure. Sweet feature tea. Extreme engineering energy. Speaking of ownership, he sent me an email this morning. It says all the design team is going to have a lunch and learn. Everyone is to present. TTFN. Don't we have real work to do? Seriously, this mass billionaire doesn't even know what we do here at MVP Corp. And why has no one ever even met this guy? Oh, I just got the invite. You are presenting FEA results. Bro, have you seen my presenting arm? Mine says demonstrate new features in SolidWorks 2025. I got one too, uh, oh, part numbering and custom properties. Uh, it is strange though that we all got different emails. Hey, maybe if I order a pizza, anyone not cool with shrooms and pineapple? Okay, confirmed. Hey dude, where's the pizza? Yeah, you're not the pizza guy. Oh son, the only thing I'm here to deliver are some results. Uh, let me explain. <clears throat> Dear Reynard Rouge, by now, you have no doubt seen the MVP Corp fail trending on all the socials. Someone on the team is surely sabotaging our Extrudo Cup pursuit. I need you to conduct a full post-mortem toot sweet. Do not bring pizza. Indeed, it is I, the world-famous CAD detective, Reynard Rouge. Now, I'm gonna need you all to surrender your badges, and further, there shall be no bowel breaks until we discover the culprit. Um, hi, I'm the manager here, Mike. Assistant manager. Oh, come on. I mean, obviously this isn't my fault. Uh, no, I don't know why the front end collapsed. And yes, I simulated that exact cornering condition. Hmm, a little defensive, even for an analyst. Uh, Andy, was it? Why don't, why don't you show us your results? Well, like, I totally would, but you know. Tell you what, mess this. <gasps> Aha. I knew you were faking this whole time. So what? You know, pride can hurt too. Is it supposed to tingle like that? It's the new Extrudo, Weld Mint. Kinda tastes like slag. Son, if you would just show us your studies, we could just put this whole thing to bed. Listen, I didn't do anything wrong here. You know, you yeah. guys, someone sabotaged Son. us, and you guys are always Son. asking me to present my Son. results, and you know. Calm never... down, calm down, and as we said, just, just show us what you got, please. Now, proceed. You know, check it out, dudes. I posted all this to our dashboard. These are the explicit results from hitting the barrier while in a 90 degree turn at high speed. Pretty much a worst case scenario, which just happens to be the exact same cornering condition that we crashed. Ouch. See, minimum factor of safety was 1.5. With Simulia's powerful explicit dynamic solver, my setup was super simple. I built a barrier, I clamped it in place, I set the car to hit at five meters a second. Um, no, I do not use miles per hour because I'm a scientist. Uh, 
I know, this looks kind of bad, but that's just the outer shell deforming. It's totally cosmetic. Uh, I'd even say the front end was over-designed. Uh, from what I simulated, nothing predicted the crash response. The frame and my results, they were totally solid. Uh, now, what did you mean, were solid? Well, they were, uh, uh, until Eric made that last minute revision to the, to the front end, and, and I, I didn't have time to run the studies all over again because my laptop, it's older than Eric's tie. I, I put in six IT requests for a new machine, and they denied them all, six times. But now what about the, the, the cloud? Surely you got credits or tokens so you could use that solver. Oh, well, well that's a great idea, but, and Mike was supposed to order some, but they never showed up. Hold up, I was tasked with lightweighting the front end and making significant changes at the last minute. How could we not validate them? Uh, now, son, hang on a second. You said significant and last minute. Now, Eric, that's never a good recipe for cad casserole. Not that I need Andy's validation, but let me just show you what I did. Uh, I remember it like it was yesterday. The test, this task says to lightweight the frame. I thought heavier cars were faster, but hey, I'm not the project manager here. 38 pounds, this is gonna be easy with SolidWorks 2025. I'll just drop in one of my favorite blocks on this plate and ah, uh, I hate it when the sketch color matches the material. With 2025, I can change the color from the right click menu. Now I can see it even without my glasses on. This is a good start, but I can do better. In SolidWorks 2025, the chamfer tool adopts the selection shortcuts from the fill command. Hmm, that was quick. Ouch, these sharp edges might injure Andy's delicate rock climbing legs. In my new version of SolidWorks, I can round them off, even though they are two separate bodies. Nice, bro. I'll use assembly visualization to check my work. In SolidWorks 2025, I can assign specific colors, which makes it easy to see which components have no material applied. Sorting by mass, I can see that I've reduced the weight by 20%. Now what's that there at the top? It looks bigger than a Texas sunset. Wait an inch pound second. This component is massive. I'll use the new roll-up feature in 2025 to isolate it. Red herring bearing, who did this? Mike, have you been in my metadata again? Wow, that is a lot of drama. There is a lot of drama on this team, but also a lot of great demos. And we are gonna see them again tomorrow for act two of Splines Out. So I hope you'll be there. And that is a wrap on day one. How amazing, so fantastic. What a day, what a way to kick this off. We're gonna be back in this room again tomorrow morning at 8.30 to hear more from Manish and from a wide variety of customers from around the globe who are on their own path of transformation. And I know I will see you all a little later in the playground, but tomorrow after a general session, we're gonna feature three sequential focus sessions, each diving a little bit deeper into the 3D Experience Works portfolio. Sarah, there's gonna be a lot to do. It's gonna be action-packed all week. Have an amazing time in the playground, and I'll see you all a little bit later. Take good care. an awesome session. There was so much going on in there. We are not going to do a full recap of that right now. Tracy will be back at the desk with Sean and I. We can recap that a little bit, but uh, so many cool cool things going on. Uh, John Paolo 
driving out in the e-muscle car Cobra. That was really cool. Uh, I got a chance to ride in that Cobra with Kevin a little bit ago when uh, Sean and I were down here. You'll see a segment that we had recorded for that um, with, uh, with the two of us that stopped by his shop, and that'll be a fun session to catch. That car is super cool. We'll be talking to them a little bit later in the playground as well. He's also got the Camaro that they have, so uh, that will be a ton of fun to, uh, to check out. Uh, really cool product, and uh, it was cool to see that roll out on uh, stage kind of live. So um, super neat there. Um, AI, we talked about AI quite a bit. I'm sure we'll be hearing a lot more about that throughout the conference. What a cool topic AI is. Obviously, this year has really just exploded, and it's one of those topics that's kind of you know, um, exponential anyway. But a couple of things that stuck out to me just you know, immediately with that um, is the image to sketch. That's something that I, I do pretty frequently myself, and it's, it can be a really tricky one. There's a lot of different workflows that you can use to try to get there. I'm really interested to look into that a little bit more and see how that's going to work. Um, but also, auto drawings, what, a, what an enhancement that would be. Uh, even if it got you part of the, of the way there, that would really do a ton to, to help us out, uh, get even 80% of it done, and then you can tweak uh, all of those mundane little tasks that are uh, you're not really adding that much value to. Perfect for AI, taking over, getting that done for you, and then you can come in and add the value where you add the value, detail it out. Super cool. Loved hearing about that. Uh, what else was in there? The, the teacher app. The teacher app looks absolutely awesome. I was just talking to one of the EDU guys uh, behind the desk here. That looks really, really cool. That there's a lot of us who are, um, who are married to teachers and things like that in our, in our group. So uh, we know that teachers need resources as much as possible, and that app looks absolutely awesome. So looking forward to see how that plays out, making everybody's life easier. Um, and of course, hearing from Lonnie was really cool. We'll have Lonnie here at the desk, so uh, you'll get a chance to hear more from him. What an interesting story he's got and all sorts of cool things. Obviously, I played with the Super Soaker when I was a, a kid. I almost brought my original one, but I didn't have room for it in my suitcase. So uh, an amazing, amazing story from him and all of the things that he's accomplished and done over his lifetime. Uh, I know Sean is, is really excited, and I am too, to hear some more from Lonnie. So, um, well, you know, keep your, keep your eyes peeled for that. Uh, that's going to be a great interview as well. Uh, the skit, I noticed uh, Chad looked surprisingly like my counterpart, who it seems to be missing. So I'm going to have to look into that. Um, you never do see them in the same place. So that's a little bit suspicious. And I do have this can of extrudo that showed up on the desk. So I don't know what's going on with that, but we'll have to do some investigating. Uh, at this point, I want to give you a reminder. I mentioned early in the show that we would uh, give you a reminder of where to find us throughout this, uh, throughout this event. If you're just logging in online, obviously we've got a sea of people uh, <laughs> waving to me as they're going by, all getting out of general session. Um, we've mentioned this a bunch. We'll mention it again. You should be one of these people in this sea of people because being here is unlike anything else. This is my, if I could pick one event to be at for the year, this would be the one. Uh, so if there's any way that you can arrange to get here to us, would definitely recommend you do that. Uh, just the relationships that you build with people here, uh, I'm enjoying watching everybody walk by and, and say hello. Um, the, the people are really what makes the difference. We say this all the time with SolidWorks. We have the best community, and we stand by that. But having a chance to come here every year and get to see everybody once a year all in one place is the absolute best. Uh, but that being said, of course, if you're logging in for us, uh, logging in with us for the show, Sean and I love being able to bring some of that energy and excitement to you. So there's a couple places that you can look for us. Probably if you're viewing this uh, right now with me, uh, you may have got to that through the YouTube webpage. Um, if we could pull up my screen right, right now, you can kind of see um, where those things are. Um, so if you go right to our SolidWorks channel, of course, you should be able to see that. And uh, underneath that, we've got a playlist for you. So we've broken this up into a few, um, a few extra targeted streams for you this year. Um, playlist might be a great place to check. If you jump over to the playlist, you'll see that or access that from the homepage. Um, you'll see a playlist for all of those videos. Now, 
One of the things I might recommend is go right to the event website, right, 3dexperienceworld.com. Um, you'll find that there is a section for live right there, and in fact, as soon as you log in, you'll see watch live coverage. That's us. So you'll, that will get you right to us, um, and the live at the top, you can go right to that. So if you're trying to figure out which link we're live on for the day or for at the given moment, great way to do that. You can jump over to live, and you can see our broadcast schedule, which has been up for a little while now. You can scroll through those, and you'll see uh, which which session we've got going on. We've got things going on through each of the three days. Uh, the other place that I'll recommend you check out is, of course, our uh, live page, which is live.solidworks.com. Uh, from here, of course, you'll see this particular event, but you'll also see all sorts of other stuff in here too. Uh, throughout the year, uh, Sean and I and a whole bunch of other guys, uh, folks from our team, are doing this all year long. So um, check this out uh, as a great place to go in. Of course, catch this event. We're glad we're, that you're with us for this event, but you'll also find all of the other stuff that we've been doing uh, throughout the past year. And we'll be moving into next year, doing a lot more of this, bringing you as much content as humanly possible. So at this point, um, as long as I don't hear different, we're gonna scoot back over to Sean or maybe Chad, I'm not really sure, who is over at the Hive. There's some pretty cool stuff going on. I heard there's a jam session. I brought my guitar picks, so I might wander over there myself, see what they're up to, and we'll take it from there. I guess we've lost them. <laughs> so I'm gonna, uh, gonna take my guitar picks and I head over there in just a few minutes. Um, once they get set up over there, we'll jump back over to the Hive. Now, if you're not familiar, and you may not be because uh, you're joining us virtually, the Hive is a great little place that we always set up every year. Uh, it's been around for a few years anyway, um, that you can head over and they always have some cool activities going on in there, essentially a dedicated hangout place. Now, one of the things that I mentioned that I love about this event is we get a chance to get together in person. Right? And that's a chance that we don't have very much, at least for most of us, because we live all over the world. So in, to have this opportunity to get together, we've got a dedicated little space with a ton of stuff going on, lots of exciting things that now we can shoot over and check out with Sean. Hey guys, welcome to The Hive. Are we, yep, we're here, right? So hey, Matt, what's going on, man? Hey, Sean. So we're live in the Hive, Dallas 2024. It's going to be a good time, and we got a lot to show you guys behind us. Can't wait. So the Hive itself is, is sort of a, a newer space, right? I think I was mentioning in the, in the lead-in during the pre-show, for those of you who stuck around uh, for that, uh, that the Hive, I think, was created back in, and somebody, that's a, the that's a beauty of the YouTube live chat. Somebody will always disprove me if I'm wrong. And please do. Right yeah. Please do, uh, but I believe it's it was it was SolidWorks World 2019, maybe in 2018, but I think it was 2019. But uh, the Hive at first, right? It was a, it was sort of a first timer welcome space, and since then it's it's sort of evolved, right? Like, how would you describe the Hive to to an attendee or to a viewer uh, today? Well, we uh, if we look behind me here, we have yeah, a little a bit of everything. We have music. We have design, we have the Hacksmith power loader up on screen live in SolidWorks <laughs> featuring the 3D Experience platform. It's piped into our tenant right now. We have art, we have Mark Alger's painting he did for us that captures world last year at Nashville. And we have our community. So there's some for everybody. Uh, it's an open space to come hang out, design, rock out. We got a push notification going out. We actually need a drummer right now. So if you're in the Dallas area, <laughs> you got nothing to do. We have a drum Come by, come right. by. We're, we're um, actually being filmed. This is like a. This is like the epicenter of. It really of is. Different, it's different it's the happening spot. Hi, hi, Brad. How What's are you? What's going on, man? <laughs> it's like so, the epicenter of different artists. And it really is. And I would even say it's the heartbeat of the world. We got it right there you here. Go. There you There's go. some for Very everybody. Um, but yeah, let's let's take a let's take a look around. Maybe we could take like a circular sure. tour. Sure. Uh, that would be great. All right. So yeah, in the hive, it, it it's one of those spaces that that just sort of. It, it develops, it changes. Uh, we haven't even talked about, I don't think, like the, the meetups and stuff, right? Um, but yeah, what do we have here on this right. table? So we have, uh, we weren't able to meet for a few years. So we have some older t-shirts from Old World uh, sessions that we have up on the table. People okay. are just taking them. It's kind of a swag exchange too. So we Yeah, have, we can, and we can yeah. move over just to get more camera, but um, 
but yeah, so so we have some swag. That's that's obviously that's an right. important part this of the event. This is Swag Central, by the way. So, yeah. So the new swag is over on this other table. We'll get to here in a minute. Okay. Um, so we got some older stuff from older years. We're gonna fire sale that. Um, behind me. Yeah. This is a shout out to Tommy Leon. He's got this gorgeous sign that he made for us. Yeah, this that's year. awesome. That's another thing that's evolved quite a bit over the years is the artwork. Yeah. And the way we integrate that, and the theme, and the, you can see the same artwork in Mark's painting. We're gonna get to here in a minute. So, so is it? So this is like. Uh, so how has this been used so far? Is this like a photo op area? Yeah. 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 We got people taking pictures in front of this. You know, we have the letters up by registration yeah. too. Yeah. This is another very signature piece of world that people remember. Uh, so that's a neat space. Well done in my, yeah, I think yeah, it's great. Yeah, very cool. Which is right next to yeah, let's where we're take, probably going to get our first noise violation here at Wall, <laughs> which is the music section. The music. Now, we, we should say, Matt, uh, so talk to us about your, your personal education. Yeah. Why do we, well, well, I do that. you, you turn, brought this. i got to turn down uh, CCR here. Yeah, let's, let's go do it. But yeah, so Matt actually, Matt has an engineering degree. Matt also has a music degree. So he's, he's a very unique person using both sides of his brain at all times. I, I'm a bit of a unicorn. <laughs> yeah, I, I went to Central Washington University, up way in the Northwest, uh, for classical music. And I also have an industrial engineering degree. How about that? Yeah, right? So I happen to know we have a lot of musicians in this place. Uh, this is a build it and they will come up. By the way, here's Master Chief. Oh, hello, sir. Uh, so we're, we're about to find out where all the talent is in the musical side. It's going to be a lot of fun. We have a push notification going out. we got to find our drummer. And uh, the, tough, the tough part is we don't have any beer. So we're going to try and do We this. don't have any beer. Right. I, I thought that inside the drums there would be, there would right. be like a little bit of a cooler but or something like that. It'll, it'll be a good time. So we've got a full rock band set up this year. Uh, that's right next to the power loader. Can I, can I ask you some questions first about, oh, sure. about yeah. the intro? You were just, you were just mentioning that. Uh, sorry, I'm getting some feedback right here. Uh, you were, you were just mentioning uh, that uh, just sort of a mixture. You know, some people bringing their instruments, uh, working with uh, a company yes. out in Dallas. Yes. Uh, so Studio Instrument Rental brought all these in today. Uh, I just threw my trombone in the overhead compartment in the plane, so that wasn't too hard. You, uh, you um, had a. You, you had a social post uh, that I found pretty interesting. Oh yeah. Yeah. So it was just, it was just you with with your trombone. Right. And so many people were like, "Wait, what's going on here?" Like, I, you guys... I missed an opportunity, man. I could have I could have gotten some lunch money if I had my case <laughs> open. I was just there goofing around next to the tram. So. Yeah, but I saw it's, it's a good time. I saw a couple people I'm connected with that are at the conference who were basically saying like, "I wish I would have known. I could have brought my guitar. I could have brought this. I could have brought that." So I don't think this is going anywhere. I don't think it's going anywhere. I think we're on to a good thing, man. Yeah, I yeah. think so. It, you, music and engineering, they're very closely related. I've found that Take it entire, from you. Right? It, yeah, right? Yeah. But it's, uh, it's a wonderful celebration of creative people, uh -huh. whether it's music, design, the fine arts. It's, it's a lot of the same community, and we have those people here this week. But I figure, you know, in terms of the, uh, the facetious claim that you're going to get a noise violation, <laughs> That, that's, that, our, that's the goal. We might be headed there yeah. uh, for, for 3D Experience Until 2025. In this, uh, in this space. So. Yeah, and we've been saying all, yeah. <laughs> we've been saying all throughout the stream that you know one of the big goals of doing live is of course to bring a lot of the event as much as we can uh, you know, in these sort of uh, bite-sized pieces to you. But mm -hmm. surely we want you and your instruments yes. uh, at 3D Spiritual 2025. <laughs> we, we made that announcement today. Yeah. Uh, general sessions for the product announcements. That's for those sorts of crazy unhinged announcements. There we go. Uh, but yeah, let's let's keep going. Okay. I saw a, saw a SolidWorks model over here. Yeah. If you want to, you can actually, I guess just hold oh, this. Oh, okay. Yeah. Great, so we have, uh, we have SolidWorks connected, hooked up. 
to a live assembly model of the Whoa. power loader. Ah, where's it going? There. 3D connection mouse. So we just, uh, it's always fun to see how people design things. This is from the Hacksmith team up in Ontario, Canada. So the real thing is out in the playground. Yeah. Right now. So we have the virtual twin and the real deal all in the same room. I, uh, I have to say, I, I, you and I, we both worked with the Hacksmith team uh, over time. Yeah. I've never seen, I've never actually seen this model. Well, now's your chance. You can yeah. come pick it apart. People can break it, blow the tree up, it doesn't matter. We can just reload it. That's so actually, that's actually we, have, we, have, yeah. we have a bit of extra time here. I mean, I, I, if I were watching this, probably a good way to think about this, right? <laughs> right. If I were watching this, I'd like to go through the, the feature tree. Tell, let us know in the chat what you think about the feature tree here. Uh, so I see that they're, uh, they're using, using some folders. See the uh, H-frame. Uh, this looks like a using some sub-assembly structure here. Yeah. See some flexible right here on the tree. If you can take a look at that, some uh, yeah. flexible sub-assemblies. The center of mass, I learned, was very important to calculate uh, yeah. uh, getting this thing on and off the trailer because it is quite top-heavy compared to the stock Caterpillar bottom end. That it, it, turned, it started life out as a brand new skid, uh, skid steer. So now it's a lot cooler. So we have this. You mentioned we have this in the playground. Right. Yeah, it's sitting out there right now. We're actually headed to the playground uh, in just a bit. I, we published the agenda for live. Oh, perfect. Uh, yeah, so I, I think in about, about a half hour or so, uh, we'll be out there and we'll actually see. We'll, we'll talk to the Hasmic team and we'll see, the, we'll see the power loader, right? Yeah, I see a bunch of flexible sub-assemblies. Uh, I see some mirrored components. Um, yeah, I was, I was genuinely curious. I was like, I, yeah. I've never actually seen that, uh, that model in there. We got, a, we got Master Chief over here I'll look at throwing Master Chief. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, the hive, the hive is uh, probably the, one of the most fun places I would say at the at the entire conference. Uh, but I, I see Dan Dan Wagner over there. Okay, so he's actually let's let's get a let's get some of this footage over here. Go interrupt Dan. Okay. So so look, there's a there's a camera here. So Brad Brad has a camera. Brad of Impact Props. Shout out Impact Props. So Brad has a camera. He's actively filming. There's another <laughs> podcast up, that's uh, that that's going on right here. We can we can get in the background. Hi guys. So I, I'm on I'm on the core podcast. So definitely search for that uh, here. Let's 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 be on the core podcast, Matt. Here we go. We're gonna photo bomb there. Hi guys. We're, we're on each other's podcast. This is yeah. this That's is right. a, a SolidWorks Live core podcast first ever production. What's going on, guys? I know it's a collaboration. I'll call it. A collaboration. collaboration yeah. yeah. Okay, Thanks. I'll take that. Yeah. A co-brand. A, a co Where can we get some some uh, extrudo? Extrudo. Uh, stop by the desk. I will definitely. We will definitely stop by It tastes. It tastes. Uh, a. It tastes a lot like Celsius energy drink. Mm. Yeah. I'll say that. It tastes oh. a lot like that. I don't know. The, the kiwi was... flavor. I will say. It tastes a lot like that. So we, we said that was <laughs> the, one of the best speakers and one of the best skits. Yeah. yeah. yeah you, you smashed it. It was you, right? No. Oh, always take credit. <laughs> always, always take credit <laughs> for the uh, successes <laughs> and, and dodge yeah. everything else. I, you need to do a whole line as that mm. personality. Oh, oh, you're, t you're talking about that. Oh, yeah. that, that wasn't me. It, it's method acting. Right? You, mean that, be in you mean my cousin, Chad? Your cousin, Chad. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's method acting. Nice. But thank, thank you. No, so thank what, you. what's going on with these, uh, these microphones here? So these microphones have been 3D printed. Um, ah. This is who we actually we've got, we managed to get uh, HP to sponsor us. So we got these small DJI mics that are sitting in here. No way, that's so cool. We can, we take, can, we, can we take a look at that? Oh, are we getting... Oh, hot. You're going to talk in all the mics at the same time. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. All, all these so microphones. It's going to be tricky. We're just trying right. to touch them. It's like a press conference. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah. like the, it's like the feeling if you Google Google, you'll break the internet. I feel like we'll break the stream if we, we touch we might. If we touch mics. That. Yeah, we're testing the Wi Fi right now. <laughs> yes, so, we, yeah. so yeah. tell, tell us about the mic design. Uh, the mic we designed in SolidWorks uh, okay. collaboratively on our podcast live. Uh, you know, I designed the, the main handle of it, gave the model to Johnny. On his side, he designed the rest of it, added in the logos, and then okay. we 3D printed them. It's been printed on HB, MJF, and EOS SLS. Nice. Do so, you, uh, you wash these every night, or are they they're gonna run the whole week? Oh, they're, they're brand new. Yeah. yeah. So they're yeah. good to go. All right. Yeah, they should be good. Do you get a lot of debris? Uh, do you, you really, like, not, do, do, not, do, yeah. do you spit a lot on the microphone? Going, it's the first time we're using them. So, it's, okay. It's new. Oh, look at this. Yes. We got some, we got some live. They have arrived. Over here, finally. Let's let's take a look at this this <laughs> music. <laughs> Matt, you're going to play some, uh, some of your Wow. We're, we are, folks, we are one drummer away from success right now. <laughs> <laughs> <It's> <laughs> As you guys can see, this is one of the most eclectic spaces. But yeah, before we, before we move out of the core podcast shot, can we actually take a look at, at the, uh, 
at the, at the microphone setup. I thought that was really cool how you did that. Can you take off the, uh, yeah. I think that, that's super cool. So that's that's how it's, it's 3D printed, right? So you 3D printed it and then it, there's an insertable. That's on my Okay. Thanks. Awesome, cool. Well, thank you guys. All design is all right. Thanks, Sean. Yeah. Awesome, see you guys. All right, wow. Yeah, we're, we're getting a little bit of everything uh, at yeah. this conference. And it really is evident, I think, of how, how the conference has grown, right? There was, there was none of the stuff happening 25 years ago uh, by, by any means. We didn't have the, the live music station. Um, yeah, but you drop by, you get swag, you get these t-shirts. Uh, what else do we have uh, in, the, in the swag department? I see Let's some other check swag over there. Master Chief's oh. gonna model some Oh wow, some, uh, I've been gifted. Can you, <laughs> some solid why, do, you, why do you have socks uh, inside, inside, your, inside your armor? Yeah. What a wacko. <laughs> this way. Love Master Chief. Yeah, so let's take a look. We have another uh, another swag table over here. So we got uh, got the, ma the, uh, the Master Chief edition SolidWorks right. socks. The coveted, I, limited edition. Yep. SolidWorks socks are here. Socks are socks are always a uh, always a big. We also uh, have some ballistic bracelets. I think there's a whistle on there, some paracord, just in case. Very neat. It, one of the things that I love about this <clears throat> event is, of course, the networking. Right, the hive is huge on that. But even like if we look at this uh, at this right here, like this station. We're looking for feedback, you know, user survey of SolidWorks.com. It's a great way to connect with the team here at SolidWorks and Decimal System. Uh, you know, if you're interested in being a SolidWorks blogger, like there, there's so many sort of connections happening uh, inside and, and outside of the hive. <laughs> oh no. We so got you, more, it's fine. So, it's so, what, so you gave me a pair of socks and you're stealing the rest of the swag. It's okay. <laughs> oh, how nice of you. <laughs> While we're over here. I don't know what just happened there. Yeah, it's all good. Yeah, so let's, uh, let's take a look at this. This is a beautiful so painting. So Mark Alger is an artist that we work with every year. He's a Canadian, and he's here this year. Uh, as you can tell, most likely, this, this is uh, Nashville. It's a world last year. We have ExoSapien, their big prosthesis mech that was out in the playground last year has been captured. We got thousands of people, the same, the same theme that we saw over there on the other wall, the Imagine theme. So it's, this was an incredible project. And it's here for everyone to enjoy. That's that's so cool. So that's uh that's our friend uh, Titan yes. Gilroy from Titans of CNC. I yeah. see the. I actually have I have that shirt. We have that shirt. We do. We did a, when we were on site with them last year. It was yeah. A lot of fun. If you're interested in, in Titans of CNC, we did a whole series, like a whole three days of, of live stream. So if you're on the SolidWorks YouTube, as you definitely are right now, I can say that assuredly. Uh, yeah. yeah, after 3D Experience World, check out those uh, those streams from Titans of CNC. And he's also going to be here tomorrow on the shop floor. True. 4 to 6 p.m. We're going to do a meet and greet, so make sure to, to come and say hi there as well. Yeah, it's, it's another interesting uh, sort of artifact of the event, right? Uh, just, again, the different types of attendees. Mm -hmm. uh, we're actually we're, we're going to, we have an event, right, at, at Titan we do. Shop. Yeah, which is awesome. Yeah, it's Getting some good. influencer creators together, which I don't think that's ever happened. So, yeah, things are Another things are community growing. strength that we have, uh, the influencer program. The 17 different creators from around the world that are here. They work wow. with our products and now work with each other, and we're, we're the, the catalyst of all that design and creativity here in person this week. So the people the people that you guys watch on YouTube, outside of us, of course. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, in that room, you probably have, you know, you think of all the channels that we all subscribe to. Like how many, if you were to total all the subscribers, all the followers, it's definitely, I would say, it's definitely in the, you know. I can tell you, it's 50, go, go 52 ahead. million subscribers. 52 million, wow. The, the entire program combined is 52 million people around the world subscribe to their channels, yeah. That, that is incredible. Uh, so the yeah. artist here, Mark Algar, uh, who, used to, who used to work, he's actually, ret he's retired now, right? Mm -hmm. He used to work at a, at a company that was using SolidWorks uh, mm -hmm. for, for quite some time. Been able to keep in touch with him uh, through, the, through the corporate accounts team. But yeah, this is a stunning painting. I'm, I'm, I think, like you mentioned with music, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of us have this sort of mutual appreciation for the arts, right? You yes. think of you think of uh, STEM, and sometimes people, you know, use the acronym STEAM. Exactly. Um, but yeah, like I, I have such an appreciation. You see, it, there's just little details. We saw general session a little bit earlier, uh, but we see we see the uh, we say uh, you know sort of affectionately, right? The, the running of the nerds is happening right here. 
Uh, so I, I love you know honing in on these little details. The exo sapien <laughs> making Just its way, out. Yeah. making its way in the general session. Yeah. I don't know uh, where is the exo sapien exo sapien going to sit in one of these seats or I, how's that going to work we, out? We, there's a safety perimeter. You know we want to make sure we, we show that right. But yeah. <laughs> no, it was uh, it was fun to watch the thing unload last year in the playground. It's also, we we have uh, <clears throat> this is the this one of the, the is this the speeder bike. It's Bowhead. Yeah, this is okay. So this yep, is, that's yep. Bowhead's creation there. Bowhead's, uh, and they're they're in the Maker Zone this week as well. I'm sure you guys are going to go by there if you haven't already. Hundred percent, absolutely. Yep. We so will uh, be there. We will be there. And also, just uh, you know, outside of the the products and the, and the creations and the, the the moments that this painting captures, I also think the way that it uses light, like this, feels really hard. You know, to kind of kind of get the right mapping of you know what is it, that circular projection onto the audience at that like that. That is stuff that I really, truly admire. And you see more and more of this stuff at 3D Experience World, right? It's Absolutely. not just, it's not just like the, we talked earlier, of course, there will always be, you know, over a hundred solar sessions or whatever it is, right? But you get to take in all this other stuff. I think that was the promise that we made uh, a number of years ago when we transitioned to uh, it being called 3D Experience World. When it, to read the title card here, I don't know if you got a shot of it, but it does read that this painting represents thousands of the world's most creative people gathered to imagine the future intersection of technology and humanity. The 3D, uh, the human 3D experience is what that reads right there. I think it sums it up pretty well. I think so. so. Well, hey, I'm going to go, let's go bother Dan. Yes, he was let's not bother here for the Dan. This. We have to talk to him. We, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> so yeah, let's, let's go see Dan. And Dan's actually standing with uh, one of our creators. You guys are on, you guys are on camera now. Well, I, All right. <laughs> Every, everyone here was on camera. Uh, so Aryan, you were really busy this morning. I was supposed to talk to you, uh, Aryan. So your your channel, you'll be with us a little bit later. Oh yeah, doing your your technical presentation, which we're really excited about. Uh, but yeah, go ahead and introduce yourself. Introduce your channel. Hi, I'm Aryan. Uh, I was not expecting this, but it's, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm loving it so far. It's uh, first time here, and I had no idea this is uh, going to be this big and. Much, much more than I could imagine. <laughs> you, uh, I'm blown you, away. You had a fan come up to you. You had a you had a, you had a fan encounter yeah. yesterday. Yeah. You may have had more since then, but this was like you had just checked in. I saw you. And Did you? Okay. Yeah. Well, well, I saw you check in, and you were like, "Yeah, somebody, somebody recognized me and asked for my picture." Yeah. Um, if I'm trying to be so honest, cool. this is a new experience, and I, I am growing to love it. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is. You've made so many videos, so many solar tutorial videos. You've helped so many people around the world. I'm sure there are people, we don't have a screen in front of us. There are probably people on YouTube right now saying, you've helped me in, in so many cases to advance my skills. Uh, but to be here, it's like you said to me yesterday, to be here and actually put a face to those viewers, those commenters, that's, that's really special. That's really cool. It solidated everything for me. We're just When you sit behind the computer and uh, upload the video in for the hope of helping people, that's one thing, but when those people come to you in flesh and they give that feedback to you, it just makes everything much more real. And uh, I did not have this opportunity uh, before being here. So yeah, I kind of owe that to this place. Cool. Yeah. Well, hey, I just want to say hello. Man, I, I appreciate it. Yeah, and we'll, we'll see you a little yeah. bit later today. Yeah, we will do that. Awesome. Nice. I'm going to talk to this guy here. Oh, uh, oh, hey. That's all Dan. All Dan. All right, we got it. Um, so, Dan, you uh, you missed the beginning of this session. Yeah, I feel like I'm actually <laughs> late for the party. Yeah, though. you can hold this. I got to kind of like here. Um, but, yeah, one thing that I think you and I helped when Dan and I were on the same team here at SolidWorks, we helped to sort of co-develop meetups. Right. Uh, which I was mentioning in the intro to 3D Experience World Live today during the pre-show to general session. That was actually a fairly new part of 3D Experience sure. World. Sure. Um, I think the first time we did meetups, not the Hive, but the meetups uh, in or, and around the Hive was 20, how many years ago now? 2019 or 2020. Yeah. Years, yeah. So uh, tell us, you know, what what do we have in store uh, as far as meetups go at this event? Yeah, for sure. And, and it was interesting because even in Nashville last year we had uh, hive hangouts here in the hive, right? And then we had meetups kind of separately, and we kind of realized let's just put them all into one track, sure. one collective group. Uh, working with Matt Hall and Matt Clegg, we have 23 um, individual networking sessions that are taking place here at 3D Experience World. A lot of them are actually happening right here in the hive. And that's kind of cool. I think about the hive is it's it's a non-traditional space. It's not a 
a classroom set up or a theater, right? There's literally a band playing and Master Chief is that's, running that's around. That's not a traditional engineering Yeah, conference. not exactly. I mean, you do learn about a lot about SOLIDWORKS, yeah. but you don't always have this like amazing piano, piano player in the background, yeah. guitarist. So we, we try to create like a, a welcoming atmosphere, a networking space where people feel welcome and they can kind of relax a bit and hang out. And I think we're seeing exactly that right now. <laughs> it just doesn't cool. feel uh, comfortable. I don't really know uh, yeah. <laughs> what will for yeah. you. <laughs> And it's just cool to see our community members come yeah. together. Like, I just had a chance to catch up and chat with Arian. We've been conversing via email and text for a while, and to see him here in person is just, it's, it's really cool, because he has like built a community around himself, right? In, in his own space, and we want him to come here and kind of feel part of our community and inspire our, our users to do the same thing. So. That, is, that is absolutely a huge part that I don't feel like we've hit on enough. Um, first, first time attendees, it was really, right. When the Hive first started, uh, just a you know, still just a few years ago, it's still evolving. Uh, it was really founded on the promise of helping first-time attendees right. engage with the event, right, and get to know yeah. people. And that's that's still a big part of this, though, right? Yes, and to that point, happening right now, about 10:45 a.m. Uh, Central, we have a meetup for first-time attendees. Joe Lance, like the famous Joe Lance, who just who, helped who everybody. Better. Yeah, who better? Yeah. Uh, that just helped everybody run into general session. Uh, he's leading a meetup about like why are you here and why should you come back? Like what are you what are you hoping to get from this? So it's just it's just really cool to see that come together. It's awesome. I think uh, we have we have a band forming over here. If we could uh, if we could take a look. Jeez. There we go. More and more. Music. <laughs> it's slowly coming together. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what which. Tell us in the chat which type of band is this? Yeah. <laughs> which type of band will they come to be? Yeah. Who's the uh, who's the front person in this band? Master Chief, Brad. Matt. We're going to any, any uh, first timers out there, if you're watching this, there's a meetup happening right now yeah. about why you should you come back to the 3D Experience world. And mm. you're getting tips like right from a pro about how to enjoy this week, how to make the most of it, all like the, all, like, the little tips and tricks you learn over the years. Um, so, yeah, that's happening right now. And a whole series of other meetups over the next three days. We actually have a QR code that we could show, and we could, we could paste the link in the chat. Uh, this is the first year we're doing this. We get a lot of people saying, hey, you know, when, it, when is 3D Experience World going to happen? When are tickets going to go and sell? When am I going to see the agenda? Right. Uh, you can actually go to this link that we'll paste in the chat. We'll have it in the description to sign up for updates about 3D Experience World 2025. Yep. Uh, so you're not having to wonder and like scour social media and be like, okay, when are they, when are they going to post about it? Uh, so yeah, um, you can definitely definitely send that definitely send that out. Man, I, I think. Uh, I think there's there's about to be some crazy stuff going on uh, here in the hive. I probably won't be able to hear you. It's uh, all right, man. That's, very much longer. Th that's the nature of the space. It's yeah. A so we got a. So you got later on. You have the uh, Swagin, the SolidWorks User Group Network Summit. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, actually, that feels like a lifetime from now because I have these meetups this morning. We have another awesome meetup uh, this morning with. It's like a panel discussion with all of SolidWorks R and D and some members of tech support, like, like basically just face to face kind of. Exactly, that's awesome. Uh, I think over 200 people have signed up for that. Wow, I'm not even sure the room can hold 200. <laughs> so, uh, so that's looking great. And then yeah, tonight we have the Swagin Summit, which is basically like uh, an annual gathering of all the user group leaders. We give out awards. We kind of catch up on what happened last year, and we hear from a guest speaker. Spoiler alert: my guest speaker is Arian, who was uh, just here a second wow. ago. So, pretty excited. That's so cool. Yep. Well, Dan, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you guys. So up next, we'll have the intro to Monomania. We'll have an exclusive interview with Manish Kumar, uh, and then we'll be heading to the playground. So at the desk. Thanks, guys.
Well, everyone, we are live here at 3D Experience World 2024. I'm here with Jen Dirksen. Jen, how's it going? I'm terrific. How are you, Sean? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. There's so much action here in the playground. And we are here at, I think, perhaps the most storied booth of them all, the Model Mania booth. And one of the things I find so interesting about Model Mania is that we have so many first-time attendees every single year. Model Mania, we'll talk about it. It's been going on for a long time. But yeah, let's just start off with just the primer. Like, what is Model Mania? Model Mania is a modeling challenge. And people come to the booth, and we will give you a, a drawing and ask you to create that part in SolidWorks Connected. And then just like in real life, you know, there's always edits and changes to be made, always revisions that come down the line. So once you complete phase one, we give you the next drawing, which is phase two. Mm. And then there you have to do some changes to the model. And it's all about design intent and making sure that, you know, you put some good design into your, your initial design so that then when you make the changes, everything goes smoothly, hopefully. Yeah, it's so, you know, the approach of, you start to think about what, what makes a good 3D CAD modeler, right? So if you look at a shape, you, you read a drawing, right? There's so many different ways to make a part. That's something we talk a lot about in SolidWorks Live Design, right, our streaming program. Uh, but when it comes down to that phase two, that phase three, that phase 36, whatever it is, <laughs> right, that revision, uh, it does matter how you design your part, right? Like you said, design intent. How may this evolve? How may this change? And it sounds like Model Mania, that's a big part of what we're testing there, right? Exactly. Um, that's really important because, you know, you can just start drawing and just create a bunch of features, mm -hmm. but if they don't, you know, relate to each other and you don't have good relations and, and good design intent, as I mentioned, then things can go haywire when you edit things later. So the whole idea is to design well so that you can prepare for the unknown changes that may be coming down the line. And in this case, we know that they're coming. Yeah. They're coming right away as soon as you're done phase one. Uh, so. Um, yeah, that's, that's, that's interesting. You know, this, 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 uh, this competition here, right? This has been going on for a number of years, right? I think this is now the 25th model. Right? Yes. Well, you'll notice that I have a 25. You have custom. You have custom swag. I have custom swag. <laughs> yes. So this is actually the 25th anniversary of 3D Experience World. Mm -hmm. Actually, it used to be called SolidWorks World back in the day. Yep. But uh, this is technically our 24th anniversary of Model Mania because it started in 2000. But we actually have done 25 models over the years because last year. We did two. We had an in-person as well as a virtual. And so technically we have 25 models. So we're on the 25 bandwagon as well. <laughs> it's, it's a great competition. I think you know, there, there's something for everyone in a way, right? If I think about competing in a competition like this, there's the, there's the prestige factor, right? If you really want to test your skills, you know, try, to, try to get the best time and try to, of course, with an accurate it's model. The, it's the bragging rights, really. Yeah. I mean, we do have prizes. Yeah, which is important to note, right? Right. We do have so first place gets $500, second is $400, and third place is $250. So those are pretty good prizes. And we even have it separated by reseller and customer. So there's actually six prizes that we give out. But the biggest prize is really bragging rights. You know, people are like, I'm, I, yeah. I'm uh, placed in Model Mania this year. So. I'd have to say, whenever we showcase the winners, that is, those are the proudest people all across the conference. And by the way, on live, you guys will see day three, we will have the winner's announcement. So you'll get to see everyone beaming with pride and thinking like, hey, I got the quickest time. Not only that, I got an accurate part, right? Uh, there's so much that, that goes into that. It's, it, it could be a pretty tense environment though, right? It's pretty intense, yeah. And as Sean, as you mentioned, the winners will be announced on Wednesday at 12.30. So Tune in. Tune in for that, and you'll see all the winners. Yeah. Do, do you want to take a look at the booth? Can we? I was, I was before we got on. I was I was saying to Jen, my first world ever. You know, of course, Model Mania is existing. I see the curtain. There, there is a mystique around it. There's such a mystique, right? It's like, what's behind the curtain? What does it look like to try to get the quickest time with an accurate part, right? I would love to do that. Let's okay. let's let's go it take is, a look. It is kind of scary if you think about it. It's like there's this curtain. There's this like hidden area behind it. You're not allowed to see it. Yep. So I can show you a little bit. Yeah. Let's okay. A little bit. Sneak peek, just for you guys. 
All right, so let's let's take a look at this mythical booth here. Here we are. Like I, my, my blood pressure is already rising. I'm getting so nervous. The Model Media booth. Here we are. Yes, there are curtains here, and normally these are closed because people are inside. You know, actually taking the challenge. Yep. But if you notice over here, you'll see that we have. This is our challenge from last year. Oh, okay. So this model, this is Model Mania 2023. And as you can see, we've got a phase one where we design this part. And then phase two, it's a very similar part with some edits. So in this case, we're actually changing this whole face here to be rotated around. And then we're changing the, um, the counter bore holes into slots. And so th this was, this was a, a challenging uh, part to do. And I hope that this year will be a little bit easier. We'll see. It's, it's interesting, right? There's the phase one, there's the phase two. And one thing that people will ask is, okay, so phase one, phase two. Uh, do I get to see phase two before I you know, start the part at all? Or do you only see phase two after you've submitted and completed, in a way, phase one? Well, we couldn't really call it the Model Mania challenge <laughs> if we gave you phase two right away. So the whole idea is that you design the part, you know, you create phase one completely, and then once you're finished, then we give you phase two. Because just like in real life, you know, when there's revisions to sure. a part, you never know what's coming down the line. Yep. So it's supposed to mirror real life, right? All of our software users know that, uh, whether it's revision two or revision 10. Exactly. Um, another thing that we've added, right? We talked about how this is uh, the 25th Model Mania model uh, that people are getting to try their hand at, right? Uh, another thing that we've talked about in that regard uh, is, at least off camera, is how even the materials that people get have changed. Of course, technology has changed. We see that all over the playground here. Uh, right? We get the 2D drawing. That's not new. But we also have a 3D printed part in the booth. We can't show you the one right now uh, that's here uh, during this year's uh, iteration. But that's right. We have a 3D printed part, right? That's right. And so we have a, a 3D printed part for both phase one and phase two. And so you can actually hold the part in your hand and visualize that way as well to kind of get the difference. And of course, we even um, color code them. So phase one is one color and phase two is another color. So you can't really mix them up. But it's the whole idea is um, we want it to be clear that this, this part uh, you know, how it's manufactured and to see how it's actually designed. And so we give you both the drawing and the printed part to make it as easy as possible to recreate it. And then once phase two comes around, we give you a phase two drawing and another phase two printed part. So interesting. Yeah, it, it's one of the things I've found really, uh, really sort of almost funny in a way, sitting in the audience is, and those of you who've been to World or at least, you know, at least been to one of them or, or watched it online, can attest to this. You sort of almost hear like an audible uh, groan or gasp when they see the phase two. It's like, oh, that's that's the part that got me. How did I do that? Uh, you as as the creator, right, of Model Mania, the person who's running Model Mania today, at least, right? Uh, how does that uh, how does that make you feel? Does it make you chuckle when you get that reaction? I have to say a little bit. You know, <laughs> I don't want to sound, you know, like I'm taking pleasure in people's pain or anything, <laughs> but. Uh, I, I do, it, it, it validates that the change was a good change. It's not just changing a fillet size. It's not just adding a hole. There's actually a real change that needs to be made to the part to make it more efficient or whatever is needed in the design of this fictitious part. It, it, it sort of is, it reminds me, a big part of this event, right, is, is certification. Uh, it's a big part of world in general. And it kind of reminds me of that, at least of, say, like the CSWE. Right, because a lot of times you'll see in that second iteration that maybe the quickest way to do it, or a very quick way to get to the phase two result, is to use a tool that maybe isn't in the toolkits of every SolidWorks user today, like maybe a replace face or delete face or a cut with surface, right, where you didn't necessarily expect it. So I think it, in a way it's interesting because it seems like it's testing uh, sort of the the knowledge of of the tools in the overall toolkit, right? Exactly. Yeah, and there, I mean, th there are multiple ways to do things. You can, you know, edit a part. You can, uh, I mean, you can edit a feature. You can add like a move face feature, like you mentioned. There's other things that you can do to kind of reshape it and do what you need to do. Um, I, I've tried to keep it fairly simple so that you don't need to be like a super advanced user. 
we want to have Model Mania be accessible to everyone. And so the parts are using basic features, you know, boss extrude, cut extrude, fillet, that kind of thing. And, uh, I, but I, I think that it's still a good challenge and I, I think that people are going to enjoy it this year. Yeah, and for those of you watching at home, uh, you know, we've mentioned there's been so many iterations. We have drawings, you know, all over the all over the booth here. But we've had many, many iterations at this point uh, of Model Mania, and there is a way, right, that you can check out the previous iterations, right, and to sort of build your skills there. Absolutely, yeah. You can go to um, mysolidworks.com and uh, and see all the models or all the drawings, I should say, there. Um, and you can also go to YouTube. We've got all the solution videos there as well. So if you get stuck and you just can't figure out, you know, how to go to phase two, or you can't, you know, think of how to, how to do that next step, um, we have all the solution videos on YouTube for you to go and watch. Now I realize that you guys are, are not here. We hope to see you in 2025. We hope you compete in 2025. But look, we're right here. We're right on the doorsteps, right? Can we take a look inside this booth, Jen? I think that we could, but I can't show you what's underneath the uh, drawing. <laughs> but let's let's go on in there and take a look. So this is what you see when you walk into the Model Mania booth. We have the registration instructions along along with the uh, there's a video that actually shows you exactly what to do, and then we have SolidWorks ready to go here. All you need to do is to fill out your name and your email and you know your contact information and then once you're ready to go this start button will light up and you hit the start button and you get going so the drawing itself is right here I can't show it to you though and underneath this is the printed part for this year so if you if you can come down to 3d experience world and come check it out I would uh, I'd love to see you here or come by next year So thanks again for coming by the Model Mania booth. I'm super excited. Yeah. All right, everyone. Well, that's a wrap. We'll, we'll show the QR code uh, so you can sign up for updates to see how you can attend 3D Experience World 2025. Hope to see you here at this booth. Uh, Jen and I will welcome you. We will wish you good luck, of course. That's the best we can do. But uh, Jen, thanks again. My pleasure. Thanks for coming.
All right, everyone, we are here at 3D Experience World 2024. I'm here with a special guest, SOLIDWORKS CEO, Manish Kumar. Manish, how's it going? I'm good, how are you, Sean? Good, good. Uh, last year, it was actually pretty funny. You and I, mm -hmm. we had a bit of a hot sauce competition. Uh, you're, we're always having fun here at 3D Experience World uh, 2024. Things were always changing. We're outside the VIP lounge, which mm -hmm. right now, by the way, we're just getting things set up. Uh, so this will be booming, buzzing with activity. Uh, but this is the this is a special year, right? This is the 25th year of the event. Have, how many worlds have you been to? This was a question which was asked to me yesterday, and I, I'm going to give slightly longer answer. Okay. Uh, as you know, I joined as a developer. Mm -hmm. For a lot of years, we developers were fixing things, making things happen so that SolidWorks world can happen. Back then it was SolidWorks world, right? Yeah. So I have not been here for all the 25 years, but yes, our product has been here for <laughs> all those 25 years. I think it's, it's more like uh, 15 plus years, I would say. Very cool. Yeah, and I, I think back over the years, of course, you know, the, like, you know, the event has changed, it's evolved. I remember, you know, what was it, just, just a few years ago, right? Uh, it was announced that you became the, the SOLIDWORKS CEO. How, how has the event changed uh, in your eyes just over the past few years? Like, what are the, the sort of big developments that have excited you, whether it's uh, in terms of the types of attendees that have come or changes in the event itself? Um, actually, I'll start with things which hasn't changed, mm. which is the passion that energy, the community feeling that we get, that hasn't changed, that's the DNA of this event, right? Everyone here who comes here, they come here not because, uh, it's not just because they want to learn something, it's because they want to give back to community something. I met so many people who are doing so many different sessions, why? You have to ask your a, a question, why? Because it's something which they know and they want to share with, back with the community. And to me, that that's what makes this conference amazing. Now, things which have changed is, it used to be, as you know, SolidWorks world. It didn't used to be 3D experience world. Yep. But at some point, what we realized was that just design alone is not enough. And this was the advent of our whole 3D experience works portfolio, where we said that if, first thing is that you, if you create a product, not enough. You have to deliver an experience. Now, if you have to deliver an experience, experience is a lot to do with, of course, design because if your design is not good nothing's gonna happen yeah, sure. it has to be functional of course but it also needs to be robust if it breaks during your very first try you're not going to like it would you same well we, we have the model mania booth right there it's a great reminder <laughs> then you have to think about manufacturing it at the right cost then you have to somehow try to capture the emotions of your users with those experiences right and end of the day if you're not delivering everything on time Meaning, if you're not planning it really well, doesn't matter what you delivered, because if you delivered things late, someone else might have delivered it before you. So we realized that design aspect is one part of the whole delivery of experience. And that's where we exploded it to 3D Experience Works portfolio. And that's when we also changed the name of this event from SolidWorks World to 3D Experience World. The reason is that you are delivering experience now. Our, our users are delivering experience. So we expanded it to include all these other brands which contribute to this expanded vision of ours to come here, work with us. So I have seen it grow beyond what it used to be. And it's a good thing. Change That change is a good thing. Well, like you mentioned, I think, you know, the passion that our users have. You know, so many users coming here to present, and, and we flash these statistics all over the live broadcast, right? The amount of sessions, the hands-on workshops, the, the networking events, even those, like, you know, we, we brought those in, let's say, four years ago. We have all these networking sessions, I think over 20 here at this event that are catered towards specific professionals. But really the underpinning of that is, is the passion our users have. Exactly. I, I once heard a quote that, you know, uh, something that's sort of unique about an event is that, you know, that, that really does, the, the way that people feel at your event mm -hmm. is how they feel. That's the vibe of your brand, right? And that, that, just, that just doesn't change, right? It is, and in fact, yesterday night, I was at a, uh, at a champion's party, I would say. We didn't, we didn't have that, um, uh, even uh, three, three plus years ago, yeah. champion's program. Now, someone told me that look at all the brain power in this room. And I had to correct them that uh, brain power, yes, you're right. Sure, it's part It's of it. there. But you have to look at the heart power that is in this room. Because every single one of them 
they know everything about SolidWorks, they are still here. Why? Mm. Because they love us and we love them for the same exact thing. Yep. It's huge. It's it's interesting as well, like to think about even, you know, we talk about three years ago, uh, 25 years ago, you know, what were the what were the big sort of differences? But it's also interesting to look back even a year. You know, I think back to, of course, you know, we make the jokes about the hot sauce and everything, uh, those little competitions, you know, memories that we have over the years. But even over the past year, you know, one of the, one of the topics that's been brought up more and more just in the sphere of technology overall, and I know you would agree, is artificial intelligence, right? AI. AI is in every sentence, it seems, at every conference, every discussion, almost every day around the world now. Um, uh, one thing that a lot of people don't know, and I, I've seen you mention this before, mm -hmm. is that AI has been involved in our products for some time, in a way, and it continues to be, right? Um, definitely. AI, we have been working on AI even before the chat GPT made <laughs> AI a buzzword, right? Mm -hmm. Today it's a buzzword, everyone knows about it, but yep. before chat GPT, not everyone was as excited about AI as we were. We already have delivered things, functionalities, AI-based functionalities to our users. It's already in our, in our existing products, release products. So it's not something which is new to us. We have been working on it since ages, or since years, I would say. The good thing is that because of this buzz, it does give us power to focus even more on it. <laughs> because before it used to be some one-off thing. Now we have dedicated focus on it to a point where we'll show some really cool functionalities tomorrow, which is um, actually, Watch the video, I'll not spoil the secret. <laughs> Please watch the video. It's amazing functionality that we are going to show because uh, it shows the power of AI where um, once you have a data set with which you are able to learn something and if you can provide a different data set, you'll be able to extract that knowledge and generatively create 3D models that will blow your mind. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's that's super cool. I mean, that's, when people talk about like the benefits, the the, the potential of, of AI, these are the things they think about, especially, of course, designers and engineers, right? These are the things that we we hope we'll, we'll get. And it's it's so cool at conferences like these where we get to see these announcements, right? These sort of revelations. Um, another, you know, a sort of announcement that that we've we've had this year is this, this partnership with, with Cadence, right? That, that's a big one. And when you talk about how this event has changed over the years, uh, you know, of course, it's not just in the sort of four walls of SOLIDWORKS world, now 3D experience world. It's also taking what we've seen in terms of what you guys are creating, right? And evolving this event, evolving our products around that. So Mechatronics, right? That's, that, 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 that's something huge that we've noticed. There's, there's a huge boom, will continue to be a huge boom of Mechatronics devices. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, and in fact, good that you mentioned, because if you look around here, almost every device has an electronics component in, in yeah. it, right? Everything which is moving, there is some electronics uh, component in there. Mm -hmm. So mechatronics, it's, it's not future, it's now. But the trouble is that even today, for mechatronics, there is a PCB design team and then there is a mechanical design team. And they're not really interacting as well as they should. Mm. The reason is because of course the tools are different, but collaboration has to be seamless. So we are the first collaborative to, we are we are developing the first collaborative kind of workflow with Cadence, our partners Cadence, to create this seamlessness with which PCB designers and mechanical engineers will be able to work and still deliver the final entire manufacturing uh, bill of material, I would say, on pretty experienced platform where you don't have to go anywhere. When you try to go and try to manufacture things, there is a single source of truth. There is no such thing that I have seen in the market. So we're here in Dallas. Manish, what are you most excited about for this particular year, 3D Experience World 2024? Uh, we are going to make a lot of new enhancements, of course. And you will see an amazing story skit that we uh, play every year. And in that skit, you'll, play, you'll see a lot of enhancements. But that's what we do every single year, okay? This year, we are also going to make some really major announcements. Cadence partnership mm -hmm. is part of that. Uh, then we are going to announce X Draft Site, which is going to give the capability of editing 2D uh, DWG DXF from a browser anywhere, any device. We are going to announce X Mechatronics, which is going to be for a limited availability, invite only, but it is going to help our customers create Mechatronics uh, uh, projects without uh, trying to create their own custom PCB boards. So mm -hmm. this is for out-of-box kind of uh, assembly and 
and stuff. The one that I'm most excited about is something to do with teachers. We know that our teachers, they are trying to train our next generation of workforce. Yeah. And when they try to do that, they have to suffer through a lot of pain in trying to create their lessons, in trying to create their courses, initiating their courses, trying to manage the class, manage the assignments, grading of the assignments and so on. We want to help them. We want to uh, make their life simpler. So there we are going to launch a teacher role with which they will be able to do all this, but on the platform in a much simpler way. And personally, if you ask me, I'm most excited about that announcement. I, I have to agree. That was the one I was most excited about. And the reason is, I think, because of the sort of broader ramifications of it. You know, if I think about, for example, if we were to cram what's in the teacher role, you know, into SolidWorks, first of all, it wouldn't make that much sense. Uh, but second of all, it, it would just be very kludgy, right? It, it, I don't think it would function very well. And it sort of, for me, paints a very clear picture of what a platform is supposed to function as, exactly. right? Exactly. So you can assign different capacities, mm -hmm. uh, and you can do almost everything that a teacher needs to do in a sort of design uh, educational context, right? I think that's, that's very illustrative, and I think that's, that's a cool example for an event like this, right? Exactly, because that's, that's essentially the, the passion that we want to bring back to that community. Mm -hmm. So to me, that's really special. Yeah. Well, it's so interesting. We have, we have a lot to cover uh, here at 3D Experience Pro. We're looking around. I mentioned at the top of this interview uh, here in the playground, we're just getting set up. You mentioned, you know, there's so much more uh, than just design right now at this mm -hmm. conference. You see all these different machines. We have the Maker Zone. Uh, we just did the interview with Model Mania. But uh, Manish, I know you're a busy guy at this conference. I wanted to thank you for your time and uh, catch up soon. Thank you. Yep. See you.
So we were recently just in the Hive, which was the epicenter of community involvement, and now we are in the playground, which we is are. a true playground. Tons <laughs> of, tons really of awesome is. machines here. Uh, have we explored here yet? Just full I've disclosure. made like 10 laps around here, but not since it's been all set up, so I'm pretty excited to take a loop. I haven't really seen much of anything, so every reaction you see here will be genuine. It will be my first time reaction of this space. I am very excited. Uh, so let's, let's just get going. Let's, yeah. let's get right here. So who do we have here? Who's, who's, our, who's our special guest today? Chris McBain. That's me. Hi, everyone. My name is Chris McBain. I'm an industry process consultant here at Dassault. I think my title's changed since then, but we'll just go with well, that. How's well, that well, sound? Chris, we all know when enough. you say industry right. process consultant to someone, they know exactly what oh, you mean. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Always the hit of parties. That's right. I should have used the abbreviation, <laughs> right, IPC. But yeah, so I've been here since Thursday setting up this amazing shop floor. It's just been so incredible the whole time, and I'm really looking forward to talking to you guys about it, for sure. Yeah, man. Yeah, I, I remember I walked in. You guys were you guys were just setting up. It's, it's really cool to see everything animated everything set up so yeah could you just take us through like, yeah yeah let's here? walk around this way we're gonna start with the robotics so you know our offering with Delmia is really our manufacturing packages three major things right it's robotics right cam programming CNC machines and then factory flow so let's come around this way and we'll take a look at this robot so what this is is this is mocking up a, a welding scenario a robotic welding cell um, with this, Luciano, would you like to come here yeah. for a second? Could you introduce yourself and talk a little bit to this? Yeah. Hi, I'm uh, Luciano Mancini. I'm a Dalmia Industry Process Consultant. And actually what you're looking at here is uh, a uh, Casal robot and programmed all through Dalmia Robotics Programming Essentials application. And that application is a uh, SolidWorks uh, connected role as well. And we can uh, produce uh, basically CAD to path. So arc welding, contouring, and dispensing and material handling as well. Yes. Oh, sorry, that's awesome, Luciano. And we, you know, one of the biggest things, if we come over here, we can see on the screen, one of the biggest benefits of, of Delmia is the virtual twin, right? So exactly what you see on your screen is what you're gonna see in real life, right? This isn't a digital twin where we kind of guess. What you're seeing here is a model with all the kinematics on it, all of the, all of the mechanics and timing that you're really going to get in real life. It's, it's really exciting to, and easy to set up. That's really sure. cool, because like, I like to do a lot of animation and stuff like that, but it's all faked, right? This is like, right. has the actual like, inertia and everything of the machine, so you really know what you're going to get. Yeah, you're absolutely right. It makes such a difference. And speaking of seeing what you're going to get, if we walk over here, we've kind of set up a fun little robotic cell that uh, actually decorates some cookies for people for the show. Wow, that's some, that's some cool swag right there. Yeah, it is pretty <laughs> neat. So um, we can do three major things with robotics with Delmia. We can do welding, as you saw. This is gonna be dispensing. And the third thing is pick and place. And that's really what a lot of people do is you know pick things off of machinery and then place them on a table, setups, things like that. And here we go. Look at it, it's going like crazy. Huh? Yeah, one of the biggest challenges with this machine was was uh, actually the uh, dispensing the Nutella. So we actually have to sous vide the Nutella in the back, get it warmed up uh, to get a perfect temperature for, uh, for what we're doing here. So again, everything you see here was programmed using Delmia Robotics Programming Essentials and uh, done all offline. Yeah, so that's key is the offline programming. The nice thing is with, with Delmia Robotics and the virtual twin, you're able to program your robots without shutting them down to test them mm -hmm. and moving around. A lot of the programming for robots you know, it's moving and storing, moving and storing. Yeah. With Delmia, we're able to do it offline, so your production never goes down, right? If you're getting new robots in, you can do it even before they come in. You can have them all programmed and ready to go. And you don't waste any precious Nutella testing things out. That's you absolutely right. <laughs> That's right. Go. And you leave it to Dassault to uh, sous uh, yeah. a Nutella, right? <laughs> so it's, it's pretty amazing. Great. So, Luciano, thank you very much. Thank so let's go ahead and head this way. We're going to look at those CNC machines sure. right now as we walk over here. Go this way. It's a little bit. So you guys enjoying the show so far? Yeah, oh, man. Yeah. yeah. This is this is one of my one of my favorite parts. Yeah. I mean, when we talk about Apocomic 3D Experience World and not not just SolidWorks World anymore, this is exactly what we're talking about. It's right? incredible, and it's great to see everything come up, come to life. Yeah. Right. We we yeah. live our life in such a virtual space yeah. that being able to see things like this is incredible. So what you'll see here, this is a this is a, a DN TT1800. This is called a mill turn. So this will do both milling and turning. Um, we programmed these little parts, so there's what's called an upper and lower turret. It's a really great solid machine and really, really easy to program. Um, our programmer, Craig Sircanic, programmed just these little giveaway parts yeah, where you're able to, to really machine 
around the entire part with this machine. So we're able to hold it on one end and machine it, and then turn it around and machine it on the other end. It's a really, really popular way of machining, and this machine is perfect for it. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. It's, a, it's, it's great to see this as well, like our, our viewers. And by the way, I wanted to say, if anyone has any ideas for any you know, robotics concepts. Like you, you guys have manufacturing lives that you do. Absolutely. Uh, you're often on Solaris Live, mm -hmm. right? Uh, talking about all these different manufacturing solutions. Do you have, have an idea for any robotics themed content or anything like that? I'm sure you guys would be super receptive to that. We are extremely receptive. Any kind of applications, cool parts, things like that. Yep. We would love to, to work with you, program them, get them on our machines and really make those ideas come to life. That's, that's what we do, right? It's yeah. for our customers, right? I, I don't program these for me, I program this for them. So yeah. I would love, any, yeah, anybody out there that has any ideas, I'd love to see them, for it's, sure. You know, one question that I find myself wanting to ask a lot of people at these booths, especially ones that are very sort of software-based, mm -hmm. is, you know, what's the difference, we have everyone watching on YouTube today, what's the difference watching on YouTube versus being here in person and getting an interface with it? But the answer seems almost pretty obvious. Right? right. To see the actual interaction with the machine and the software and to talk to you guys, the experts, right? It's absolutely right. And you know, one of the things I really love about the playground in general, not just the shop floor, is really seeing that tangible thing Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. That all of our customers make them from the maker space to all, everything that they're about to show you in this space. You guys should be really excited. It's absolutely amazing to me. It's a really cool, cool thing to be a part of for sure. There's nothing awesome. better than like cool and going. Chips flying. Chips flying. You got it. So let's come on over here real quick to another machine. Excuse me, guys. Excuse me, guys. So this, what we have here is, is a DVF 5000. This is actually a five axis milling machine. And we're machining a bull inside of it right now. Uh, we're in between programs. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> we thought we'd do something for Texas, yeah, you know. Yeah. So this machine, it moves in all five axes. Here's a, a virtual, the virtual twin of this machine. So the great thing about this machine, especially the DN five axis machine, is is it's rigid, right? Rigidity is always key when you're machining, and price, right? As far as this machine goes. For the price, you can't get this kind of rigidity and this kind of quality for sure. And you know, we—I was lucky enough to go up to um, Ellison Machinery up in Minnesota, mm -hmm. and uh, they hosted us to, to to test out our parts, and it was incredible. I mean, the the, the power of this machine, uh, the acceptance from Ellison to bring us in and welcome us and machine this—it was just absolutely incredible. And here is the actual. Let me hold it in my hand. Here's the bull okay. when it's all done. Would you like to nice. hold it? You can if you'd like. It's a little <laughs> heavy. Uh, yeah. So it started this, out as this a. This is heavy. It wow. is. It started out as a 60-pound block, and I don't know what it weighs now, but maybe yeah. six pounds, sure. I don't, ten pounds. I don't know. I'm, I'm really bad at that, but um, it has been such an exciting thing. And you know, depending on where we are next year, I don't know. Maybe we'll make something else. Maybe an eagle or something. I don't know. <laughs> I still have. For, Super cool. You know, for those of you who watched 3D Experience World 2023, I still have the. Cowboy boots. Oh they're, yeah, they're still, they're still, yeah, they're still, yeah, yeah. You've seen like I talked to you on Zoom. Mm -hmm. They're like on my little shelves right there. That's great. Yeah, yeah, that's great. I wanted to ask you to go in the other way, right? Because yeah, it's because it's, it's a it's an opportunity for for people to come out here and ask questions of the experts. Mm -hmm. But what if, of the conversations you've had so far? And yeah. we're still very early in the event. What are what are you most excited about in terms of talking to customers or talking to people that are interested in technology? Like. Any sort of, um, you know, just comments on that? So that's, you know, that's a really, really great question. So I've been with SolidWorks for a really long time, and SolidWorks is amazing. I mean, it's amazing. We all know that, right? But the great thing now is we have so much more to offer people. Yeah. When people come up, it's more than just design. It's more than just manufacturing, right? It's factory flow. It's manufacturability checker that comes with all of manufacturing where you can check your parts even before they get on the machine. Like, it's so exciting because before when people came in, it was like, oh yeah, it's CAD, great, 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 and we talked, and it's fine, I love it. Yeah. But now we have so much more to talk about, right? Incident reporting, uh, factory flow, we have, um, in Del Mia Works, right? We offer real-time machine monitoring. It's so exciting to be able to offer so much more to our customers. That is so, so Yeah, cool. yeah, it's great, it's yeah. really great. It's awesome to see, man. Uh, yeah, yeah well, I'll thanks. have to, uh, yeah, at some point, if, if the bull uh, retires, from the shop where we'd love to have him stop by the live desk, maybe even for an interview. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely no problem, no problem. And you know what? This is actually a model that, that we got off of offline, so 
you know, as Sean was saying before, if anybody has any really great ideas for the show next year, we're going to find out, I think, tomorrow, right, where the show is going to be next year, I, I think. Yeah, it's, it's, usually, it's usually either, yeah, tomorrow or Wednesday. Tomorrow or Wednesday. There yeah. we go, Wednesday. There you go. It's I've been here for a week already. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, you know, so, you know, once that's announced, we'd love to, to hear from you guys and see what you guys think would be great to machine next year. And you mentioned, I mentioned at the beginning, robotics concepts, but Robotic yeah, concepts. Any, any, anything CNC machining, uh, like you said, factory flow. Yep. You've been on live a bunch. You'll be on live very soon. Absolutely. For an episode, episode will announce uh, yeah, what's yeah. the new episode. Uh, but yeah, this is this is awesome. Well, thank you. And you know, if, if there's anything that I want to say in parting, because you guys are, I know you have so much to see. Is we really do this for you, for everybody out there. This is why we do this. We don't do this for us, right? I mean, I love it. Don't get me wrong. I'm really lucky. But the reason we do this is for you. So anytime you guys want to come in, give us some, you know, give us some ideas. We're open for it. So thank awesome. you. Awesome. Cool. Awesome. Thanks so much, man. Thank you. Thanks, Sean. Thanks, Jesse. Uh, I really appreciate this it. This goes missing. That's you know right. Where to look. <laughs> I'll trade you. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, man. All right, so uh, where, where to next? Uh, got, a, got a lot of ground we could cover, Jesse. Where, yes. where are we headed? I, I'm looking this direction, which has some uh, interesting very, objects. Very interesting. I feel like I've seen this somewhere. We yeah. actually saw this at the Hive. We saw the saw the virtual you model. You did see the virtual right? model at the Hive. What's up, yeah. guys? Did you sell it yet? Ben, hey. what's going on? Good to see you. Hi, gentlemen. How's it going? Ben, and, hey, first I'm time meeting in person. You. I've talked to you virtually. Yep. You haven't seen him yet? No. <laughs> I told you. Like, I, really I know you guys have been around. I thought so, he was just saying that. So let's just start off. When, when, did, when did this come in? Uh, when did you guys get the, the power loader in? What was that whole experience like? Like, What was it like getting it into this space? So we shipped it in, uh, and we drove it in on Saturday evening. Um, and it was pretty, went pretty seamless. We got a truck that pulled up in the back, and we drove it off the back of the truck, drove it right into here, and you know, got it set up into a nice position for people to be able to climb in and take some photos. And uh, yeah, got all the lights going. So yeah. Pretty excited. You uh, you guys had the most popular episode. I don't know if I, I haven't told you this. I haven't talked to you. No. Uh, you had the most popular episode of SolidWorks Live Design in okay. the year 2023. So congratulations. Well, thank you. Uh, That's to, awesome. To Bogdan here is, is in order. But so a lot of people know you from that. But a lot of people probably know you from your channel. From, yep. From Axmith's channel. Yep. So, but those of, we have a, a huge audience here. Uh, a lot of, and of course, it's like there's almost no you know TV show or channel that like every single person watches. So could you explain just for our viewers who may not be acquainted with you guys, uh, what you do and what you're all about? Sure, well, did you want to take that question? Yeah, so uh, Hacksmith Industries, we're a YouTube channel based out of Ontario, Canada. We have 14 and a half million subscribers and we take fictional ideas from comic books, movies, and video games and make real working prototypes to inspire the next generation of makers and engineers. Wow, that was tight. That was <laughs> great. <laughs> that was Can just you off tell the top of No, it was awesome. So yeah. the, the, the the power loader, perfect example of this, yeah. right? Uh, I was actually, people who are not maybe, you know, so familiar with your channel, they've at least seen this model, because I was in the hive and I was, I was showcasing it, I was rotating it around. I actually started going through the feature tree because we had some <laughs> extra time. I uh, hope you don't mind. Uh, <laughs> That's like airing dirty laundry. I think you start going through somebody's feature yeah, tree. Yeah, I was like, oh, they like folders, flexible subassemblies. I see that, very nice. Um, but yeah, uh, tell us a little about the, about the project, right? There's, uh, you know, there's a video of this online and everything, but yeah, just tell us about the project. Yeah, so the entire project is based on the uh, alien's power loader from the movie, uh, the one that Sigourney Weaver used to kill the alien queen. And basically, uh, the ground is, or the, the base here is just a Caterpillar um, skid steer. So the tracks and the engine bay, those are from Caterpillar, and we worked with them uh, to get those. And then everything from the ground up, from this base upwards, was all designed and fabricated by me with the addition of a couple of team guys on our uh, team to help out and then all the software electronics was done by Ben to do all the hydraulic controls and all the motion the joysticks the wireless remote control um, Whole thing weighs about 11,000 pounds and has 3,200 pounds of payload per arm. So 6,400 pounds of total payload um, Really powerful machine five degrees of freedom per arm So it can basically do any motion the human arm can do except the chicken wing dance um, <laughs> oh. Each gripper has two tons of force okay. on the crushing and uh, the whole thing can actually lean forward as well, about 27 degrees. Uh, what happens if I go in it? Will that <laughs> Feel happen free, go for it. <laughs> what is it? Yeah, so I, I heard people were, were going into this. Yep. Uh, here, can I give you my iPad? You certainly can. I'm, I'm afraid to uh, have my iPad in here. You see what's going to happen here is we're going to lose Sean for the rest of the day okay. once he gets in there. That's it. I'm Whoa. Yeah, just, just don't press the very specific <laughs> buttons above in the very specific order. Shh. <laughs> 
Oh man. <laughs> this is, uh, so this is controllable? Yep. Yeah, so those joysticks will run the entire system. I don't want to touch any of these buttons. <laughs> I, don't say, I, I trust you, but I'm not sure how much I trust you. <laughs> they, unless you hit the buttons above your head, it won't fire up. But with the joystick, wow. okay. <laughs> <laughs> with the joystick, you have access to all five degrees of freedom on the arms, plus the grippers. These are fun. Yeah, they're These little they're nice noises. Joysticks. I love it. Uh, you can drive wow. it around. You can, yeah. No, it's and we have a separate safe remote control system that was uh, designed by Fort Robotics oh, to wow. allow us to drive it safely remotely and then e-stop it in case something goes wrong. Because if something goes wrong with this, it could go sideways very quickly. <laughs> yeah. You said it was 11,000 pounds? Yep. Yeah, it's a lot of, uh, lot of going wrong. Um, Jesse, do you want to jump in? Uh, no. No? <laughs> no. You sure? Wow. Uh, it's scary. So, I, yeah, I noticed there's a, there's a, there's a little laptop in there. Um, what is this? Uh, is this a camera? Or what is, what is yeah. this? Did, is you, this did you get a look at the laptop screen in there? I did. I it's saw. A, it's a full. Okay, so yeah. that's, that's, the, that's the feed right there. Yeah, it's a 360 camera system. So we have a camera up front, one on each side, and then one on the back. And it stitches it together to get you a full 360 picture so that you can work around other people and other equipment safely. That's so cool. So I'm guessing that's why it's parked here right now. And we're not moving it because there yeah. are people here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's safe. It's reliable. But it's a big piece of industrial equipment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's uh, so. How do you guys come up with these ideas? I, I've always, always wanted to ask you this. I, I, uh, yeah, like, like, I mean, because in the in the movie, it, it isn't. They don't really have like the fully functional version, right? In the original movie, yeah. It's, so it's just like, the arms being kind of in like, the movie, it's a big foam and fiberglass yeah. prop, as well as they they use some scale models as well for the filming, and um, the whole thing is like puppeteered by a crane and a person <laughs> above it. Um, whereas this whole thing actually functions just like the real thing. But I mean, the inspiration is the easy part. We were huge fans of science fiction. We go out every month with the whole team and we watch movies and we watch upcoming shows and we you know, debrief and say, hey, that was really cool. Can we make that? And then you know, the engineers pitch in, they're like, oh, we can try that, we can try this. And then you know, we go through a little bit of a production cycle of trying different things. And if something works out and we're like, hey, <laughs> that's what the movie did. Let's make this into a full scale prototype and show this off on our channel. It's pretty wild. Like, think about any any job that any of us have ever had, and you have that moment where you're like, I think I have a good idea, but I'm a little bit scared to say it because I'm afraid that it'll get shot down or that we'll actually do it because it <laughs> seems like it's going to be really hard. I cannot imagine that feeling for you guys, right? Like, the idea of, like, just having the idea to potentially do this and then thinking, like, what is my life going to be like for the next, like, three... You, you gave, like, a knowing look to him. Like, yeah. <laughs> what is my life going to be like for the next three to six to 12, whatever months? I was going to uh, say the imagine. same thing. Like, the inspiration you said is the easy part, but you also <laughs> seem to pick the hardest things you can find. Like, this seems impossible. Let's do that. And, I mean, that that's part of it, right, is we want to inspire people to try the impossible yeah. and to think outside of the box, right, and really use the tools at their disposal, talk to and network to people at, such a, at events like this, right, and find people who are, like, we can make this happen, yeah. even when in reality, you know, you look at something and you're like, that's difficult. Yeah. Doesn't mean you can't do it with the right resources and, uh, you know, the right mindset. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. Well, I, uh, I'm going to let you guys go. I, I know at this point it's probably the world's heaviest, that would be a great world record to track, the world's heaviest uh, selfie station. <laughs> <laughs> you guys should look that up seriously. I'm, I'm sure you might have the record. Uh, but yeah, thank you guys uh, so much. We're going to keep, keep moving around the playground, but I'll be back. Thank I'll you. be back, definitely. Cool. Sounds All right, good. Thanks, guys. Yep. Great to see you guys. All right, let's see. What's, uh, what's, what's the next stop? Let's see, where should we go? Where should we go next, Jesse? Walk and talk. Walk and talk, let's see. There's too much stuff in here is the problem. There's a, there seems to be a lot, of, a lot of stuff going on over here. Straight to the middle, you think? Straight, straight to the middle. Okay. So here we have... Here we have the, the DS booth. There's actually uh, quite a bit going on, at least that I that I learned uh, through uh, talking to some of our some of our colleagues here. Um, so the DS booth, it, it's fairly interesting. You know, you can see not just SolidWorks, but just like Chris mentioned, uh, you know, different different types of technology and simulation, uh, data management, manufacturing. So you, you can kind of go all around um, and, and see some of that. So yeah, we can even I guess we can kind of do a, a bit of a bit of walking and talking here. Um, We've got a nice to... supple floors here, which is a, yeah. quite a treat. We're yeah, maybe we can actually... The, we can the actually... sights, the sounds, and the feel. <laughs> this feels very nice versus the uh, concrete. It does. It's let's nice let's actually knees. talk to an expert. Steven, do you have a second? Yeah, sure. Hello, how are you? I'm glad to be here. Hey, thank you. This is uh, Steven Endersby. Uh, yeah, so Steven, uh, we were just talking about the, the DS booth. 
And we were talking earlier about how these people, these kind people are watching us on the Solaris YouTube. Uh -huh. And I remember I was, I was asking you, it's like, well, if so many things are on YouTube today, what is really the benefit of coming to a space like this? I think it's the spontaneous questions. I mean, you can sit in general session like I did, and you hear these people talking, you think, oh, and what about, what about, what about? And you know that, come on here, and there's gonna be someone who can actually answer your questions. And I think that's the benefit of being in person. Yeah. yeah. If you could just put the mic just yeah, yeah. a little bit higher. Yeah. Um, but yeah, could we take a tour around just to kind of see what, what's, what's going on here? Sure. I mean, the way I look at it is that we have different areas of expertise. Okay, so we have everything to do with data coming in in this, in this big, governance. Big topic, Big right? topic. You know, <clears throat> safety of data, exploring your data, reusing your data. That's all covered in this governance area. And but, we have we have we have we have product experts, industry process consultants, members of product management at pretty much every station, right? Yes, I mean basically like all around the clock. Around the clock, you have your experts, and the good thing is, even if your expert in your very nuanced question isn't here, he's going to be here tomorrow That's or the day point. after. So you you'll always find someone who can answer your questions over these three days. So no question will go unanswered at all. Very, very cool. So, all right, so we have our so we have our governance, here. and you know that's what we call a domain. Yep. But when you get a group of roles together, we have what we call an industry solution. So we have things to do okay. with consumer so yeah, right industries. Over here. So these groups, they're actually not looking at a particular problem, but they're looking at a group of problems that maybe, if I'm in industrial design or if in consumer design or white goods, what do I need? What broad set of solutions do I need? And I think. These are quite good. It's like a one-stop shop. Yeah. What do I, I? I want to be successful in washing machines. What do I need? Mm -hmm. Okay. This is what you need, and, and away you go. And and it it stops you thinking about the tool and helps you just concentrate on the problem that you want to solve. That makes total sense. You know, we, we were looking today at it, it, some of these tools we already looked at today yeah, uh, online. Creator. You know, we, like X generative yes. design is a good example. Yeah. Uh, we we had the uh, we had a prop that was made by by Noah Zeef and Gian Calisi. It was a long uh, longhorn skull, mm -hmm. and it had a lot of these sort of interesting like perforated shapes on them. Uh, again, what we'd call algorithmic design, and yes, some of it was yes. done with sub D. But you know, the more we expose you guys right to, to these different sorts of tools, it quickly becomes almost a sort of uh, thing you need to solve in itself, right? It's like, which tools do I use for the types of things that I do? Mm -hmm. right, with SolidWorks, is great. It's a very encompassing tool, but we have other tools as well that help you do things, whether it's design or, like we talked about, crisp with manufacturing. So, yeah, it definitely becomes apparent. Which tools do I need for what yeah, I do? And I think it allows you to think in different ways. You know, you, you, know, you, you grow up and you're doing a prismatic world and something gives yeah. you something like, you know, sculptor, X shape. Yep. And then you suddenly think, actually, no, I don't have to go down this rigid route yeah. of where I've been. I can now explore different areas. And I think yep. that's, that's I, the good. I said that exact same thing at the desk this morning. We were talking about the skull. You switch over into X shape. They have their, you know, their whole course layout that, that I recommend because it's, it's a totally different way of thinking about modeling. But you're right, when you snap into a different way of thinking about modeling, then suddenly you come up with things that you wouldn't yeah. have naturally come up with before. You're, you're just thinking a different way. You yep. look at the problem in a different direction, and suddenly different solutions and different yep. technologies. Present themselves, so, yep. And Absolutely that's really agree. what we're trying to do. We're, it's all about empowerment. This whole booth is about you empowerment, mm -hmm. and I think that's the, the goal of what we're, we're trying to drive in this. In Love this that. I uh, noticed our friend for Krishna is here. Krishna, how's it going? Good. Good. Yeah. <laughs> So you, you two mean into something really interesting, and there is this sort of connective fabric here uh, at the booth today, which is that uh, a lot of what we see in terms of, of the demonstrations is wrapped around a, a single story, right? What, what is that story? What's going on there? So, first of all, excited to be on SolidWorks Live. <laughs> yeah. um, excited to have you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, this started uh, about a couple of years ago, a startup in India called Cargos, and the name actually gives it all. <laughs> yeah, they're they're building name. a cargo electric scooter platform that can carry 225 liters and 100 kilograms, which is around 200 pounds for the American audience. <laughs> My conversion is still pretty bad. <laughs> um, with a 150 kilometer range, which is roughly 100 miles. And uh, I'm very excited because this is not just the story of cargos, but it's BS and cargos working together. 
they innovated this entire vehicle platform using the unified modeling and simulation approach on the 3D experience uh, platform using the 3D experience box. It's a, it's, a, it's a great thing to bring up, right? Because at these conferences, and Steven has mentioned it to me before, you know, with, with SolidWorks Live, I, I try to keep it you know, as real as possible, but still, any time that you have a single person presenting to you, they're catering whatever their message is, exactly the way that they want it, right? But when you get to talk to actual fellow users about how they're using these tools, that's where you get the real, 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 real truth, right? Because they're using it every day. I can't tell you what it's like to use it every single day mm -hmm. to make physical products in exactly the way that they can. I think we have another special guest here, right? Yeah, so Alex. this is uh, Alok Das, who's the co-founder of Cargos. Awesome. It must be nice to hear such nice things about your, your company and your product. Absolutely. So <laughs> we are very thrilled to be part of the 3D Experience World 2024. I still remember five years ago when we first time we, the first sketch was made on SolidWorks. Wow. To bringing the product all the way to Dallas on the 3D Experience World 2024. I'm mean, like we had never, never imagined that the this journey is uh, the, the DS is actually going to play the DSOS system is going to play a, an important role in the entire product lifecycle journey of the product. So we are, we are all very excited, and uh, the Coago's journey, as we have been talking about it, is like, you know, it's born to solve a lot of problems from the logistics standpoint. So let's walk to the scooter. What's yeah. it like to see someone admiring your product? <laughs> <laughs> and, they, and they don't know. They're like, oh, wow, this is, this is really cool, really neat. You don't get to see that when they're browsing online, right? <laughs> yeah, so let's take a look. Tell us, tell us all about the, your product. So the Quagos uh, was essentially born to solve a, a missing segment in the market. Uh, if you look at the two wheelers which exist, which uh -huh. are for the different yeah, applications, yeah. like let's say it is for the leisure activities and things like that, yes. but there are commuter scooters which are being used for some form of commercial application. And on the other side we have these trucks, but there is nothing in between which is specifically meant to do the job of you know the deliveries yeah, uh, or the yeah, logistics yeah. application, it's completely the segment is completely missing, <laughs> and it's not just about uh, the Indian context. It's also about a lot of countries across the world. Let's say Thailand. We talk about Indonesia. You go to Jakarta, you will see people carrying things on their back. The objective is to carry more. Now the logistics should not be a pain, right? At the end of the day. So the idea is that. If you create a vehicle which solves problem, that was the basic thing that we tried to, uh, you know, solve. And here we have the world's first cargo scooter platform. So we did not did not build it as a specific product. We built it as a platform so that you can modify, you can make it modular, wow. and you can create shelves. You can use <laughs> it for multiple applications. So logistics, when we talk about it, it's not necessarily the delivery or e-commerce stuff. E-commerce is one major user, but then talk about the technicians, right? So the, the, the plumbers or technicians, they all of them require a vehicle which is quick. Uh, I was actually taking an innovation session with uh, Schindler Elevators, and they said, wow, we need this vehicle because a lot of our technicians, they do not have the right vehicle to arrive to the destination in the urban dense areas. Sure. They, they, they are carrying the large, uh, the harness and stuff, the, the PCBs, uh, the tools and all. And getting through that in a car, if a, an elevator is struck, getting to the emergency, it's, it's a difficult thing. So talking about the emergency, um, paramedics is one large application mm -hmm. which we see. It can save lives for people. Yeah. Just not delivering the goods, but also delivering lives in terms of you know the providing the advance or a basic life support. Wow, that's really cool. And if I may add, yeah, go ahead. If I may add, just put what, just a little, just a little closer. Okay. There you go. <laughs> if I may add, what really uh, drew us towards engaging with Cargos at their very early stages of 3D experience adoption is that um, they wanted to do everything on the platform and they believe in simulation first attitude where simulation is a part of the design it's mm. not a siloed process it's not just for phds in dark rooms <laughs> right? so they wanted to include simulation up front in the design process in every single subsystem and that's what the simulation booth has been set up for with their story on what are the changes made uh, i mean one thing i do want to talk about real quick is if you see the shape right here yeah Originally, this wasn't the shape of the console. It was pretty straight. Mm -hmm. We ran uh, aerodynamic simulations with sure. them. 
using the fluid dynamics engineer role on the platform and found that was one of the areas which was increasing the drag. And that has an impact on Makes the rider who gets fatigued if it yeah. has higher drag, right? Yep. So we are solving a rider's problem using simulation. And they made these design changes without any internal testing. And they can already see the results. That's so cool. How cool is that? That is super cool. That's it's always one thing. To, sorry. I was just going to say, that's always been one of the best parts, I think, about SolidWorks simulation is it's made for the users, the designers, so you can get that move so much earlier in the process. And it's so cool to see the expansion of all those capabilities, but still, you know, yeah, still aims yeah. towards users that can use it to solve the problems as fast, they, you know, as, fast as possible. In fact, uh, as we call it, as we have been discussing, democratization of the, the simulation. And um, I come from my prior engineering background uh, and, and my experience, work experience. So one thing that has been part of a core thing is analysis first approach, as mm -hmm. Sri Krishna mentioned. So when we are building this, this does not have benchmarks. Now when you don't have a benchmark, every iteration becomes a benchmark for yourself. Mm -hmm. Now you cannot continue to iterate, build, break or test, build, test, break, build, test, break. You cannot do that. You have to do that digitally. And that's yeah. what we are advocating also always that our, our you know, the team, that if you want to do the build, test, break, do that digitally instead mm -hmm. of doing that in the real world. And that saves time, that saves cost, that saves the precious resources and things like that. So we are yeah. a startup. So we are always, we have to be frugal, right? So uh, during this process, it has been a learning journey because we practically, you know, uh, None of the vehicles, touch wood, so none of the vehicles till date have failed on road. No structural failures. There can be some technical failures in terms of the electrical and stuff, things sure. like that. Obviously, there are, that's a product improvement. But overall, the vehicle has not failed us at all with that's more amazing. than 30,000 miles of testing done already. And there are real world users already using this vehicle as a test vehicle for the logistics application with a large organization. Uh, in India. So the simulation has indeed worked because we have not seen failures on that side. That's that's awesome. That's well, amazing. We do, we, do have, we do have to wrap up here, but I just wanted to say congratulations. Thank you so much. You're, you're launching this product. It looks beautiful. It yeah. sounds super functional and multi-dynamic. Like, there's so many different use cases. Um, I can't wait to hear just later on catching up with you the Absolutely. types of connections you've made and just how you're going to grow your business over the next you know, number you so of much. years. So thank you so much. Happy to be here. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Yeah, uh, and Sean, if I may just add yeah. one last comment. This is the very first fully assembled vehicle ever built by, by Cargos. I mean, they've been testing the frame, the individual subsystems. It comes to fruition in this form for the very first term, and they purpose built this for DS. That's so you can cool. see the Super Deso cool. Systems logo, and they purpose built it for this event. So I just want to so thank them for this. This is basically a pre-production. Uh, so this is a pre-production vehicle, of, uh, the version of the vehicle. Very wow. cool. That's amazing. That's awesome. It's beautiful. Thank Once you. again, congratulations. Thank you so awesome. much. Thank, thank you. So much. All right. Thanks, Jason. Thank thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. All right. Let's see where. Uh, so where are we headed to next? We're going to the. We go to the Maker Zone. We're at a fork in the road. I say we go yeah, left. Let's see. That is super cool. There's, there's, one of, there's one of the way too much. There's way too much to do. Here. There is too much to do. So I was uh, one of my laps. They were pulling that scooter in. It's so cool to see. Like you see, you know, at working for the company, you see pictures and things like that. Yeah. And then you see it go riding by. It's like, whoa, there it is. That's so cool. <laughs> I know. It, that is that is a, a I great love moment. that. Man. So we're here with uh, with Chin Lu. Hi. Hi. How are you? Good. How are you? This is this Welcome. is your this is your second time on, on the yes, live show today. Is I that know. Funny? I know. I can't get enough of this. Next I actually, year, I actually had slots. not. I have I mentioned at the top of this, like I have I had not really substantially been in the playground before yeah. just now because I wanted to sort of maintain that excitement. organic excitement. <laughs> um, so with that said, I actually I'm, I'm gonna guide you guys. Oh here. man, there's there's so much going on. Yeah, yeah. yeah we'll, so we'll actually, get there. We can go backwards if you like. Okay, yeah. So what you're seeing here is um, you can actually build DIY your own droids in this area. So we have Jess and Matt Long, who are one of our both of our makers, who are helping people learn how to assemble these awesome droids. So we have custom wheels, custom bodies. Um, you can solder, you can do all the electronics, set them up, and drive it yourself. And um, <laughs> you know, basically, each station is set up, and you can actually cast your own wheels if you wanted to. So Super some of our cool. champions from SolidWorks actually designed uh, the models, and we were able to 3D print it and cast it. 
Whoa. And so attendees can just come and start yeah. building right here. We've already had a awesome. few attendees come in, got, gone through the whole process. Even though they have to go through their sessions, they're like, no, we have to make this. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, you can always come back, build some more if you can't finish this time. Super and they're cool, cool obstacles that they built. That's so really cool. I love this. I'm going to give you guys another. Uh, well, so going from this DIY drape, you can go into the combat bots cage. So this is the Whoa. next level of competition. So if you guys come this oh, way. Oh my goodness. You can actually watch some some of our attendees trying to battle away inside <laughs> the combat so cool. cage. Look at this. And so these are combat ready robots sponsored by the um, Brandeis Maker Lab. And in here, they're actually trying to give everyone a taste of how it feels to com compete and yeah. play with these kinds of droids. You can. All of you guys can come actually try it out. I'm, I'm going to be back. <laughs> yeah. Blue with the spin move. That's so cool. That's oh, such a cool arena, too. Yeah. There's a lot more stuff oh, my going goodness. On. Yeah, you just sort of want to stay everywhere where you are, right? I know. Like, it's like, I, I want to stay there, see who wins it's, the competition. This is like the abyss. You come it is. here, you don't want to <laughs> leave. So, and here's Ian. He's going to be on main stage. Hey, Ian. How's it going? Uh, but we were just talking about the combat yeah. robots. So, we got the cage here. So, we this project was putting the cage together. Uh, this was sponsored by SolidWorks. We built this over the last two days, 900 screws. And uh, we can run up to three pound battle bots. And we're inviting anyone that has a one to three pound to come compete tomorrow. We'll do a big showcase. Wow. We have an exhibition match, I think, from local teams who are going to come and compete. So we got the pits here so everybody can get hands on. This is the one that anyone can just walk up and drive. It's a kit. And then we got some of our custom designs from Brandeis Maker Lab. Uh, fabricated in our library where there's over a million books and I think other than how to build the robots we're also sharing how to institutionally get environmental health and safety approval to run a cage like this on campus. Awesome, wow. This is uh, edutainment at its yes, finest. Exactly. <laughs> well cool, so so you're going to be on main stage? Yeah, I think you're going to be speaking on with Wednesday. Wednesday. Wednesday, so we'll, we'll be live, we'll be, we'll be live and we'll see you there. Excellent. Awesome. Thanks for coming through. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you so much. That's awesome. So cool. There's a lot of our partners who are helping out these maker teams, also helping to build. So Re3D's here with their large yep. formats. I'm going to actually bring you guys to this side because there's a few more. There's so cool. much going on here. Yeah, I so know. you have to come back and visit. <laughs> we got Magic Wheelchair as always. They're teaching people how to um, design adaptive buttons. And um, I think it's buttons right now, but you there, can definitely uh, check it out. Speech, is that is that how yes. they work this time? Yep. Very cool. Do you guys want to come this yeah, way? Yeah, sure. So some of these things are the adaptive buttons. OK, yeah. So we got some people very interested in it. Do you guys want to hear more about this? Yes. Do you guys want to talk? Hi. We are talking about some of the things Magic Ultra are doing. And I know you guys are talking about adaptive button design. Would you like to say something fast about what you're showing here? Sure. These buttons are something that Magic Wheelchair has come up with the design because in the industry, an accessible button like this could cost $100 or more. It's wow. gouging, really. Yeah. And they've come up with these fancy solutions that are just simple 3D printed parts that click together where you can make something like this for what, $2? Yeah. Magicwheelchair.org. Magicwheelchair.org. Check it out. They're building costumes for kids in wheelchairs uh, for free. It's wonderful. Beautiful stuff. All designed in SolidWorks and yep. 3D printed. Awesome. Um, one more cool thing, yeah? You guys yes. have one more time? Yeah. Let's, Let's go this way. So I'm part yep. of the Our Next Make channel, and we're showcasing this one of a kind puzzle box. Oh, sorry. <laughs> You'll see we turn grown professional engineers into like a face in the phone. Geeks. Yeah. But it's not. <laughs> what's happening is that. What is, go what is going yeah, on? Yeah, actually, here? I'm going to have Sal <laughs> talk about the boxes he designed while we. Yeah. Hello everyone. So um, for the coppers, we made these really cool wooden boxes that are puzzle boxes. But what's cool is you have a QR code where you can scan it to bring up a digital model. And on that digital model, there are clues for how to figure out the combination. And each one goes from easy, medium, up to hard. <laughs> and it uses all kinds of cool uh, aspects of inside of 3D play to figure out that's what's going on. Yeah, and let's, so let's see the He's got the program. QR code. This so is yeah, so creative. Yeah, so they're ba <laughs> so basically cool. the puzzles are extremely custom to each of the, even though the boxes are all the same, but the combination can be changed instantly. But what's happening is that the digital puzzle changes every time they progress. It gets harder and harder. And <laughs> yeah, one of the things is we're making people come back because you earn these little fees uh. as you finish each one. That's what's inside the box. But, wow, yeah. I am blown away. You guys are crazy. so creative. Oh my goodness.
Uh, this is so creative. Sure. This is this is, and, and I, I have to say, like I I am a fan of your channel, and he, you know even seeing like the the crate that you guys you guys built, um, and yeah. seeing that here, I was like, wow, I saw that on YouTube. Yeah, like, that's so cool. The, in fact, the road case in the back, all of that stuff we built, and we're showcasing everything's done with SolidWorks, and people can come and play. Hey, with it. Oh, we have one. Woo! Someone saw <laughs> right on cue. I think we should bring these to the desk. We'll just do a whole segment of us struggling <laughs> to solve them. <laughs> this is so awesome. At one point, there were like 10 people standing here with their phones just trying to solve it because they don't want to block each other. This yeah. is such a cool idea. It, yeah. yeah, it's one of those things. It's kind of like, you know, we, oh, I'm sure many of you hopefully have been the world. If not, you know, 3D Experience World 2025, so, still, uh, you know, you still, still, uh, you know, look to attend that, but it's it's a spectacle, right? It's like it's like you see people, they're by this box, they're on their phones. It's 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 awesome. Yeah, it's so exactly. Cool. And they get to play with our platform. Basically, all these puzzles are on the platform. Yeah. It's being shared that way, so that's how they're able to. I love that. Interact. We have one more. Do we have time for one more thing? We're gonna yeah, head over to the so. MIT um, right here. We're gonna cut right through. We could we could probably spend like so we, an hour here. Right. Here we have the MIT um, Center for Bits and Atoms and Fab Foundation folks. They're actually posing with Suchit right now. But I can show you a little bit of what they're doing here. This machine has been designed so that it's able to basically self-replicate. It's demonstrating its ability to take a photo and plotting your photo instantly using um, our software on on the oh 3D Experience platform. Goodness. Actually, I have someone who's an expert <laughs> who can talk more about this. I'm going to hand this over to Claire. Hello, so we are from MIT Center for Bits and Atoms and from the Fab Foundation, the outreach education nonprofit branch of MIT Center for Bits and Atoms. So what you're seeing here is a selfie machine. You can go ahead and take your photograph at our camera here. It will vectorize your image and then it will plot your portrait for you. This was adapted from an exhibit at the MIT Museum. And so it uses a kit of parts made of a kit of parts that was optimized by the researchers at MIT and it's to facilitate machine building. The idea is that you take one of these portraits home with you as a souvenir and you leave one behind as part of a larger sort of community build in a museum setting like that. And it's the sister project to Fab in a Box, which is on the other side of the booth, um, which uses a more off-the-shelf kit of machines. And so this is plotting Suchit right now. You can see it's picked up a lot of the detail in his glasses. This is uh, the diversity of technology and the way this is all configured is remarkable. I can't imagine how someone wouldn't be interested in STEM. Like even if they had never seen anything to do with design or engineering or manufacturing being even just in this area. It's yeah. it's absurd. There's so much talent, so much creativity. I'm yeah, I'm floored. Yeah, I, I think it's a if you want to get inspired, if you're ever in this rut like yeah, what should rut, I do? Just come, just come here. over here. You get this like saturation in your face. That but is yeah. like the perfect pitch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. That's, that's so awesome. Well, and, it, yeah, it's, it, know, it's, wanna... it's interesting, yeah, like we haven't even seen like everything. Exactly. This Just is this maybe half, maybe not even half, a quarter of the stuff. So definitely yeah. hang around. Yeah. Get some more information. We'll and be back. Yeah, there's a really cool droids that are being, not not just the ones that you saw people DIYing, but there's uh -huh. a couple of robots. It's like there's an R2-D2, there's Gilda robot, and there's even uh, a Wally -E that you can see the mechatronics wow. inside. So cool. Awesome. Absolutely. So check it out. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Chin Lu. Thank Thanks, Chin Lu. Right. Great thank to you. see you. Thanks for visiting. All right. We'll see be you back. All right. Okay. What's our, our next stop? I think we have, Jesse, I think we have startups next. Startups. Yep. Our little list. It's, you know, you'll notice, guys, we're, we're walking by some of these booths. We're not able to show you everything, um, but it does give you an idea. There's just so much, so much to do, so much to see. And again, we're going to have to come back. You and I are going to have to come back, Jesse. Yeah, I, well, like I said, I already took about 10 laps through here, but it wasn't all set up yet. So I've seen a bunch. But there's yeah. already a ton of stuff in here that I didn't see just from my uh, awesome. Just from hey my guys. loops. How's it going? It's good, man. So uh, we have the uh, microphone here. Oh, yeah. So you guys are in the startups booth. Yeah. So this is, this is what we do at conferences, right? We, we meet, meet people, we get to know them. Uh, so, so what are you guys up to here at the conference? Uh, in conference, uh, we're displaying our product. Let's see it. Let's yeah. let's talk about it. So let's let's talk about your product. So product is called Tiguna, and Tiguna means three times in local language. Okay. So we want to give three times more opportunities to street vendors and delivery associates in India, uh, who currently managing their uh, you know thing in very rudimentary way. Yeah. 
So this something has a 250 watt motor E assist pedal. Okay. Uh, and it has a Ackerman mechanism, which gives a very comfortable ride. And we really hoping that we change their lives. You know, on that. Yeah. And designed using SolidWorks, I'm guessing. Absolutely. I mean, <laughs> we've done the entire um, simulation uh, uh, because of this was a tricky mechanism. Uh, so we had a cost constraint because our customer is really poor. So we want to make sure that we do appropriate material, appropriate technology, and find sensible pricing and design. Uh, so the simulation really helped in this, you know, especially doing entire in Indian street roads, how the roads are bad, <laughs> potholes, uh, that and entire thing is flat pack. So both simulation have helped us to really reduce the uh, development time by year, I could say that. Wow. Yeah, that's something that's incredible for us. You know. That's incredible. incredible. But yeah, this is a, a beautiful product. I want to introduce you, Jillian. Uh, yeah, if we could just hand the mic over to Jillian. Uh, Jillian, the, the, the programs, uh, the startups program, right? It's, it's yeah. We're fostering innovation all across the world. But yeah, yeah. Tell, tell us about it. We're at the, we're at the startup zone. Yeah, we're, here, we're right? here in the startup zone. Um, I'm glad that you got to hear from a startup who's benefited from using access, you know, have access to our software. So we help startups in a couple different ways. Um, we have a startup program that gives access to SolidWorks tools and resources for no cost for a year. Um, we just found that a lot of startups, you know, it's really hard for them to have this barrier to entry. So we like to just remove that and make it as easy as possible for them to access some pretty game-changing software. Um, and we also help with having a 3D experience lab program. So mm. in that program, we look for startups who are doing like totally disruptive innovation and help them have access to all of Dassault Systems tools and resources, uh, mentorship, technical expertise, and to really help them that are, especially startups that are focused on sustainability. Yeah, very cool. One of the things that I love about what you do at this event is that you also give a lot of, I'm sure you guys kind of sense it as well, you give different startups, different hardware entrepreneurs a way to network with each other. Totally. That's huge. I can't, totally. I can't imagine. I mean, for, for you guys, like how, did, how, does that, how does it feel to be at an event like this and meet others who are looking to, to build their businesses as well? Yeah, I mean, it's it's kind of a launch pad in some way for us. Uh, yeah. Where uh, not only, I mean, we have a great product. We have we had a great support from Frugal Innovation, you know, our community. But taking this to this platform, uh, able to share it with so many people and seeing what others are doing and kind of really learning from that, um, I think it's really super platform for us to showcase, you know, our own innovation and have you found any that you've gotten any sort of surprising? I always ask this at conferences, like any surprising questions or any interesting kind of feedback on the product just just for being here. Like, what kinds of things are you hearing at conferences like these about your product? Yeah, um, various uh, variety of engagements. I mean, somebody would talk about in country in in Latam and asking. Can I be a dealer? And I said, okay, I'm not even ready. We're just developing the product. That's so that's, so so that's something kind of, you know, uh, yeah. you know, helping. Yeah. And there are some amazing innovators and tech people. Everyone has some suggestion to make something better. Just looking at it, uh, it's a free learning for me, you know, <laughs> in just two days. So awesome. I mean, incredible, you know, great to be here, you know. That, yeah. Well, it's, it's been awesome to see you guys. Awesome to know we continue to support tons of tons of startups, right? Um, but yeah, just just one more time before we wrap up, we're heading to the next booth. Uh, where can we learn more uh, about your products? We're on the we're on online. Uh, what's your website? Um, I'm sorry. The website. So can we go to uh, Tiguna? Tiguna.com. Yeah. Tiguna.com. There yeah, you go. Yeah, yeah. Cool. And then for the startups program, let's talk about that. Just yeah, for the startups program, you can go to solidworks.com backslash startups. There you go, easy to remember. Easy <laughs> enough, yeah. And, and for the lab, it's 3experiencelab.com. So uh, both of those are pretty pretty easy to get to. You can find them through the Dassault website too. But yeah, we're, we're happy to be here and happy to be able to connect founders to each other and to an awesome opportunity to network like this. Awesome, I will be back. Cool. I have to I have to spend more time here. I feel so inspired here, but thank you guys so much. Thank you. Yep, thanks John. All right, so let's see here, Jesse. What's uh, what's what's next on our, our schedule? I think we have, I mean, we took, we, whoa, that robot's talking about it. Yeah, it is, <laughs> my goodness. So let's see, let, maybe, let me, let's, let's go this way. Yeah, we uh, might need to loop back around. Yeah, the, ro the, ro the robot seems uh, deep in thought. <laughs> But uh, yeah, I, I don't know that I saw like a lot of robots talking uh, last year. Yeah, it just goes to show you, you know, it, yeah. we were talking earlier about who you're going to meet and, you know, run into, talk to, have a conversation with. 
probably didn't expect a robot, but yeah, here we are. Sim guy, how many? Do you remember there being a lot of robots walking around like oh, yeah, ten, of ten, year, ten years ago, fifteen years ago, just talking to people? Yes, I do remember. Did they need badges? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, this is this is our friend, uh, Sim guy. Sim guy, uh, tell us a little about yourself, a little about the role that you do here. It's a it's a of huge course. role here at SolidWorks. It is actually. I think this is the best role ever because I work <laughs> with the young students and teachers who want to inspire their students. And today we have a very actually. Um, important uh, person here with us too because she is doing this more than more you know the more than i think maybe 10 years more than me for sure uh, valerie please join us oh she's yeah, the, yeah yeah she's the vice president of education industrial system how are you and valerie hello good to see you so we are trying to inspire students for t uh, their future for sure but valerie you do this um, you know the four years um, please inspire us how we can do better for our students and teachers and our education world? Well, I've been doing it for six years, but SolidWorks has been decades for more than 30 years. Yeah. Obviously, building a strong community of students and teachers. Today, we have more than 5 million students yep. in the world using Staggering. our solution about um, uh, the classroom and curricula. A vibrant community of teachers really dedicating to building those skills for students to get the best jobs because when you <laughs> learn SolidWorks in school you know you will get the best jobs it's all about employability and having the right skill for the industry and it's always so inspiring to have the students with uh, with all of us here demonstrating their strong skills and how passionate they are about what they do so Simga I know that you will say as long as me and probably even more <laughs> <laughs> okay I can say even more but my age is just coming up I don't want to say okay here I want to show you yeah, our let's, boots let's, there's a lot of cool stuff oh here. my god you <laughs> Your mind. Wait to see our record. Look at this extraordinary students. They designed this beautiful record I saw, with solid. I saw works. you guys carrying these in. Yes. I was like, what yes. is this about? <laughs> it's all about solid works and yeah. their beautiful design with our solutions. Uh, so thank you very much for this beautiful design. Um, and we have actually too many things. That's why I would like to walk with yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Let's 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 walk yeah. and look. Yeah. And here, here we have a plane. I think Valerie has uh, more knowledge yeah. about this than me. We actually have a local school being here with us. It's the University of Dallas, and so we have a student with us who is doing a student competition to design an airplane. So how do you use SolidWorks in order to do that? Uh, we use SolidWorks to create all of our structural models. We create the aerodynamic surfaces, the structural surfaces, and um, we do analysis in SOLIDWORKS to do that. And we also use it to manufacture, so we create faces and then we export them for uh, manufacturing. Do you want to design an airplane as a job? Do you want to be a, a, an engineer in aerospace? Yeah, that would be uh, really fun. <laughs> and you've taken the best solution to reach that target, so I hope the, the best for your future. You. So cool. Excellent. Thank you for being with us here. It's like you said, Simgay. It's you know, yeah. people want to get like the good jobs, and good jobs it means often the stuff that inspires me. You know, exactly. making this making is... a living, doing the things that inspire you. Exactly, and it's actually it's not about working. I don't know if you had a chance to uh, listen Manish's presentation today mm -hmm. online. Yeah. He was saying they are paying me, and I just enjoy what I'm doing here. <laughs> I think it's same for us too because. It's supposed to be the same for everyone, especially for students. I think that's why we are here, to show you which tools can help you for your future and that it makes you happy and that don't feel like you are working. So I want to show awesome. you this beautiful design as well. Yeah, let's see. Hello, hi guys. So this is, as you see, this is another beautiful design from another student team. And they are here. Hello, come here, come hey here, guys. Thomas. My son yeah. name is Thomas as well. So <laughs> <laughs> Thomas, great to have you here with yeah. your friends. So, uh, I, I assume you really had fun when you are designing this car with SolidWorks. Say yes, yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now it's been a lot of fun working on this car. I haven't done as much as SolidWorks as uh, some of the other guys have done, but they've done a lot of work on the frame specifically in SolidWorks, and they're working on our next car design in SolidWorks right now. So. Amazing. Thank you very much. Thank you. We have two main things to show you. Come here. <laughs> Valerie, do you want to present this one? Please go ahead. <laughs> Well, obviously, that's the, the famous uh, student competition wow. about formula. Cool. Uh, you know, they are, they are everywhere in uh, mechanical engineering, and that's apparently SolidWorks has been supporting all students worldwide with their students' competition on formula. So let's find out if we have a student with us who was part of the team. You are. Please come here. <laughs> 
Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so this is our Formula SAE car. Um, if you guys haven't heard of Formula SAE, yes. it's basically like F1, but it's a student engineering competition yeah. that happens internationally. For us, we compete in North America once a year. Um, so our car here, this is our 2023 vehicle that we took to competition last year. Um, we're currently designing and manufacturing our 2024 car, which we'll, we will be racing in three months. Um, this is ran by our CBR 600 uh, F4i engine. It is a motorcycle engine. Um, this car weighs about 500 pounds, so you can imagine the power to weight ratio. Um, some cool stuff around the car. Let's see. Uh, How about the curves have you been using SolidWorks in order to design? We have been, every, everything here is designed and modeled in SolidWorks. We do all of our FEA, we do some of our CFD in SolidWorks. Um, I think some really cool parts that you guys can see. Amazing. Let's show this later on because I need, you need to show the rest of the books. Okay. Yeah, to our watchers. Yeah, so. I will I, be I, here. I, oh I will also I come back. I, I can talk I will, all day. I will be back. <laughs> yes. Great. Thank Super. You. Thank you. So let's go to this is our so champions. Cool. You know what they have done? They did a create. They create a big um, community worldwide uh, oh, competition. These guys. And then these are two talented CSWE certified champions. And what they did, they created, you know, I think they work with 65 different people worldwide. And then they bring their project together to make this happen. And they applied everything to the VR glasses that just to show the, the experience. Ridwan from Turkey and Hanan from Tunisia. Hello. Hello. So guys, uh, I know you are using 3D experience uh, solutions and SolidWorks. Uh, we don't have too many time, but I would like to hear, are you happy with these solutions and how they help you in your design? Uh, SolidWorks and 3D experience uh, modeling is very easy and uh, everyone can uh, uh, friendly use this uh, platform and uh, exporting uh, SolidWorks and uh, 3D experience uh, files uh, uh, in every uh, software is very easy and uh, uh, a lot of uh, adventures uh, were <laughs> You know, it is great to hear from the woman engineer. It's amazing, and you are CSWA owner. Awesome. Congratulations, you did a great job. Let's go to. By the, the way, these guys have great. You guys you? have great content. Yeah. I have not met you in person, oh. which is insane. No, uh, no, no, but no, you yeah. guys have amazing content on LinkedIn. Please follow these two. Uh, so Ridvan and Hanan, thank you guys so much. Thank you. Awesome. And I think you highlighted to me that 3D Experience platform was all about collaboration, and that it really helped the collaboration with the 65 people around the world. So uh, this is obviously one of the. Enovia helped us to everything That's the power of the platform, all about collaboration. Thank you, guys. Oh, yeah, this, this, uh, <laughs> this, this tour has been magnificent. I will have to stop by. I, I will definitely have to stop by. Exactly, we'll be here for you anytime you want. Yeah, we, we, we're just getting a taste of all these booths, and I'm like, I want to stay longer, I want to stay longer. So I will yes. be back. Okay, Thank you, guys. We should have a picture, too. We have a photo booth here. Oh, I'll be back. Yes, yes we need it. Okay. Thank you, guys. Nice see you. Bye -bye. Thank, you. Thank you, guys. All right. So. Where are we headed next? You know, Jesse, I don't know that everyone knows this. We've actually, uh, we were in Dallas uh, not too long ago, right? We were. <laughs> so yeah. we, we, did, uh, we did something very similar uh, last year in Nashville. We recorded some amazing uh, customer stories. We had uh, Kara Tucker from Gibson Guitars. Yep, we'll be set, at our desk. Yeah, she'll be at our desk day three. We met her then. Yep. Um, but one of the places that we were at was E-Muscle Cars. Yes, it was. Uh, E-Muscle Cars, we were connected uh, through a, a mutual, mutual colleague here. And uh, yeah, we talked to this guy for quite a while. As you guys will soon see, we have we two great customer stories coming up back to back. Of the muscle car and, yep. and Americase, but uh, you may have seen John Paulo sneak out in one. Yeah, and you saw that as well. That's that's a great point. Uh, you're, you're you're definitely more of a car guy than I am. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it, it, we we talk about this in the, uh, in the in the video itself that you guys will see soon, but definitely an experience uh, that you enjoyed. Hey, yeah, Kevin, hey, howdy guys. what's up, man? Hey. How are you doing? Good you. to see you. Yeah, you too. Yes. You're live. You're on the internet. You're live. <laughs> <laughs> so we were, we were just saying right after this. We're going right. to see our session together. Awesome! Like our, our 15 minute video. We thankfully went out to your your shop. But yeah, um, what's it what's it been like? What's the atmosphere been like? Uh, it's been great so far. A lot of good reception here. Yeah. Um, you know, every car guy definitely has stopped by. Mm -hmm. uh, every engineer and tinkerer kind of wants to see how we how we convert the cars, and they, uh, they've got a bunch of great questions. Yeah. Um, had some guys from Tesla stop by. Uh, you know, cool. Curious. If some of our cars are. Uh, repowered by by Tesla Motors. Yep. Um, some use Borg Warner Motors. Some use motors by other other manufacturers. But uh, it's been it's been exciting and fun to talk to these guys and kind of explain what we do. 
Um, you know, everybody's got a project car in their garage that they, they come <laughs> talk to us about. Uh, so it's been good, it's been engaging. I asked you a very atypical lead-in question because we have a lot about what you guys are, what you do, probably like the best possible case because we, we, we went to see you, right? We went to see you and not the other way around. Uh, so yeah, we're going to pitch it right to that video. Okay. Um, so here it is. Uh, you guys are going to see a lot about eMuscle Car directly from uh, the eMuscle Car facility. But uh, Kevin, thanks so much for coming, man. Yeah, of course, guys. Thanks for having us. Yep. Welcome everyone, we are live here at eMuscle Car. I'm Sean, this is Jesse, and this is Kevin. Kevin, how's it going, man? Doing well. Doing yeah, well. It's, Welcome it's, to the it's shop. Great to see you, man. We're just like surrounded by such cool technology. Uh, we found out that you guys were, were in the Dallas area. Of course, Dallas is the, the home base of, of 3D Experience World. If you could explain uh, for our viewers like exactly kind of what you guys do. Sure. Uh, um, so the genesis of our company, uh, I'm a, I'm a Motorsports gearhead and the uh, professional background education in mechanical and electrical engineering, um, but with a passion for racing cars and collecting old cars. And one of my, my business partner uh, also is a classic car enthusiast. And he bought a couple cars at one of the fancy on you know TV auctions, and one of his cars didn't quite make it home from a dinner date with his wife. And he realized, you know, I'm not the guy to own classic cars because I'm not the guy to fix them and wrench on them. I, I enjoy the cars, I love the cars, but I'm not the guy that wants to spend a week in the garage getting it ready to drive the following week. So he called me and he said, Hey Kev, yeah, uh, what do you think about maybe? putting the old body on top of a new electric car, you know, a, a maintenance-free car. And I said, well, it's a lot more complicated than that. <laughs> um, I said, well, it'd be a lot easier if, you know, we took some of the, you know, appropriate sized and spec uh, EV components and we put them into old muscle cars. So we replaced the powertrain, replaced the drive, some of the drivetrain components, replaced some of the braking components, steering, handling, and so forth, uh, and, and control systems to modernize the older cars. But you still keep the core and the structure Mm -hmm. and the the feel of the of the of the vintage vehicle so we we started the company as a project really and meanwhile my business partner's talking to his buddies and mm -hmm. kind of bragging about what he's doing as a project and we got a lot of interest yeah so with that interest we decided to kind of put our money where our mouths were and and start e-muscle cars uh, if we had that much local interest we soon would probably have a lot of national interest maybe scale it out right and and luckily we kind of have Obviously, we knew it, was a, it sounds simple. You pop an electric motor in here, you're good to go. It's obviously, simple to say. It's obviously, it's obviously <laughs> way, hear. way more complicated than that. I, myself, uh, I think I'm a 21-year SOLIDWORKS user. Okay. Um, started using it in about 2002 uh, when I did some Formula SAE uh, racing programs in my university. Um, so we adopted SOLIDWORKS. I've used it professionally for ever since. And so um, it was a no-brainer to to kind of integrate that into our designs. Every one of our cars uh, is designed in, in CAD or virtually before we, we, you know, we make the first cut. It really lets us um, scale and streamline the business and test. Uh, like in the blue car behind you, uh, that car originally is designed for a large V8 and a, a rear differential. Well, that car has an electric motor between the rear wheels uh, and batteries up in the front. So the, the frame is highly modified. Uh, our motor cradle that we design here is constructed and put in the car. Well, we wouldn't be able to mate those two components and make it repeatable if we didn't use CAD. We can really fit it in there and we can scrap a design and redesign something in a day versus weld something up and get it tested and built and tested in the vehicle. We can test it virtually uh, using SOLIDWORKS and, and simulation. So we drew the whole car in CAD, the whole frame, um, and then we were able to also create all of the subcomponents, motor cradles to get the motor itself, axles, battery systems, wiring, cabling, junction boxes, all that, and fit it, you know, like a puzzle. We can really optimize our designs and, and get them perfected for not only strength and uh, function, mm -hmm. but for serviceability, uh, making sure it's removable from the car, making sure we can get to every bolt with exploded views and making sure we've got enough room. You can draw a fastener and a nut in a certain space but if it's a three inch bolt and you've got two and a half inches behind it, it looks great when it's assembled, but then you're like, oh crap, you know, you can't get it, can't get it uh, apart. Mm -hmm. So really using exploded views and, and things like that 
and really building the car once you've got the components designed is even a helpful tool that most people don't think about. We try to make all of our cars highly serviceable and our goal is to make them maintenance free really. A Camaro is not meant to hold a big battery box in the trunk so we have to reinforce the train, reinforce the trunk. We add our own frame to the vehicle that's also suspended mm -hmm. and isolated from the chassis to support those batteries, mm. uh, their weight. And the motor, uh, obviously it's meant to hold a V8 and a transmission. Well, we're putting a motor that's smaller than both of those things. So how does it mount, you know, does it mount to the transmission side? Does it mount to the motor side? Uh, how do we balance weight? Um, getting all that in virtually is, it lets us really get a, uh, a better than original weight balance on the vehicle. Um, a, it helps us optimize trunk space. You know, we can say, oh, okay, we can lay batteries out in this shape without picking up heavy batteries and loading them into a car and wasting time and resources and energy building battery, building prototypes. Mm -hmm. um, we can do everything virtually. So it's been able to, it's let us really, uh, you know, go from zero to 60 quickly and, and also scale, uh, make it extremely scalable. Like I, I, look at, I look at what you guys, like you talk about whole alignment and I just think about just the fact that this is a car, this is a vehicle, so many parts. Uh, are, are you guys using 3D scanning today? Like we or has it evolved or so, you know, what's, what's going on so there? So we do use 3D scanning, a more organically uh, designed frame that doesn't, you know, have very linear dimensions and mm -hmm. things that that nature like the Camaro behind us. Mm. Um, that car benefits big time from 3D scanning, especially because some of the frame is built into the body. Mm -hmm. It's not a chassis on a frame, so you can't take the body off. Uh, we can remove the front part of the frame, but not the rear. So getting that, that vehicle scanned and the trunk size scanned so we can optimize and maximize battery space get it as low and as centered to the vehicle as possible is really important to us. One of the big projects we use 3D scanning on that we're launching in 2024 is a Bolton EV kit for first generation Corvettes, so 53 through 62 Corvettes. We, we purchased a couple frames that are out back, uh, raw frames, rolling chassis, 3D scan both <laughs> to look at differences. So we had a couple different years and we can, you know, we add datums to, their, uh, to the model so we can measure from, from datums, from center lines, center points, where axles are originally to really get our motors positioned and our, our motor bolt-in cradle developed. And the suspension on those old vehicles is awful. They're almost a nightmare to drive compared to a new car. Older vehicles are, are very more engaging uh, to drive and, and require a lot more effort. So one of the things, our goal is not only maintenance free, but to modernize the entire drivetrain of the vehicle. Mm. The magic tool that let us do it was 3D scanning and using SolidWorks to incorporate modern independent suspension in that, that vehicle so it can handle and drive like a modern car versus like a truck, mm -hmm. um, you know, with a solid axle and antiquated suspension. So we were able to really, really in integrate a lot of new modern equipment that would have taken a year to do manually and get the geometry correct. When in SolidWorks, we can do it in minutes and days. Well, I think Jesse might kill me if we spend any more time talking about CAD. Okay. Uh, and it's so awesome to hear about all It's my all second things. favorite thing. Sean. Yeah, it's the second, favorite, second thing. favorite thing. But Jesse is truly, I think between the two of us, he is definitely the car guy here. So can we, can we take a look at, at some of what you guys are, are developing here? Most definitely. So this car is a brand new car. We work with, with Shelby and Superformance, uh, the manufacturer of licensed Shelby's. Mm -hmm. uh, so we buy the car brand new, no motor, no transmission. And we, like I said, we 3D modeled the entire frame of the vehicle and developed our own motor cradle. So we have a jig that goes on the vehicle, uh, installs cut here, cut here, drill here, drill here. Um, we, have a, we have reinforcement bracing that goes in the back, uh, in, between the struts, in between the shock towers, and then in the back of the transmission tunnel to reinforce the frame. And then our motor cradle plugs into those pieces mm -hmm. and then the additional holes we drill with the jigs. And so our whole cradle kind of plugs in, replaces the trunk frame, replaces uh, kind of the rear, uh, let's call it non-critical uh, frame mm. components. Mm -hmm. um, we utilize the existing differential mounts in most uh, in two of the three sides it's mounted to. So we really keep the, the structural integrity of the, of the chassis. We don't, we don't touch any of that. Everything we do is, is post suspension. However, our, our, our frame in integrates a motor cradle for a, uh, Tesla-based large drive unit. Okay. Um, their their fastest single motor drive unit, uh, plugged into the back of this vehicle. Um, we're able to pretty much seamlessly integrate all the electronics. So <laughs> it's funny. It's funny you do that, Kevin. Right. Not, not to interrupt you, but uh, I find so we we ha I have an EV. Uh, I have a Volkswagen ID4, and I typically will go to there's like a shopping outlet which has a fleet of Electrify America chargers. 
and I was talking with a few of the guys here about this. Every time I go to Electrify America, someone is looking at me and, and wanting to ask questions about EVs. A lot of people have never even seen a charging port still. <laughs> they don't know how, how it works, you know, what, what the range is like or Could you or imagine any of what it looks that. I get when I pull up in this? Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, very confused. You like, you're, a Tesla like you're an alley. Volkswagen, you know, Volkswagen or uh, so many you know, questions. Or a Volvo, it's one thing. But. You get all the muscle car questions and then you get all the EV questions too. You also get a lot of the I can't believe they did that. Can't, <laughs> yeah, so let's 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 talk about that. I can't I can't believe they did that. So you are they yeah. in this case. <laughs> yeah. So um you know what is what is the reception when someone uh becomes aware of 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 e muscle car? You know, is it so, is it mostly like hey it's hey it's cool or uh, wow, I can't believe we changed these muscle cars like this. Like, what is what is the the reception so far? So the reception from like our our customers is is exceptional, um, and you can really tell who the discerning car guy is versus who the you know the the Monday morning quarterback guy on their couch. You know, says, ah, bah humbug. That's me. Um, uh, no, so, I don't say bah humbug. You know, he's <laughs> the discerning the guy who doesn't guy. understand the technology. Um, you know. These cars are much faster than the original V8s. So I can't not only are yeah. they near maintenance free, um, they mm -hmm. are instant torque. So the 600, 600 to 625 horsepower, but with instant power off the throttle. Uh, zero to 60 and somewhere around the three seconds, sub three seconds. It, the driving is smooth. The brakes are, are improved. We have electronic uh, powered brakes. Uh, this car is so lightweight it doesn't need it, but some of our other vehicles, like the Camaros behind you, have electronic power steering. Um, so we've, they've got, um, in fact, that's what we're doing on the blue one behind you is installing uh, HVAC and uh, air conditioning and heat today. So that car is getting a modern electric air conditioning system. Hmm. So it uses an electric compressor, it uses a smaller, more efficient, more modern AC system. So we, we attack the car from all angles. We improve it not only with an, a modern electric drivetrain, but modern brakes, modern steering, uh, you know, all the modern components that really make a car comfortable and enjoyable to own and drive, not just pretty to look at. Jesse, you must, you must have a, a billion questions about just, just um, you know, I guess just more of the, the car aspects of it, right? Yeah, I mean, I think the weight distribution is the most interesting thing to me on these because obviously, you know, electric components are, they're heavy bits and pieces, not that a 427 isn't, but like the weight is in very different places, right? So how, like you, when you... Uh, so uh, actually in this particular car, the weight's not in very different places because most of the weight for this car was the where, batteries. where the motor is. Sure. Uh, and now the battery's in the exact same spot as the motor. Weight is actually better on this car than the original. Um, the batteries weigh, you know, less than a, a V8 and the motor weighs more than the differential. Okay. So before the car was probably 60-40, yeah. if not 65-30, you know, a little more aggressively front balance, front weighted. On this particular vehicle, it's, it's almost 50-50 because yeah. we've added a little more weight over the rear axle and we've added a little less weight over the front axle. So the car's a little more balanced. But what is the biggest sort of a reaction you get from people who aren't used to EVs when they get into the car and actually are, are in it, whether they're driving it or they're a passenger? What is So great question. Um, it's almost the polar opposite of what people may say about the car. So what, do, the, what more, do people they say so about the car? The number one question we get from 75% of people is, what about the sound? Yeah. It doesn't make any sound. The sound, you know, the, the, that, the, the rumble, the rumble, rumble, right? Exactly, yeah. exactly. So uh, that's the last question we hear from anyone that's actually ridden in one. Uh, uh, it, you know, <laughs> the smile on their face and the holy <laughs> that was quick. Uh, they could, you know, when you've gone zero to 60 that quick. They're powerful. So you actually, yeah. you actually accelerate at over a G which is faster than your body falls out of an airplane while you're free falling. It, it's quite incredible of an experience. And to most go of us can, en fast. we can envision that. I hope uh, those of you watching at home haven't had that experience. <laughs> Skydiving. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, oh, that's true. Yeah. Safely. Um, yeah. So the, the cars accelerate extremely fast. Yeah. Once you've driven one, you're like, and people are like, oh, wow, that car, is that car electric? Is that make, it's not making any noise. It's what makes it unique. So why would you want to copy it by putting speakers underneath the, the trunk of the car to mimic a, a V8 that it doesn't have? You know, it, it, it almost masks some of the cool features of the car. A lot of the naysayers, oh, but it didn't make the noise. And then a lot of the uh, adopters are, yeah, that's the point. Hey, do you guys want to see how these drive? Or do you just want to hear about it? <laughs> well, you're not going to hear it. You want to hear <laughs> Yeah, that's true. Good point. All right, let's, uh, let's actually get in the car. Sound good? Sure.
Hey, so if you're joining us here in Dallas, you can actually head over to the 3D Experience Playground and you can witness an e-muscle car yourself. We're live at 3D Experience World 2024. We're at Americase. We're actually in a shop, which we love to be in. I'm here with Chris. Chris, how's it going, man? Good, man. How are you doing? Great, great. And Jesse as well, my co-host. Right, I'm also here. Uh, so yeah, it's awesome to be here. I, I was mentioning to you guys, as soon as I walked in, I got this warm feeling. You know, it's a full sensory experience, right? You hear the sounds, the smells of the shop. Uh, so firstly, you know, you guys are uh, a company that's local to the area, right? Yes, sir. Tell us a little bit about Americase. Well, we started as a, a mom and pop shop kind of deal. Uh, started making cases in the sporting good industry in 1984. It, it's grown from there, and um, now we manufacture everything from products that go to space and beyond. Here lately, we've gotten into a lot of the hazardous goods movement, uh, whether it be compressed gas, whether it be lithium batteries, things of that nature. Those are the hot topics now. You know, one of the things I found really interesting, uh, again, just talking to you and just researching your company, is the fact that you guys, you know, you guys make cases and there are different industries, right, that you could apply to. Um, how much of a how much of a sort of carryover is there for making a case, say, for uh, combustible gases and batteries and, you know, just all the different industries? Like, are you finding you have to modify your cases quite a bit or is it kind of more of a one size fits all? We've kind of got it now where it's streamlined to where we can take one and change the technology a little bit. We've, Interesting. So now, but it wasn't it wasn't always that way. It wasn't way? always that okay. way. No, no. We had we had a case that would do this product and a case that did this, and we figured over some testing and things that we were able to kind of merge them a little bit and make them to where it's a little more you know streamlined down the road. A lot of people come to this conference for SolidWorks for design. Even the ways you guys design have changed quite a bit, right? Right, yeah. So you guys originally, you guys couldn't have been using SolidWorks. Yeah. SolidWorks wasn't even around back then. Correct, yeah. Uh, we, we picked up SolidWorks in uh, 2008. 2008. So before that, everything was made by hand. Everything was trial and error. We made it work. We, you know, we'd work here, we'd do that. Um, and then with SolidWorks, we were able to dr design in three dimension and produce things that we were not able to be tolerance-wise able to do before that. So how does, how does SolidWorks kind of you know, I'm thinking we're probably thinking, you know, configurations and saving duplicates or saving, you know, duplicates of an assembly and just making tweaks. Right. How does SolidWorks kind of play into that overall design process for you guys? Well, we were able to do a lot of parametric stuff to where we can have the software do our work for us. It can take it, it can stretch it, it can move it. And then if we need to add a feature, we'll add a feature. Um, whereas in the past, what we, were have, we would have to, you know, draw it out in a flat, you know, and then let's try it and bend it and let's see what happens. Well when you get multiple layers trying to stack on top of each other and you try to put a rivet in two holes, they don't line up. Mm. With SolidWorks, we're able to line up two or three or four layers of things and have a fastener go through the first time. How much, I mean, how much does, a, you know, you're kind of hitting on it now, but like how much does the, the role of like precision play into your products? Um, like in terms of like, you know, fitting different types of products into your cases. Like how, like, how, what, what, like in terms of working with tolerances or like, I always like to ask this question of almost sure. any customer. When I came here from my previous job, I was working in the architecture world. Well, in the okay. architecture world, a quarter of an inch is close enough. Yeah. I come here and they start talking and they're like, yeah, we need to have this. The customer would specify, yeah, I need this within a few thou. And I was like, what's a few thou? <laughs> you know, so it was a complete and utter, oh, no. So we figured it. So I had to get that figured out. Then we, we had to figure out, you know, she, I was new to sheet metal. So I had to figure out, you know, bend deductions and, you know, the tolerancing and bend allowances and K factors and all that sort of thing which when we laid it out in CAD initially, we, were, we cut our first cases on a CNC machine that took six hours. And then we took it to a press break that was manual and we bent it up. And then we put it together and said, oh, that doesn't work. Yeah. <laughs> and so then we moved a few holes and then we did that whole process again. SolidWorks allows us to be able to have all of this stuff that goes together and we can verify with the customer, okay, we're within a, a 30 seconds of an inch and it, we're good. Mm. You know, we're able to hold a lot tighter tolerances and things like that. We've also been able to implement with some other technologies, some 3D scanners and things like that. You know, we were able to scan parts to put them inside cases and build off of that. So we've been able to make stanchions and frames and things of that nature that we never had the ability to do prior. It sounds like this is, this is a big topic for you guys, I understand. It sounds like you actually interface with your customers a lot. Absolutely, yeah. No, we, we collaborate with our customers. We work with them from the inception. And we, you know, they say, here's our part. It's a high value product. It's a hazardous material. It is what it is. 
We've got uh, some consulting firms that we work with for the hazardous materials side. We work with them on the design side to say, here's what we need to do. And then we, we guide them into, this is the type of package we would recommend. This is the way we think you should ship this, you know, based on the 35, 38 years of experience that we've had with through all the different providers, through all the different industries. And so, you know, we work with them. It's a collaborative partnership is what, whenever we work with the customer, that's what we strive for. I'm sure, you know, if, if you go into an industry and you don't really know much about it, you know, I've, I've never designed cases before. I've never worked with a customer who needed to ship like very valuable materials before. It's just not something in my, in my background. You might think, okay, well, I might, if I picture a case in my mind where I would go to get a case who manufactures cases, right? right you, you, most of us would, something would pop into our minds, right? right? Yeah. Uh, but I guess so that's that's kind of what you guys bring to the table, right? Correct. It's that sort of specialization. Correct. Yeah, we the case is always the last thing. <laughs> it, it, the case is the last thing. It's, it's usually the last thing on the customer's yeah. mind. It's, it's a, hey, we've got this product we spent the last three, four, five years developing. Oh, no, how do we get it where it needs to go? Mm. And now yeah. it's what next? Yeah. And so we're able to take work with the customer. We're able to say, okay. Here's, here's your part, and where can I touch this? Where can I not? We work, you know, what do I need to do? Uh, we, we do testing in-house where we can test, you know, ex with accelerometers, G-forces, and things of that nature. If, if they've got critical, you know, sensitive items that can't experience a certain rating, fragility rating, we work with them and say, okay, here's a package that won't, your product won't exceed this amount of force. And so we do all that as well. So that, we set up, you know, initial meetings and design with them and try to get all, all the requirements figured out beforehand. And then that way, at the end, everybody has a product that is going to last you know, the test of time while containing and providing protection. It's cool that you've almost taken like, <clears throat> those resources that were going into all of those efforts to try to trial and error and getting those right. things right, like producing all of that. And then it's like, well, you can take those resources and focus on meeting your customers' needs instead of trying to figure out you've got your product so right. dialed in now that, you know, with those resources and software is that you can then focus on the customer instead. That's really cool. Absolutely. Yeah. No, that's the goal is it? I mean, anybody, you can go and buy a shelf, a case off the shelf. If it, if it fits, it ships that sort of scenario that, and that's fine, but is it really going to make it? Is it really what right. they say it is? You know, we, you know, we sell, we sell ourselves. Yeah. And then that way we can, you know, collaboration partnership and that, that works well. Yeah. That's very cool. So, how has your uh, how has your your solvers usage kind of evolved over time? You know, like the, the customer needs of changing or evolving. Uh, you guys are clearly growing. Sure. Uh, we talked about how your your factory has has expanded. Right. Uh, even within the span of like three years, yeah. just almost like quadrupled in size. Uh, so how has your solvers usage kind of changed over time with that? Well, I like I said, coming from an architecture CAD background, uh, you know, I didn't have any SolidWorks experience when we first started doing our hazardous gas. Uh, cases it was uh, this is the only way we we're going to get there and so I jumped in the deep end we we got SolidWorks um, I had a cousin that knew it from college and here we go I love stories like that and, yeah. yeah yeah and so you know it was you know 80 hour weeks for two or three weeks but yeah. you know we had it we all knew that there was a deadline looming of when this product had to go to market because yeah. that's when the law goes into effect and so we made it work and looking back at those I mean it was it was hilarious to see how crude and rudimentary it was <laughs> And, you know, even to today, I mean, we're, we'll pull an old program and be like, really, what is, what was that? I and, did this? Yeah. yeah what, I, everyone has that who, feeling. Yeah, yeah. Who made this? Oh, and it then, was and me. Then, yeah. And you go look at the properties like, oh no, it's my, that's yeah, it got my me. name on it. Yeah. So, you know, and even, you know, like I said, we had brought on a couple of new engineers and, and even the stuff that I've learned from them in the last several months has taken us, you know, to the next level. Yeah. It's been interesting. There's always something new. There's always something to grow on. There's yeah. always something new. That's the great thing about a conference too, right? Yeah, yeah. Every, we say it every time you, we go. It's like, even for as long as we've been doing it, you go to a conference like 3D Experience World, you always leave with something new. Like, sure. I Definitely. had no idea you could even do that. Right. That's so cool. You guys, this is actually, we, we were in Dallas not too long ago. Mm -hmm. I want, I'm going to say it was, someone's going to get me on this. Yeah. It's live, right? <laughs> uh, I want to say it was like 2017 or so. And you, you were there, right? Yes, yeah, sir. We, yeah, we made, yeah, we made it out. Yeah, so you guys made it out. Um, talk to us a little bit about, like, just the value of going to any kind of training like that. You know, I think, like, thinking on my end, I, I started much the same way. You know, I got a, I got a copy of SolidWorks that's out to me. It was, like, right right around, I guess, this is, this is college, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. Just tinkering around and making stuff. It, it looks representative of, of uh, you know, the type of device I was actually looking to, to design. 
but you know, I had undefined sketches, like everything was like oh, yeah, yeah. spaghetti, it was crazy. <laughs> um, but talk to me about like some of the value of just going to those sorts of training style conferences or events or whatever for SOLIDWORKS. Well, I think a lot of it, a lot of it was, we don't know what you don't know. Yeah, it's you the know? biggest thing. Yeah. We, we go in and it's like, oh, this is, a, this is a course that grabbed my attention. I, you know, I don't really know whatever it may be, you know. And then you go in and you're like, oh, that, oh, you can do that. Oh, it does this, you know. And, I think the first thing that it grabbed my attention at one of those was an equation driven uh, like pattern yeah. or, you know, if then scenarios and things like that. It's like, oh, you know, if I'm doing this, I don't have to redraw that every time or I don't have to suppress all this. I can do I can, you know, have equations draw it yep. for me. When we started, everything we did was a one off custom scenario. And so we spent a lot of time designing a, a box for one thing that we sold to one customer specifically. But as you can, you know, around here, you can see we've got lines that we sell to multiple people and we make a bunch of them now. Yeah. And, and the beauty of it, getting further along and knowing how to do it now is I can let the software draw and do my job for me. Mm -hmm. You know, I can add in the little features that make it a customized product yeah. that's for this particular customer or that one. But I don't have to go and start with a sketch every time and rebuild it every time. And so that's that's been that's been huge in our in our business. It's interesting just looking around and seeing just so much of what people are working on here, all the machines. Right. I mean, you guys pretty much are going end to end. Like you guys are, you know, designing your products, of course, in house. Yeah. Um, you know, you guys, some customers will talk to you, right? There's no right or wrong, but it's, it's just what you're doing based on your capacities, your needs, right. your, your wants, what you want to take in house. You guys are doing so much in-house. Right. We do everything from the design. Uh, we do a lot of the assembly. We do we up to even drop testing. The UN packaging testing, uh, we're certified to do that as well. So we can do it all the way up to there. Uh, we've got some, we've got a paint department that we can paint things. Um, but yeah, I mean, start to finish, it's all done in-house. Interiors, we, we do the foam, we can do the, you know, the plastic inserts, things like that. It's all manufactured right here in our facility. Awesome. Where... Where's like the biggest, if we think about AmeriCase today, you know, what are you guys most excited about as a business? Like, let's think uh, maybe a year, two years down the line, you know, where are you trying to get to? Like, what's your biggest area for growth right now? Pick the who's who out of the Fortune 500 uh, in the technology sector, in the auto industry sector. We're, we're working with them currently uh, on developing packages for what happens if something happens in the future. You know, a, a fail safe of, Oh no, my product's gone bad. I need to get it pulled in real quick, and I need to have something already established. We've already we're, we're working on that. We're doing that. Um, you know, we're trying to take our technology that we've got now, working with other industries, working with other you know manufacturers to say, if I add your product, what does that do? How can I make this better? How can I make and take this into another niche market? And so, you know, we've established an R and D team to be able to do that kind of thing to where we can push forward, keep pushing the envelope and trying to figure out what's, what's the next thing. One of the things I really appreciate and admire about your company, as you told kind of the story of it, is how you've just navigated yourselves in right. these different areas of growth. Yeah, we couldn't have done it without the software. I mean, like I said, when we did the first one, we cut one out and we said, oh, and we moved a few holes. Uh, you're not going to make any, you're not going to get anywhere doing that, you yeah. know? And so it's been, yeah. It's been fun to, to see and all the different, you know, things that it's gotten us into. You know, we've gone from, we've been able to go from this, you know, the Stone Age to the Space Age, really and truly in about the last probably 10 years. Without SolidWorks, it wouldn't have been possible. And I feel like, you know, almost the successes are sort of in parallel, right? Because SolidWorks is always doing the same thing, trying to look ahead, like, what might our users need coming mm -hmm. forward? And you guys, you know, that success is very looking forward to, okay, what are people going to be needing? You would, you know, if you knew nothing about AmeriCase, you'd say, you know, people have been making a, a box for forever, right? I, right? I don't know when boxes were invented, right? right. But, but forever, but it's so cool to see a company that makes a product like that, like thinking so far ahead, what are people gonna need to be right. using these things for? And I think that, that success is kind of shared in that sense. It's, it's, yeah, it's so symbiotic, right? You think about conferences as well. Um, conferences are kind of where, you know, that's, that's kind of the, for, the forcing function of what, why we came together, why we're having yeah. this conversation relating to, our, to each other. And that just happens at the super macro level right. at conferences like 3D Experience World. So if you've never been to 3D Experience World, I think this is a bit of an ad, like please <laughs> uh, you know, consider joining us next year uh, for, for 2025. Wow. It's also weird to say that. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. 2025. <laughs> um, and uh, Chris, surely you know, we'll hope to see you around the corridors. 
Maybe go into a sheet metal class. Sure. Although yeah. at this point, you probably don't need it. Yeah, you can teach one. <laughs> we can teach one. You can teach one. That's fair. Press there you go. Right. Yeah, we always need new instructors. But Chris, it was a great chat with you, man. Appreciate it. Great to see Thanks you. Thanks a lot. What's up, everyone? Wow, it's been a while since we've been at the desk here. It does it's, feel it's, like it. Yeah, today's been long. It's been crazy. We have like the grand finale here, though. Oh, <laughs> Arya. <Thank you. laughs> oh, me. <laughs> uh, Arya, what's going on, man? Man, I'm having a blast. Yeah. This is, this is amazing. I'm yeah. enjoying it, really. Yeah. It was, it was really nice to see you in your element uh, you. earlier today in the hive, you know, getting to meet new people and kind oh, of taking yeah. it all in. Yeah. What did, what did you caught me off guard. <laughs> well, did the hive catch you off guard? Because like it caught me off guard this year, and I've seen it every year. You know, yeah. since it, it was great. It was absolutely insane in there. What, one thing in particular that caught me off guard was that um, that um, what was the name? Rap adapt adapt. Rap yeah. Adapt, yeah, man, that was impressive. Yeah, that was really impressive. Yeah, uh, that that was impressive. Yeah. Uh, you, you have a great connection yeah, with Rapid Adapt as well, right? he, he does amazing work. He so does. cool. Did you see his eye tracker set up I and did. everything? And I was so cool. impressed. I was blown he away. He's an yeah. impressive guy. Yeah, he has specialized. I, I noticed I was kind of looking, because, uh, we were, yeah, we were talking to Devin, uh, and he has, like, specialized SolidWorks satins uh, set up um, that I saw just along the, the command manager area. But, yeah, it's, uh, you've, 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 you're kind of, I guess, at this point, I know this is the last part of day one of live, right? But you've, this is, like, you're at like the half day mark of the first day of 3D experience world. <laughs> uh, so, so yeah, what's it been like? Have you called any sessions or what, what's been your, your kind of experience? Like what kind of stuff did you check out? Well, first thing first, this morning at the general session, I did not expect most of the stuff that I saw. It was the AI, that bit. Mm -hmm. I was expecting it, but not like that. And uh, also all the other modules, the great people that came mm -hmm. and talked, it was amazing. I was just uh, hooked all the way, and I didn't know what to expect. So yeah, that was that was above my expectation. Awesome. Yeah. That's awesome to hear. Well, we've been saying, you know, this is the, kind of the, the the grand finale for for day one. We'll be back with day two and day three, uh, with with different streams. Uh, but yeah, Ariane, we wanted to have you back here. Many people, we, we've joked about it off air and on air. Many people know who you are uh, for your great SolidWorks content on YouTube. You have 100, 170, t I think, yeah, a bunch I of, think, I think you have some fellow fans. People, yeah, <laughs> yeah we're, we're always getting distracted by yeah. people just like yeah. walking by. <laughs> yeah, some students, some people. Uh, I, this is the first time, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be honest. I did not expect this either. And uh, people coming to me, knowing me, and they look at me like, I kind of know you. And I was like, should I know you back? But <laughs> <laughs> should I know you yeah, back? This is, uh, this is new to me. And it's, uh, I have to learn how to deal with it. Yeah, yeah. It's, it, it's a cool experience, man. Yeah. But uh, yeah, we're here to, for you to do what you do best. You know, t t tell us, teach us uh, tactical topics uh, okay. about SOLIDWORKS. And we went over some of the things you were thinking yesterday yeah. uh, when we caught off for the first time. So I'm, I'm really excited to, to get into it. Um, so yeah, if we, could, uh, if we could show, I guess, Ariane's feed, um, I'm excited to see what you want to get into, man. Well, I wanted to start with some of the when tips, not the how tips and the what tips. That the what tips are, oh, this tool does this and it's cool and how to do this is also another thing. But one thing that I have noticed that uh, is missed by a lot of my students is that they don't know when to work with what. Because as you both know, there is always more than one way yep. to come to the solution in SolidWorks. So yeah. when should you choose point uh, route A, when should you choose and why? and why? So this is, I think knowing this makes the difference um, between being a good, and a fluent modeler and just being a little bit of a beginner modeler. So I wanted to cover a little bit of the when tips like that. And cool. that starts with the design intention a little bit for me. As um, most people probably know, uh, 
sketches in SOLIDWORKS have different states, mm -hmm. underdefined, fully defined, overdefined. And there are different ways to fully define a sketch. You could either work with the smart dimension, add the dimensions, you could work with the sketch relations, and add the sketch relations. And knowing um, your design intent should define when to work with smart dimension and when to work with the design, um, sorry, sketch relations. So over here, um, I'm going to create a block with a hole in the center of it. Very simple, but what comes out of it is the concept that I wanted to put more uh, lights on. Okay. Um, and I want to take it a little bit slower, one step back before I even fix the block, talk about where to place the block in the first place because it kind of spins off into a different tips of its own. Sure, okay. it's kind of your, your base feature, right? It's like your, your starting <laughs> point. Yeah, so let's just give two dimensions to this uh, rectangle. Should we have it at uh, 10? And, okay, the units don't matter at this point, and five. Um, I've seen a lot of my students and uh, people who are starting off with SOLIDWORKS for the first time, they would like to place their uh, rectangle like this because naturally it gives them the positive X and positive Y, mm -hmm. and maybe it has the word positive to it, but it doesn't matter to SOLIDWORKS. What you are missing if you go down this route is having your planes cutting your component in half, which can be super helpful if you want to have a cross section later, if you want to um, select that plane as an entity in assembly to mate it, if you want to mirror something on both sides, it's always helpful to have um, your uh, planes cutting your components in half. So what I do recommend is instead of doing it like this, there are different ways to fix this, but I would go with the center rectangle and I just recalled our conversation, how to say, I have to include that too, but that would be cheating, that's not my tip. And uh, yeah, just, just as you know, we, we have a bit of a break here, if anyone has any questions, I want to be checking my phone. Oh, please. I always tell people whenever I look at my phone, I'm like, hey, I'm not, not the, WhatsApp. you know, look at, yeah, I'm not on WhatsApp, just like texting people. Uh, so yeah, we're, we are truly live on YouTube. If you guys have questions, uh, I'd, I'd be happy to take, take a look and, and relay them on. And same goes for the live crowd. There is a microphone up here too, so if you're watching us here in person, let us know. Feel free to step up to the plate. <laughs> okay, now that I have the center rectangle placed and the coordinate system, the zero, 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 is at the center of the rectangle, I'm gonna add the dimensions, what was it? 100 by 50, doesn't matter at this point. Now, I said I wanted to place a hole on the center of this rectangle. Let's just draw a circle um, on purpose on the side and there is one way to place it on the center using this uh, smart dimension of course sure. I can uh, go ahead and assign 50 to the X and 25 to Y and it does the job for me uh, if I look at it short term but if I want to consider this uh, for the long haul I have to take into account that at some point I might have to iterate this component. Sure. I have to come back, change the X and Y of the block, and if I do it like this, while it works right now and it's perfectly on the center, I have to change the X and Y for the center of the circle as well. Yep. And this goes down to your, to your design intention and design intent. If you want the circle to be 50 from the side and 25 from the top, Yes, you work with the di smart dimension, but if you want it on the center, you don't do it like this because I'm gonna state the obvious, but if I do this 300, the circle is no longer at the center. So the right way would be to work with the sketch relations and assign the right um, relations to it. It's interesting, Ariane. You know, I, I know a lot of these tips are sort of derived from your, your dealings with, uh, with your, your subscribers, your followers, with your, your students, right? Yeah. Which we'll talk about, uh, yeah. you know, your classes and uh, the individuals that, that you mentor. Um, why do you think it is uh, that people avoid 
uh, and maybe that's the wrong word, but they sort of stick to using dimensions, like in this case, for example, for, for sort of centering of, of, a, of a sketch. Is it because uh, the dimension, I'll go through the simplest example. The dimension tool is active, I'm just going to add dimensions because I know the dimensions, and I don't want things to move around anymore. I want to move on. I want the sketch color to turn uh, black, a different black. color. Is that, is that, what is this sort of driven by? Be, you know, when you pick up a tool, yeah. it's often easier to just carry on using that tool sure. yeah. uh, than I just agree. going, putting it back and use a different tool. But you are missing on a lot further down the road, right? Um, For me, it's a hammer. Yeah. That's my tool of choice. <laughs> yeah, if you want to open a screw with a hammer. Uh, <laughs> You know, um, yeah, they have the smart dimensions active, so like, oh, okay, let's just add, I know the half of 100 is 50, so let's just do that quickly. That quickly would cause you, I don't know how many minutes, depending on the complexity, complexity of your model, days later when you're assembling everything together, right? Mm -hmm. So it would actually cause you hours when you wanted to save a couple of seconds. Sure. You need to know when you should save what? Yep. So I think it's also probably a little bit of mindset too, because if you're just starting off with modeling, you're thinking a little bit literally, right? You're saying uh, dimension, 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 dimension. Where when you understand how modeling works, uh, or you have a better understanding of how modeling works, then you can take advantage of that to say, I know what's going to happen, right? Yeah. So there's there's a little bit of like a mindset shift. Like I know how the system works, so therefore I'm going to do it a little bit differently. But if you're just starting out, you may you might not know that, or you might not know to even think of that. Yeah. So I think it's That's probably so a little true. combination of those things. That's true, and uh, I think that understanding, that mindset comes with experience, yes. right? The more you do it, the more you can predict, uh, this is one of those cases, yeah. I have to do it and like to that. be honest, I think even just having a name for it, having design intent, you know, we can talk about it as a as that mindset element, I think that even that helps. So, you know, going to training from you or a reseller or something like that, you get assigned that name. And it's like, okay, yeah, that's the thing that I'm supposed to be doing. Absolutely. That, that helps keep it top of mind anyway. For sure, for sure. Okay, so now the hole is on the center of the block. I can extrude this, let's just do 50, just for the sake of, and what I just did was a mistake on purpose. Uh, in my humble opinion, it's not a mistake, but I would like to recommend not doing it like this as much as you can. Maybe your design doesn't allow it and you have to do it, but if you don't know what your design allows or not, it probably does allow it. So I would not recommend just going blind and extrude your block in one direction because as I said, the more planes you have on the center of your component, the better, and right now, Oh, sorry, I'm uh, not used to this mess, but the more planes you have on the center of your block, is be the better. And right now, I have one of the planes sitting and on one of the surfaces. Yeah. So basically, I'm wasting one of my entities altogether, right? Yeah, why does that, why does that matter? Because um, you could, to create a 3D geometry in SOLIDWORKS, basically, you would need in most cases, to start with a 2D sketch. Mm -hmm. And in, in order to draw a 2D sketch, you need a plane or a surface, a flat surface, right? Mm -hmm. Right now, I have six flat surfaces and I have three planes. So why would I want to merge one of the planes with one of the flat surfaces and lose one of my advantages? It, I can leverage this in having, it, having more um, planes at my disposal. So if I do it mid-plane like this, now, I have three planes cutting this component exactly in half, and I have six perfect flat surfaces, so I have more options now. It's all about having options. Mm -hmm. So if you limit yourself early on in your design, it's going to be tougher and tougher the more you just go and add and modify your component. Yeah, very so rarely is a design asymmetrical in every sense, right? There's always, the almost always some you, symmetry somewhere that you can take advantage of those tools, but true. if you lock yourself out of it, then you gotta yeah. jump through some more hoops yeah, to try to Yeah, that's something it, I, right? I, I remember hearing uh, quite often, you know, the idea that, well, it isn't really a symmetrical design, but as you probe, right, sometimes you'll find that uh, what they really mean is it is not exactly symmetrical. Right. But to your point, yep. well, some that features, means you can, you can still take advantage of that, yep. right? So that's. Yeah. That's, yeah, it's very, very important. Yeah, it's a great point. I mean, 
I, there are cases that I don't necessarily do it like this. For example, if I just want to show it quickly, when I have a design that has two circles instead of one, and the, the second circle is not on the center, then it's not symmetrical anyway. But I would like to start by placing my main circle on the coordinate, system, coordinate point or the origin. Um, it's always nice to use the uh, origin on something important. So the more you have, the more options you have later, the better for you, the yep. more flexibility you have in your design. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. You might not know if you need it, yeah. but there's no reason not to have it later. Absolutely, right? yeah, that's sure. it. Yeah. Well said, very well said. Um, okay, so this was one of the when tips. I have another one coming up again, awesome. a couple of minutes. But uh, I think I can get rid of this block. Yeah, that's, let's do it. I, I'm just checking in on the chat. Uh, I see you have a fan here from Turkey, just reading some of the, the more recent messages. Uh, hello from Turkey, amazing presentation. Uh, so really getting into it. Thank you. So thank you, thank you guys for viewing. Uh, so once again, anyone who's out there uh, in our little audience section here, so it's kind of a hybrid presentation in a <laughs> sense. If you have any questions, feel free to step up and ask Arian any, any, any SOLIDWORKS questions related to uh, the presentation, anything that Arian's presenting on, and likewise in the chat uh, here on YouTube. We are live. Any questions you have, any technical questions, uh, feel free to, uh, to interject there with this one. Our live, live audience and our virtual live audience. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We never know. I mean, you know, TV is live. Like, we talk about this a lot. Like, TV is live, but sometimes that stuff's recorded, right? Yeah. So <laughs> it, it, it is a live we debut of content live or a live airing of content, live. but it may be recorded content. This is live, live. You, live, you can live. see even, even through the, the clock in the corner of the screen. So, Sean, the next um, tip that I have, oh, I wish I, oh, it's fine. The next tip that I have, it's not as basic and it's not about the, when or the design intent is actually kind of a workaround okay. um, to assign equations to the number of patterns, whether it's linear or circular for the sketches. Mm. And I think it's kind of helpful and I have actually benefited from this in one of my actual designs that I did at work. Um, there were like a portfolio of different stands with different sizes that we had to make. Uh -huh. And uh, instead of just spending eight hours on each design, you spend eight hours to create the base sketch, assign the equations to it, and you just change the variables and you just generate as many sizes as you want. And that's a huge time saving factor. So I want to talk about that. At the moment, I, I'm going to cancel this, go to tools and go to equations and just assign one variable of A. I just give a number. Between one to five? Four. Four. Okay. Now, linear pattern um, in the y direction. Random number, 30. Okay. Over here, if I just press equal, the symbol, mm -hmm. to assign the equations, I cannot. Yep. And I would go with four. That's fine. And as you know, you see the number of uh, instances that you have created here. Yeah. If I double click on that, I can assign it here. <laughs> so it's kind of a good workaround. And now if I, maybe I just go here and change it to six. Cool. Yeah. This that's, is. That's, all, yeah, it's. When we we talked we were talking about patterning yesterday. Uh, yeah. A lot of times, if you double click on a pattern feature, or like you're doing here, if you're you're doing sketch uh, sketch patterning, you yeah. get a dimension that you can work with and you can configure. And yeah, sometimes it might not I mean, it might, might not be obvious. And in the case that you just showed, it doesn't even work uh, <laughs> in the in the interface <laughs> where you might expect to typically do that kind of thing. Uh, but nonetheless, the dimension can uh, be a, you know sort of assigned to an equation, and that's that's a really cool yeah. tip. Speaking of linear patterns, uh, I want to go back and edit the sketch. And there was a time I used to think that once I used a sketch uh, pattern, whether linear or circular, it was gone. It was an interface lost under layers of code. And if I wanted to edit that, I had to delete everything and redo it. Yeah. You know about uh, 
patterning features, you can always go and edit it. You yeah. get the same interface, you can edit it. But over here, it looks like in a sketch, and I see the number here, but I cannot find where that interface is to edit it. And one thing that um, people can do is to go here, display the relations, and you get every relation that is assigned to the sketch over here. Good tip in and of itself. Um, yeah. Yeah, well, true. <laughs> And um, you can see the pattern is listed here. Right click on that, edit pattern, and you get the interface Whoa. back. And now, so you that say there was a time that you didn't know that was there. For Sean and I, that was any time before yesterday when, <laughs> when we <laughs> talked at coffee. I, I, no, I, Neither I really, of us knew well, that was there. I, I did not know that. Jesse and I looked at each other like, when was that added? Where is that? Is that? I don't, I, I don't and know. you know what we always say? Is that even in the help anywhere? Right. It's like it might, might very well be, but we we didn't know. So nope. that no, that was I that didn't was know that, one. that was a, yeah, that was a really cool tip. Let us know in the chat, by the way, uh, if if you know know oh, about yeah, that. Be honest, please. <laughs> uh, no, that's 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 a very cool tip, and uh, it adds to the flexibility, like you said, of sketch pattern features. Yeah. Um, yeah, because that was that was always historically at least that was a consideration of mine, uh, whenever I was choosing if there was a case where it, it seemed like it was an either or of using a feature-driven pattern versus a, a sketch-driven pattern. Yeah. So yeah. Now what I'm curious is if there's any other way to get back there. We messed around a little bit yesterday. We couldn't <laughs> find any other way back in, except for there. But I'm curious, if anybody knows, put that in the chat, because yeah, I want to know. Let us know. Uh, let us know in the if chat. there's another way back there, I, I would love know. to know it. And this also brings me uh, to the next uh, thought that I have. So this is the state of the things mm -hmm. as of right now. I would carry on doing this for couple of months maybe years and at some point you can see oh it's added there so it's another tip of its own that makes SolidWorks really interesting to me it's never boring there is always something to look up to oh there is this new thing they added that if you remember uh, in very older versions you could have not added an equation to the value of your extrusion. You can mm -hmm. do that now. Mm -hmm. So while this is a tip today, might be an obsolete tip in a couple of years. So it's always uh, good to just go back and check what you think you know. And uh, I thought it's worth mentioning. So yeah, sure, 100%. Yeah. That's just good life advice. <laughs> Whatever you think you know, check it. Check it. Check it. <laughs> yeah, why not? Might change. Why not? Yeah, it, it's it's you know on, on on Jesse and I's team we we put together the the what's new content uh, and you saw a bit of that from some of our teammates on on stage today, uh, and so naturally we're focusing very much so on what's in the what's new document and what you will find there, right? We're we're make that's that's what's going into the uh, you know the scripts and the the stuff that we show uh, within the videos, the what's new videos, of course, but. You, you look at stuff like this and there is so much inside of SOLIDWORKS and so many different types of software that at conferences like these you just come across and uh, what might be more interesting or more impactful for you might be less so about what's new and the particular version of SOLIDWORKS that you're using and what just so happens to be new, newly exposed to you. Yeah. And I think that's, that's so cool about conferences like these. That's so true. Yeah, it's crazy. The next uh, tip that I would like to bring on, which is a newly added feature to, to, to SOLIDWORKS 2024, is something that's so simple, but it's so helpful. And a lot of times you wish like, oh, I wish it did that. I wish. This is not one of those times. I did not see this coming and I'm really happy that it's here. And this is like for assigning dimensions to your entities, to your sketch. Right now, I don't see it, and thanks to you, I uh, <laughs> got the shortcut that is right here, preview sketch dimensions. I used to go and customize my uh, tools, the yep. menu, and bring it from there. But if you activate this, you already get the preview, and just double click on that and assign the new dimension that you want, and I think this is just really cool to have. Yeah, I love that one. Yeah, so. It's a good addition. It is. It is. People saying uh, things like "very good" in the chat about the uh, circular pattern tip. So I just okay, wanted cool, to cool. give you a view from, cool, from the outside cool. Very here. Very happy to hear that. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, and that that should even work even if you like control select a couple of things or an angle or something like that. I think you still get get previews. <laughs> the distance, yeah. Yep. 
Very cool. And I like that because there's there's a lot of things in SolidWorks that I like get developed for consistency purposes, like mm -hmm. uh, using control and select to add in mates. Okay, well that's the same way that you add in, in sketches, you add in your sketch relations. So okay, Th there's like a direct analogy, right? The same thing with that, hold control, add a couple things, that's like adding in a mate as well. I, I love that kind of stuff. Yeah. So, Jesse, for example, a lot of the tips that I add to my videos and upload come from my own frustration of dealing with SolidWorks when I didn't know the answer. Yep. So I assume a lot of other beginners, I still consider myself a beginner. It's just a... So do we. <laughs> yep. You, yeah. you are, I, I look up to you guys. Well, I do. You have to have a beginner's mindset. You yeah. have to. That's true. Yes. That's what I mean. You need to have that mindset because there is always something new to learn, and that's what I'm all about. Yeah. Um, one of the frustrations that I had was getting errors. Those mustard yellow errors <laughs> that you don't like, but you have to deal with them. Sooner than later, at some point, in an assembly especially, they appear. You need to know how to diagnose the situation, find the root cause, and solve it. Um, I'm going to create one on purpose over here. So I will have an underdefined sketch over here. At this point, it doesn't matter. It's not placed on the center. I'm not following any of my own tips. <laughs> I'm a very bad student. But <laughs> I'm going to have it right here. At least it's not being broadcast over the internet right oh, now. Oh, yeah, good thing. <laughs> <laughs> no one's watching. <laughs> now, I'm going to uh, combine this tip with uh, another when tip. So it's going to be a two in one. And I'm going to place a geometry, like a circle, and I'm going to extrude it into the component. Now, the value of the extrusion, let's just set it to 70. Why? Because assume this distance from over here, this surface that I'm uh, extru starting the extrusion from, to the other surface parallel to that, assume this is 80, okay? I don't want to do the actual measurement. Mm -hmm. And we don't care about the 70 over here, the value. We just want to have 10 uh, inches of offset. That, that's your design intent, yeah, right? Yeah, that's my intent, yeah. right? So I'm like, okay, this is 80, 70 would do the job. Let's click OK, right? At this point, everything is fine. And I realize, oh, there is some mistake in the drawing. So I'm going to go back and change this surface, this line. So I would go fix it like this. And I pay extra attention to adding the right sketch relations and on, on being a good student. Mm -hmm. And I use the trim entities and get rid of this excess line over here. And I click OK, and I see an error. Mm. So I would usually click on continue, and I see that mustard yellow error over here. Usually when you see the error on the feature level, it could be the feature, but I would like to extend it, see, OK, it exists also on the sketch level. So you have to dig deeper. OK, good. So sketch is the problem. You go here, and I don't read the pop-ups and errors. So I, I'm not a patient person, so I would like to work <laughs> fast. And I'm, 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 sure, I'm sure there are other people in the chat and other people at this desk to be uh, pretty <laughs> frank there? I that are the same <laughs> three of three. But um, <laughs> yeah, it's it, I the, one of the things uh, I, I remember mentioning uh, just to a lot of a lot of different uh, a lot of different users is the difference between you know yellow and red. Yellow and red are not generally good colors yeah. uh, in your feature tree. I, I would argue though, that at least they alert you to the fact that something's wrong. They do a good job for what they do. Uh, but yellow, in a way, can be almost more dangerous, right? Because the feature oh, yeah. is still, in a way, updating. It's still, in a way, yeah. uh, resulting in something. Um, and I like when you when you actually cascade or, or unveil the, the sketch underneath uh, the feature. You can actually see the feature itself if it is, in fact, the sketch. Yeah. And this this lends itself, I think, to your comment about patience. Because at least it tells you, oh, there's something wrong in the sketch. Yeah. So it's like if we're not reading the messages, at least know that, yeah. hey, it's in the sketch level. Don't go, go uh, around the feature. Because there's something the, up the, there. The message was there. I just ignored it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure, sure it happens. Yeah. Sure it happens to everyone Because here. I know more 
and I know better than SolidWorks. They cannot tell me what to do. I'm the boss. I would just go there and I'm like, okay, the sketch looks fine. I would just um, display errors. There is no error here. So what's the problem? That used to be my problem a lot of times. Mm -hmm. So needless to say, the error lies one layer beneath the sketch and it's on the plane level. If I click on edit plane, um, sketch plane, you would see it's a missing face because I went back, edit the base sketch. I got rid of that entity which had an ID. That face that was there initially was assigned to that sketch ID. Now that ID is missing, so that face is, uh, is gone and we have a new face with a new name and SolidWorks cannot know this is the same thing. And being a you know, proud <laughs> person. I'm like, I, I knew that. I'm going to select <laughs> the new one. And boom, problem solved, no error. Let's continue. But I forgot one thing. That What's design that? intent yep. that I did not pay enough attention to. I selected 70 because I wanted to have the 10 as offset. That 10, I doubt it's there because I moved the plane and the extrusion was blind. Now, let's just look at it. It doesn't look like a... 10 anymore it's much much closer than that yeah so because I was starting be from this level before and I was going down 70 now I'm starting here I'm still going down 70 <laughs> yep. so that's the design intent and that's where another win tip comes to mind instead of uh, extruding this blindly you need to offset it from a surface, right? Mm -hmm. Because your intention was, you did not care about the actual depth, you just wanted to have um, an offset of 10. Like in this case, so just set it to 10, and 10 brings it here. Okay. So See, uh, Amy Peterson in the chat saying, love the emphasis on design intent. Good advice, especially for complex evolving models. Awesome. And if I'm going to measure that, What do we have? 63.9. So 70 was good when it was 80. Now, I don't have to actually go ahead and measure this and do the calculations. I can just rely on options that SOLIDWORKS provides me with and work with offset from surface. So this is another when tip based on the design intention. And you can imagine, I mean, this is a two-feature two part. Um, you know, if you were to do everything manually and have to update uh, yeah, you're basically not using SolidWorks as SolidWorks, right? Uh, there's, there's no, there aren't really many rules in how you're developing your designs. The design really isn't agile. Um, so yeah, I think that's a, that's a very instructive point. Sean, you have worked with the Weldments module, right? Yes. And so have you. Mm -hmm. um, SolidWorks does offer all these cool modules like Sheet Metal. I don't see Weldments here. We could always add it uh, from here, right? Like weldments. But a huge understanding that I have gained recently after talking to, if I'm not mistaken, it was well over 140 students, is that many of them don't know or they know these modules exist. They just are not patient enough mm. to find out what these modules are for. A lot of these modules are designed to help them with their actual needs, but they are brushing over that. Okay, that's something advanced. I'm not welding anything together. I'm just uh, using a screws, bolts, and nuts, so that's not for me. And they carry on, do the work in a much more labor intensive way. And they can just prevent that and do it much, much faster in a smarter way and that's weldments that I wanted to bring to the attention of these people yeah you told me a really interesting story um, yeah and, and maybe you'll get to it uh, yeah but yeah just from one of your, one of your students and, and how they were modeling something versus how you could be modeling it in a much quicker more efficient way yeah so weldments is very helpful for structures when you have certain type of profiles that you are going to extrude in different angles and shape and forms, create a cut list at the end and send them to manufacturing. So if it's a I-beam, that's a profile you want it to have 
20 different sizes of same I beam. That's where weldment uh, becomes handy. And I, and not only one student, I saw this in many of my students that they were doing just that, only they were working with solid body design, they were manufacturing each and every uh, profile manually, extruding it, cutting it from the side, saving it individually, opening an assembly file, bringing them, assigning mates, and that is a process you don't want to face unless you have to. As especially considering mitered corners and those sorts of things. And oh, yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. And, and then, uh, like we were just talking about, something changes and it's on. That's nightmare. where the actual problem comes. Until yeah. to that point, it's, yeah. ha it's a hassle. Yeah. But you after that, it's a headache. Time, but <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. So the basis for that is 3D sketches, right? 3D sketches, unlike 2D ones, don't need a plane or a surface. You can just activate it and just go start drawing and I remember those days where I click on the 3d sketch and I work with mine like okay this is on the first plane yeah. this goes in depth this comes back out and this goes to the right and I was like okay that I can see it happening and then I rotated and it was, everything was on one plane yeah and I was like, okay another <laughs> time. I, will, I, will, I will come back at it again so I just wanted to solve this problem once and for all for uh, those Older, version of, or, older versions of myself who don't know <laughs> this is that you are always looking at your monitor, the canvas, um, one 2D plane at a time. Look mm. at it that way. And you can understand which one it is by just clicking on this option. This is an XY plane. If I want to rotate it down here, we have YZ plane. So this is how you should start uh, with your 3D sketch. Mm -hmm. Just look at one plane at a time and take it one step at a time. So let's just uh, draw a line. We don't have to get rid of the line function. It can be active. I can hold shift and press the arrow key to rotate my view. 90 degrees go to the YZ plane. Now I add another line. Now this time I'm going to the ZX and click OK. Now when I rotate my sketch, I get surprised. Yeah. I just, I am literally surprised. <laughs> you have, uh, and, and those, when you, when you mention uh, those, those relations, uh, those sort of uh, inferential boxes, right, you're getting different types of relations because it's a different type of sketching environment, right? Yeah. It's very cool, yeah. Now, this is a ske 3D sketch. Yeah, I've never seen a 2D sketch like that. <laughs> you, you see a 2D sketch? No, I was going to say, I've never seen a 2D sketch like that. Oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you cannot fit this sketch on any 2D plane. So that's what you need to work on before you can start with the weldments module because even if you want to take the, uh, what is it, CSWP-WD, right, is the weldments module official exam, you need to know 3D sketching. That's yeah. part of the exam. Yeah. It's like... Um, it, if you've never used weldments, in my mind anyway, if you've never used weldments, but you've used the sweep command, right? It's a very sort of similar process, right? Yep. Where you're, it's it's like you're you're mapping out your path, and then you're then you begin worrying about how do I apply my profile? Yeah. Um, and of course, there, there are different ways to do that, uh, but yeah, it, it does strike me strike me as similar in that regard. So you have your three D sketch ready. Then everything after that is the fun part. <laughs> where yeah. where yeah. you select your profile and actually see I some, agree. you get the fruit of your efforts <laughs> and uh, <laughs> you see some model. And I am going with the angled iron with this size and select my sketches like this. And after that, is, when you get the preview, isn't that just the best feeling in the world? Yes. Just, yeah, just in general, not just in weldments. Anyway. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> when you see this uh, specific. Um, yellow color of preview, it just already releases dopamine in my head. Yeah. Like something is working. There's, there's so much to be said for, for using this sort of method. Um, it's, I, I think the one thing that comes to my mind is you weren't really worried. We talk about sweeps. Almost every time you're doing a sweep, you're having to sketch some sort of profile. Yeah. I know there are exceptions now with circular profiles, but still. Uh, here, right, I didn't see you sketch uh, any profile. Yeah, right? it, it, there's there's a library of profiles, right? Exactly. That's yeah. that's the magic of weldments. Yeah, that's that's what you need to learn weldments for, and this is amazing. So, 
So it's knowing the tools you have, right? Yeah. Which at 3D Experience World conferences like these, right? For years, that's, that's so often been how you figure out stuff like that. And of course, you're following you know, people like you, right? And, and yeah, leveraging your, your knowledge and, and the things that you've seen. Thanks. I'm Very just cool. going to keep rotating the profile. With your <laughs> yeah, <list>. yeah. <laughs> you, you told me you do that. Yeah. I do the same thing. It's yeah. like, oh, I'm just going to keep rotating this. Yeah. There you go. But no, it's, you can see. Uh, a lot of times when I want to procrastinate, this is what I <laughs> you do. You just keep rotating. Yeah. <laughs> I just rotate my model. And then <laughs> so this is one uh, cool component that, for all you know, could be a very important part of a rocket yeah. that NASA sends to outer space. So we just did that. Sure. Yeah, very good tip. Uh, and it's nice because, like, I think y you make a really good point about 3D sketching being kind of a barrier to something as, as we would think as simple as weldments, right? Once you know what weldments are, it's like, oh, it's a piece of cake, that's a no-brainer. Yeah. But 3D sketches is definitely a barrier for a lot of people, right? Trying to get used to that initially, it's like it's very disorienting at first. It's like, what, where am I in space? What <laughs> am I trying to do here? Yeah. That's a great way to, to break it down into, okay, I'm uh, working on this plane. Now I'm working in this view. Now I'm working in this view. And then you can kind of graduate from there, right? Once you get the hang of 3D sketches, then you can just start you know, using the tab key to, to flip what, what plane you're sketching in, and you can just kind of work in 3D and know where you're going. But that's a great intermediate step to kind of get yourself into the mindset of, what am I trying to do here? Perfectly said. Once you get the hang of it, everything makes sense. Yeah. And it's just fun after that. Yep. Now, I made a joke. I said the fun part begins after. But yep. the truth is, once you get the hang of 3D sketching, you tap into a new world that you realize what SolidWorks can do. And it's not all SolidWorks can do. It's just you tap into the new room. I'm like, oh, there's so much more I could have done all these years. And I was missing on it because I didn't want to you know, take that couple of minutes of training. And once you get that, your world changes. I would say the same uh, right. in, some, in some regards uh, with, with sheet metal. You know, the other oh, modules perfect, that you yeah. mentioned, right? Um, yeah, yeah. It, can be, it can be confusing. How does this operate? How do I get this feature to work? How do we do a mutter flange? It's not working. Yeah. Uh, whatever. Uh, but once you do it once, you look up the tutorial, um, you, you know. You know, you I wanted to yeah, it's, include it's huge, that too. Yeah, it's and, huge. But it's, uh, sheet metal is a big blue ocean. <laughs> <laughs> it needs, uh, it, we have to sit down hours, talk about that. But I have received questions from my students again that they send me a component and it looks like a perfect sheet metal. It's, it's bent, you see the, uh, you know, the hem and all of that, and it's made from solid body, and they want to bend it mm -hmm. at a certain degree from a certain corner, and you realize they have not been working with sheet metal. <laughs> it just um, tells me that they don't know it exists. They want it. Mm -hmm. But to me, sheet metal was another feature of, uh, in SOLIDWORKS, like a solid body. I was like, what's the difference? I know surfaces have no thickness, but it does have a thickness, so let's just go back to what I know. Mm -hmm. And I would just see sheet metal and would go back for years, if I'm honest. Mm, yeah. Until I took it upon myself and uh, went on ahead and learned it, mm -hmm. and it just opened an another room for me. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, we were talking over coffee yesterday a little bit about how there's like, there's like a perceived kind of risk versus reward or something, right? When you know yeah. how to do something, you have a method that will get you to a finish line. Yeah. It's like, okay, I know what this is going to take. But if I go to try to learn a new one, is it going to take me twice as long to, to learn a new method? How much time is it actually going to save me? I don't know, because I don't know what that method entails or what it can even do for me, which is what I think, to, to Sean's point earlier, is so valuable about you know, watching any of the videos that we produce or you produce. Or, you know, we have this massive, great community of people who are sharing things. You know, to watch something that you may or may not need, I always find to be super valuable. Right? I, I don't... I, I'm constantly watching things that I don't know if I'm going to use it, but now I know that it can be done, and if I don't remember how to do it, I can come back and you know watch watch your video again, right, and see. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that's right. I, I at least remember that I can do this. There's a faster way. There's a better way to do this. Uh, maybe I'll go and figure out what it is. But if you don't take the time to be kind of gradually gathering those little bits of information. Then it, then you've got to stop mid project and say okay, yeah. Yeah. well let's see. Let me do. I have time to figure this out, right? 
but I love them. These these are small Easter eggs that I go and find. Yeah, it me too. Gives me more motivation and drive. Yeah. And now that uh, SolidWorks just is closed, I want to use this opportunity to cover another tip that should not be. Uh, you don't need SolidWorks open for this one. Okay. Um, and this is. Let's take a look. Uh, I think uh, I think the screen feed is oh. off here. Uh, yeah, if we get we could show uh, Ari on screen here uh, again. Ah, uh, there we go. Okay. All right. So yeah, so you went in. What was that uh, program there? So you just type wizard on uh, your own Windows, right? Okay. And SolidWorks settings wizard, and this is very helpful. And I learned it recently myself. This is perfect when you want to move your SolidWorks from one computer to another, or you're responsible in your department and you have. 20 uh, colleagues, they work with SolidWorks, you want to give them all the same um, format, the setting. You could save the settings that you have, including, let's see what we include. All the shortcuts, mouse gestures, look, it's here. Toolbar layout, keyboard shortcuts, mouse gestures, all the customizations. You save it wherever you want, and next time you open your SolidWorks in the different computer, you just restore that setting, and it's like moving your SolidWorks there, and everything is there, all the shortcuts, all the customizations, and I think it's a good tip. There, there are definitely at least two types of SolidWorks users in this regard. There are people <laughs> that customize everything, <laughs> uh, and I've seen so many different types of layouts. Uh, and there are people that customize nothing. I'm, I, def I don't customize much at all. Uh, I, I prefer when things are just sort of stock and clean. Yeah, and that probably comes from teaching. Yeah, yeah. it could, it could. It, I, I just I guess I just like to know that there's some consistency. Like if I'm yeah. if I'm using it on someone else's computer, but then I, I know of other people that have, you know, their command managers entirely, you know, changed. They have maybe they have custom tabs under command manager. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they have custom macros, whatever they you know, they have all this stuff that's that's different. Yeah. This this would be perfect, for example, you could just save their setting and put it on the side. You could load your own setting, work with it and then just load it back as if you were never there. Mm -hmm. And one thing that I do, I, I, I get your point that you don't customize anything. One thing that I do like to uh, customize is my mouse gestures. So you have it mm. on four on default, and you know you can just change it uh, up to 12. You could go down to four, and you could go up to 12, right? I've tried it all, and for me, the sweet spot is eight, because I can hit each and every one of these tools, at the movement of my hand, 12, you have to be super sensitive, and I'm not. Yeah, and you, <laughs> 12, yeah. yeah, I know. And it's... I don't need 12 tools at hand all the time. I cannot even memorize their exact locations. Yeah. So eight is the sweet spot for me, and I usually work with eight, but the default is four, and I encourage people to work with master just because it speeds up your process by a lot. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah, 12, 12 is quite a bit, and yeah. it doesn't, just because, you know, some people are, they'll say, like, I love my keyboard shortcuts, or I love my mouse gestures, um, or, you know, whatever, whatever it happens to be. You could do a couple different, you can, I love my S, S key shortcuts. Yeah. Um, you could do a, a number of these, right? Yeah. And, and like you're showing on the screen, they're context uh, dependent. You know, if, yeah. you're just in a part, if you're just in part mode, if you're editing a sketch, uh, if you're in assembly mode yep. or if you're in a, in a drawing. Yeah, you how great was this revamp, this newer style? I can't even remember when they added. It was probably six years yeah, ago. <laughs> <laughs> we were talking yesterday about it. It has whatever always been there. Yeah, if it seems like it's two years ago, it was yeah. six years ago. But whenever it was that they changed to this interface where you can search and drag and drop and copy between them, amazing. Yeah. I absolutely you could, love you that. You could drag it away and delete it. I yep. don't want to do that now. But there was a, it was either 2023 or 2024. They're, they're kind of bleeding together right now. Um, but in, in terms of shortcuts, one of the recent ones that I really loved was if you back out of here and just go you know, back into, yeah, just back in the part mode. If you press uh, S uh, for the S yes key and then you search a command. Um, yeah. So you can drag, let's say, uh, so we're in sketch mode right now. Oh, uh, should I sh let's, let's drag, mm. let's say. Uh, convert entities is here. Yeah, convert entities, that's but a good one. But it's here already. Uh, let's do. Um, repair sketch. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. So you can, dr you can do the, uh, yep. Oh, and, and you could also do the plus sign too, the same thing. Mm -hmm. um, but or to the command manager from there too, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. that's true. 
Yeah, but that's that's like a little trick, and yeah, it is, it so is. you can use your have your mouse gesture things, be your mouse gesture things, your yep. commands, your gestures, yep. and uh, I'll drag to remove. That's a weird obscure yeah. one as well. Yep. Y you know, I was running a, a short competition on my YouTube channel for the top five tips, mm -hmm. and I wanted to decide who had the better tip. Tip number one was something I learned from, I learned myself. <laughs> so <laughs> it was so cool. It just uh, it's so simple. And I love it because it is so simple. And that's just pressing D. Oh, sorry. Ah, uh, yes. It has to be a value next to your mouse. And uh, you get these two icons. The confirmation. Yeah. And I love it. It just, I don't have to go back. Because, you know, sometimes you right click and it's already there. You yep. can just right click if you're OK. <laughs> But if you move the geometry and if you're looking at it, then you have to look and find OK from the menu. But D is just there. Boom. D key, yeah. I, I think I, I forgot about that, frankly. But I remember favorites. learning it years ago as part of a Model Mania results review. OK. So yeah, it, it's in those sorts of contexts. That's why people will watch the results a lot of the Model Mania yeah. competition, because you can see, like, OK, there's, there's modeling this part the quickest, but that often sort of uh, begets understanding how to model any part very quickly and how to get out into and out of commands yeah, very quickly. Yeah. Uh, Chris Moet said, that he made a funny comment. Uh, so he said, add, add the S key to the mouse gestures if you're feeling adventurous. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Is Chris not here this year? <laughs> oh. hey, Chris. I'm sure, I, I, feel like, I feel like Chris is here. He's and, gotta be, uh, he's probably yeah. sitting in a corner watching us. <laughs> <laughs> um, the D key also to breadcrumbs. Right, the D key will take the breadcrumbs to your cursor if you're working in an assembly or something. It does? Yeah, the breadcrumbs will pop up. It'll bring it right to your cursor, which is super nice. I did so not know that. Expand that one I out a little bit that. the next time you're now there. Now we have, we have people giving their own tips here. So Sean, I've been talking to Sean, uh, Sean Talley in the chat. Uh, filtering, the feature, filtering the feature tree is very valuable for long trees. That's a great tip. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah it doesn't look like it, but you can actually type it. it yeah, sometimes dialogues yeah. look like that. Yeah, if, if, the, if the grays or the, the colors, yeah, they don't. To sort of, uh, I know yeah. exactly what you mean. Yeah. Um, uh, Chris said he couldn't make it. Chris, we'll, we'll catch you to the next one for sure. Yeah. Um, so I see uh, Milwaukee Solaris user group. Uh, so many of the best parts of the user interface come from finding stuff as close to your mouse as possible. Yes. Yeah. 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 Very true. Very true. It is true. They've had some really cool graphics on that over the years that have shown up, you know, on on main stage screens and things like that. But just doing you know some particular set of things and then they just trace the mouse around and it's like whew, how much you know one particular tool will will bring it in and you i feel like it's really easy to underestimate how much time that adds up just tracking all over that. the place it's, it seems like ah how much would that really save me but then when you start using them it's like oh my gosh this is this really adds up to a lot it does it does especially if you're working with solvers a couple of hours a day yeah. almost every day Imagine saving five seconds here, five yeah. seconds there. Yep. At the end of the year, you have saved hours. Yeah, and yeah, for sure. That's a lot. That shows. That shows. So everyone, uh, I hope you've enjoyed uh, this session. I know, no doubt, Ariane, you have more. I see. Can you just hold up? Uh, I, I love how you take notes. Can we just, can we just see your, your notepad yeah, here? That's my secret recipes. Yeah. <laughs> that's. I, I don't, I don't write scripts, but I just uh, <laughs> write bullet points. And I uh, find it very uh, productive with this because it's kind of like rotating a modeling SOLIDWORKS. You just change the color, you can uh, erase it, rewrite it, and kind of helps my with helps me with my productivity. I'll have to check out which app that is. Uh, yeah. But I wanted to give yeah. you, I know we have about uh, five, give or take five or so minutes. Okay. I wanted to give you some time to, I, I loaded your site in that tab you saw. Let's, okay. Can we just take a look at your site just, just again, uh, once again, yeah, just sure. kind of pitch your site and, and let us know I everything you have to, to offer. I, I did not load this. You, I, I, I did it, okay. yeah. <laughs> I, I, didn't, I didn't tell you. I didn't tell them beforehand. <laughs> yeah. But I even search, I, I always do this. I don't know if anyone notices it, but uh, whenever I, I show YouTube, I always have something in the search bar. I leave it there. So you can, you can search that same query. Uh, and we can also, you know, of course, we'll, we'll put your, your channel in the chat there. But yeah, SolidWorks with Ariane, you'll, you'll find, find you right away. But even if you search SolidWorks, you'll find you pretty quickly, Yeah, I've noticed. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, just uh, for those of us or who are tuning in, uh, maybe have learned of your, your content for the first time, we're like, yeah, I like, I like how this guy educates. It really connects with me. Just tell us you know, about your services, about your channel. Um, just want to give you a plug there. Um, you, know, you know how it got there when you search SolidWorks? I come up, I just started back in 2000 and, well, I started working with SolidWorks in 2007. 
and I was hooked and I was uh, working with it every chance I got and I became the go-to guy in university among my other students they would come to me and ask me to help them with their projects so that was cool and everything but the problem is that with that is I didn't have anyone to go to and not that I was the best SOLIDWORKS user in the world I just was the probably one of the good ones in my own class so sure. and uh, YouTube wasn't like what it is today you could have not streamed this live there was no yeah one. I was searching for SOLIDWORKS on YouTube I remember and for four years there were like three videos I'm not exaggerating it was one two three videos and all these th three videos were teaching how to create threads in SOLIDWORKS and I was like I know that already I just <laughs> somebody should put something up there and then at some one day enough was enough I said I need to be video number four it was 2011 Wow I uploaded a love tutorial I don't know if you have seen it I don't want to show it it's really embarrassing <laughs> it's every, uh, every I, I I talk about this a lot with people that other people that make videos. I'm embarrassed of basically everything uh, that I made anything more than a year ago. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I think it's, it's just natural. Um, I have to uh, look at it in my own videos. I'm glad I could not find it because people, uh, the top comment was, he's saying okay a lot. And I uh, looked at the video and I do say okay a lot. Mm. Like every two or three seconds, I'm okay, okay. I know. But no, nevertheless, <laughs> it got a lot of attention and I realized a lot of people need to learn it. So I put more content out there just to help others like me who didn't have anyone to ask. Mm. And uh, that's how my channel started. And gradually it gave me the goal of uh, going down this path because I realized I can pass a concept to another person uh, who is walking the same path I did. They're learning SOLIDWORKS, so I have done that. I have uh, felt all those frustrations. So let's just make their life a little bit easier so they don't repeat every single mistake I did. And I have kept that goal to this day. And recently I've just adjusted it a little bit more because I realized the community that is growing with me has evolved. Now they have more goals. They know how to work with SOLIDWORKS now. What should we do with it? We want to put it into practice. That's why I started to add the other modules to it. Okay, you work with SOLIDWORKS, now the design intent, now the weldments. Uh, somebody wants to work with SOLIDWORKS just as a hobby. Another person wants to pass their own uh, project at school. The other one wants to get hired, certified, and make money with yeah, that. Yeah, everyone has different goals. So yeah, they're, they're, Everyone from all walks of life are working with uh, the software for their own individual reason. And I wanted to help them all shift in the right direction that need, they need to be. So that's the new goal I have set for my course and my YouTube channel and everything and everyone who tunes in into my content. Awesome. I think that's a great place to leave it. It is. Thanks. Yeah. Well, everyone that's watching here in the chat, uh, please give uh, an applause emoji or plus one, uh, whatever you'd <laughs> like to do uh, for Arian. This was this is awesome, uh, and uh, yeah, we have people here in, in the in the uh, in the seats here just clapping. And uh, this was our first hybrid presentation here at the live desk. Yeah. Uh, so you broke ground here. Thanks so. for having me here. Absolutely, Arian. It was enjoy a pleasure. and enjoy once again. Enjoy your first Thanks, ever 3D Absolutely. Experience World. I uh, wanted to shout out as well, uh, as we see here on the screen. Uh, if you, like Ariane, would like to come to your first ever 3D Experience World, or if you aren't able to attend, like, like Chris here in the chat this year, but we'd like to go next year, we have this handy QR code. Uh, all It is basically you scan the QR code and you just enter in your email address, um, you, know, you fill it out, and you will get the latest information as it arrives on 3D Experience World 2025. And I can't say exactly where it is, uh, <laughs> but we will be revealing that during the conference this year. So, Ariane, thanks again, man. Thank you for having me, Sean. Cool. All right, so we are uh, we're actually going to head, uh, our next segment will be a daily close with our event host, our MC, uh, Tracy Wilson. We'll be going over some of our fav personal favorite moments of the conference, so stay tuned for that.
It is so hard to believe that we are here at the end of day one. Insane. Already. Already. <laughs> Already. It, I feel like it, it just started like a half hour ago. Right. But we're here with a special guest, Tracy Wilson. Hello. Hello. Tracy, of course, we have to have you for the, the recaps. You're bringing the energy from the start every single day. Well, it is so exciting. You know, when we talk about this lot, so we're going to call this, I think, Top 5 on Live with your host, host nice Highlight like Show. Top 5 on Live. Do we like yeah. Top 5 on Live? I like that. It's yeah. official. Yeah. It's we, sticking. We've taken a vote. Is that, is that good? It's is that good vote? <laughs> well, and so it's interesting. So what we decided is we're going we're gonna to find our Top 5 things to talk about. And then I had this idea that we would like rank. You go 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. But like, how do you choose? Yeah. It's impossible to actually rank. So yeah. we'll all talk y about five things, but not really in any particular order. You came to us and, and you mentioned the top five. And I was like, I, I can't. Like, I, I can come up with like the top five, just, just five of my favorite things it's that I've experienced, but I can't, I can't rank them today. I can't do that. It's too it's much. Too, ranking is too hard. It, yeah. it's, too, it's too much pressure. Uh, and it's a, you know, we're going to, but we're going to talk about our days. And like you said, how is it the end of day one already? I feel like Nuts. so much prep, so much energy, so much effort goes into it. And all of a sudden we're like, this day is over already? I know. Yeah. What? You know, one thing that I, I'm very envious of you over, you know, we, we get to speak with a lot of people out, you know, on the floor, in the hive, in the playground. Yes. We have a lot of interesting people like Ariane, of course, who was just yes. here. Fantastic. Uh, so that's all great. But some of the things that I miss, and of course, you have the best view of it, is the energy in general session, right? We had a lot of product announcements, a lot of really inspirational stories. We had Lonnie Johnson giving the keynote. I uh, don't want to say too much, but. He's on um, the list. But yeah, put so it on okay, your top so five, Sean. Put so it on your okay. top five. Right, ahead. <laughs> I was gonna say it's uh, so you know, might be on my top well, five. Right, some so of let's them go might for overlap. It. Let's go for it. Some so of them, some of them might overlap. Oh, right? I'm sure. Yeah. But yes, okay. I so have a feeling all ten of the ones you're gonna say, I'm the, gonna be like, oh, I'm gonna put that on <laughs> my okay, list. Okay, so it'll be our we'll figure it out. We'll okay. figure it out. Right? We'll figure it out. Live. We'll figure live. it out. Live. So um, let's start with Lonnie Johnson. Let's start with Lonnie Johnson. Yeah. And so like you said, um, I get to see the energy from in the room. I host general session, everyone comes running in. And one of the privileges about hosting general session is not only do I get to introduce our dignitaries of our event and also the keynotes, but I also get to hang out with people backstage a little bit. And that really is a privilege to get little, and, and you also get to chat with everybody yeah. here on the desk. And to get to know them also on a little bit of a personal level is amazing. Sure. So yes, I think I have, absolutely have on my list keynote Dr. Lonnie Johnson. He is, um, I was so, so if you don't know who he is, if you weren't able to be with us this morning or, or don't know him yet, you might know the Super Soaker water gun. So this is what he is most famous for. But what's interesting about it is he talked about how that invention was really the invention that afforded him to really work on other inventions. He has more than 100 patents for energy-related inventions. 
And I also thought it was really important to, he is a black man who grew up in the 60s. And he talked about this is Black History Month, that's very important, and how difficult it was growing up and the challenges that he faced as a black man wanting to be an engineer and the educational barriers. And I think that's important to note how hard he has come, far he has come because he talks about the struggle he faced. He talks about humans are built to solve problems. Yeah, I like yeah. that line right? too. And some of that was his own barriers and then his ability to invent. I just thought he was, oh, and here's a, here's a really fun thing he said in his keynote. Or, or maybe he said this to me backstage, I don't remember because it's so great. He said, as a kid, he thought, all the inventions had already been invented. He said that. Yeah. Right? Said that. Wasn't yeah, that great? That, that yeah. he thought they'd all been invented. It's like, oh, that's funny, because then you have to. Well, it's, yeah, it's funny. I, I think one of the most interesting things that I, I felt as I was watching his, his keynote was that very line. Mm -hmm. um, because I started to think, wow, like Lonnie had just gone through, of course, when he was a kid and yes. going through you know, the robotics uh, competition that he won, or the competition yes. that he won. And I was like, wow, I was thinking of all the technological advances. And I'm thinking of all the stuff that he wound up inventing. He has so many patents to his name. I've done a lot of research on him, especially yes. since I knew he was coming to the world. I was like, I have yes. to learn about this guy. Um, and to think that that person uh, had that thought. Yeah. <laughs> right? so, yeah, it, 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 I think it should force all of us here, regardless of what you're doing, if you're an artist, uh, a maker, an engineer, an executive, to rethink, like, has all, have all the great things been done in, in my sphere, in my area, right? right. And, and clearly, no, right? We, we continue to grow, and that was one of the things he talks about growth a lot. Yeah. And he said, you know, he encouraged everyone, you must persist. Mm. You must keep going, you must, because all the inventions haven't been, you know, were we talking about cell phones when he was in high school? No. No. You know, and, w what, and what's next? And he did talk about, like, the rate um, and how yeah. quickly things are being invented. When he talked about like the rock was a tool at yep. one point. Yep. I thought that was really profound as well. Yeah, I, I, I did as well. Um, it's, uh, I wanted to call this out. It's very topical because we're talking about Lonnie Johnson that tomorrow we're going to have the opportunity to, to do exactly what you said. He's going to be here. Yeah, so so he's going to be here it's as so part good. of our pre-show for the R&D themed general session. You can find that on our YouTube right now. So we'll have 15 minutes by ourselves uh, with, with Lonnie wonderful. Johnson. Yeah, just to, just to roam around. We have tons of questions for him uh, between, between Jesse and I. Uh, but yeah, I guess, uh, Jesse, what's one of yours? Uh, well, I was just going to say, we flip-flopped our positions this year, right? So I got to see the, <laughs> yeah, the crowd did. go by, <laughs> which was a lot it's of like fun. <laughs> we, we flipped over, and that sounds ridiculous to see the crowd go by and, you know, wave and say hello to everybody. But it does relate to what you just said, like, talking to somebody backstage, it was like, okay, that was maybe the highlight was just, like, talking to them individually. Same with Ariane, who we just had on. We were just yep. like, we had coffee <laughs> with him right. yesterday. Yep. And it's that's the benefit of coming here, right? Yes. Like, it's cool. It's, it's great that we can have the technology to stream this out to everybody and we can share as much of this with you if you can't be here as possible. But you miss the opportunity to maybe get the best part, which is just having coffee with somebody or talking yes. to them as they come off stage or whatever. Um, and that's mm -hmm. what I love. So just like seeing everybody going by and saying, you know, a hundred people that I know say, hey, how's it going? The one time a year we get to see it, it's got to be on my list. It's, it's, it's on the list. And, yeah. and I'm going to, so I'm going to flip around my list, I think, is, <laughs> is because I'm going to piggyback off some okay. of it. So, because speaking about being in the room, and this talks about being in the room. So one of the things we have to talk about was GP's entrance. Uh, yes. yes. Okay, GP's entrance. He came in list. on a 1965 Shelby Cobra, which Cobra um, e-car, and that was by Muscle e-cars. They had it, took out the engine, put it in the e-engine, and they're here. You can see his car. So if you're here and with us on site, <laughs> in front of General Session, you can see that car. They have other cars in the playground. You can see it from here. I we can see it from here. Oh wow, I see it. Which is kind of amazing. Um, but that was a lot of fun. But not only was it his entrance, of course, and his flashy entrance, which he always wanted to do. It's, <laughs> it was very fun. But he talked a lot about the 20th and 25th anniversary and how much the community has grown. Yeah. And I thought that was really wonderful yeah. to talk about this community. 25th time we've done this event. It's it's pretty wonderful. It's pretty Pretty wonderful to see how it's all grown, how this has grown, yeah, right? Yeah. How this didn't, we didn't, there wasn't the live desk on YouTube 25 years well, ago. I, I, don't, I don't know uh, whose internet at home would have, or at their office would have been able to support that. <laughs> I could I could barely check my email. <laughs> <laughs> all right, what's, ne what's next on your list? Um, so I was thinking about what you just said, you know, how things have changed. And, you know, we were all, we were all younger at some point. And 
we went through the playground, we saw all these sorts of different booths and all these different types of technologies. One of the things that I found most remarkable, or, or at least the thing that's been sticking with me the most so far as I've started to digest today, were the students uh, in the 3D Experience EDU zone. Um, the reason is I thought about, I started you know, to think, what was I like back then? And you know, working on similar things, uh, you know, but also I think one of the things I found most remarkable was how ready and willing those students were, at the skill set they had, the soft skills. Uh, I, I want to go back in there and, and say that uh, to one of the students that was, that was pitching his FSAE car. Wow. I was like, you sound like, like so many people, and to be frankly, so many, to be frank, so many people that have been doing this sort of thing for like 20, 30 plus years, their entire careers, right? Yeah. Uh, are not as at ease or as competent as explaining their, it is, it is a live present, it's it's a live, live, uh, live, you know. <laughs> but uh, they are not as at ease or as competent at explaining what they have, you know, put together as you are. And uh, I'm guessing he was like 15 or 16 years old. Uh, it's just, just insane. Is it, is it, do you think, the confidence of the software, a confidence of the community? Like, what do you think helps a young person in this industry have that confidence? Well, I actually, so I, I, I had the, the good fortune of working with a FIRST Robotics team over the past two years. Uh, and I mentored them as part of a project that we were putting on here. And I think one of the things that I found was that mentors, I, I think, are just a bit more uh, aware and a bit more uh, sort of encouraging about putting their students into those sorts of contexts, right? Because we all know, um, regardless of which discipline you're in in life, there comes a time when you're going to have to talk about your work, right? Uh, whether that's in a job interview or if you're pitching a company, you're looking for investment, uh, if you're looking to make a business deal, whatever it is, looking to make a sale, whatever it is in your life, you're going to have to do that. So better to do that when you're 15 and 16 as you're developing those skills, becoming confident in those skills and understanding that you know, my internal confidence can be conveyed uh, as external confidence. I thought that was amazing. That's what That's I love good. about those programs too. You know, like as a, a young engineer, you design and build a race car and go race it. Like that's a crazy cool confidence builder. Like we built this thing, we're out on the track racing other people with it. It's, it's a really cool experience. I was in there chatting with the SAE guys the other day too. Yeah, so that, that, was, that was definitely one of mine. I'm, I'm sure I, I, I wanted to pick, pick that one. Um, you know, it, it meant a lot to me, but I'm sure that probably isn't the last playground themed. I was going <laughs> to say, there's a couple <laughs> on my list. There are a couple on my list in the playground for sure. For sure. And with that, um, I never say, it's Brandeis University, right? I never say it exactly yep. quite right. Um, but the Makerspace team is here. And I don't know if they, but they built a combat robot cage yes, uh, with the did. help of SolidWorks. Yeah. It's here, they told me. They, That's my next stop right after this. Your next I'm, stop? I'm, I'm oh, going right there. <laughs> but not only that, but you can go in battle. Like, if you are here on site, you can go in battle. Like, you can do that. You can be a part of it. You can come not only watch, but you can participate. And this cage, they said in the last couple of days, 900 screws they had to add to make yeah. it work. SolidWorks <laughs> supported making this happen. It's going to go back to the college afterwards, so they're going to have it to continue to have these battles, which is just phenomenal that that's something that we help support, that they will take back with them to their school, um, to their makerspace team. So yeah. shout out to Tim and Len who I met. That was fantastic. And, uh, and they were really excited to have people come and try it in person to play with them. Yeah, the maker, the entire space was in my yes. list for sure the yeah. maker zone had so much we tried to get through there and we were like we, we have to leave we saw like half of it in our zip through the playground and we there's there was so no much. there was no there's way there's so much and there you really no do if you're hands that you need to commit some time to yeah, it yeah yeah just spend one of the whole days just in the maker zone yes super cool stuff in there yeah amazing. yeah that that was that was absolutely incredible um you know what we were able to to go through so yeah what what's one of yours jesse what's another uh, another top five I have an obscure one. Okay. okay. That's I good. think we've hit, we've hit a lot of the ones on my list already, yeah. but I have yeah. an obscure one. Um, this morning when we had Gian out and about uh, talking with people, um, Alin said that he liked people disagreeing with him. He liked mm -hmm. coming to teach ah. his sessions because he liked when somebody in the audience would say, actually, I do it different. And I mm -hmm. love that line because I totally agree with him. We have such a cool community of people that are really good communicators. Yeah. I, th I would say probably engineers are not being billed as good communicators, but for whatever reason within this community, I think we are. But I would totally agree with that. I love teaching a session and you say, okay, this is how I do it. Somebody says, actually, I have a better way. And I love that. That happens a lot at this event. And I, uh, 
I picked that line out. That's excellent, because isn't that the point, right? Iterate, iterate, get better, get faster, yep. get smoother, get share the knowledge. That's exactly. what this event is about, sharing the knowledge. That's, that's why we're here. That's true, yeah. I really 100%. like that. Yeah. I, think, uh, I think another one of mine, just as we kind of start to, to wrap up here, uh, for, for me. <laughs> I have so many more things. Well, I will so wrap up. What I, happened? I, I, I know. Okay, all right, all right, all right. Okay. So, so, so one of mine was definitely the Hive. Uh, it, it, it was absolutely insane in, in the Hive in all the best ways. Uh, we had people playing music. Yes. Uh, we had yeah. artwork. Uh, we had uh, three, model, three models up with an awesome space mouse you kind of used to, to navigate around it. We had great swag. Of course, and, and super interesting people. We had somebody doing a podcast while somebody else was filming. So it was sort of a mecca of, of creativity. Uh, if you're ever afraid about making good connections, whether it's through meetups in the Hive, we talked about those, or just making friends, like just going yeah. to the Hive to have a cup of coffee and, um, you know, whatever it is, uh, there, there's, there's, there's a place in the Hive for you. And I'm, I'm really proud that we created that space. Yeah. Yeah, that's so great. And I think that's this whole event. If you are walking around in this hotel, in this space, and you are wearing that lanyard, you see that badge, say hi to someone. Yeah. It is free reign to say like, oh, look, we are part of the same community. Yeah. This is about community. We talk about 25th anniversary of growing this community. So say hi to people in this beautiful community. Sean and I have said that for years, not just at this event, but if I find somebody that uses SolidWorks, I'll go up and say hello. And <laughs> That's great. I swear 100% of the time, you'll have an enjoyable conversation with them. I, yeah, they're, it's they're just universal. They're your people, right? Yep. Yeah. That's that's how that's how it goes. So you mentioned you have you have a lot. You have, okay, you have a lot right. of good I'll, stuff. I'll, just, I'll do one more. I'll do one more. Because I, I, you, you are so enthusiastic about this, I, I, I do not want to die. I, I know. Okay, well, I'll just I'll just do one more. Um, it, it's it's back to the playground. Um, I mean, the playground's amazing. I <laughs> caught up with Christine yeah. in Magic Wheelchair, which is like a favorite of ours. It's a yeah. favorite of mine. Yeah, for um, sure. I love to support them throughout the year. Follow them on social media. So if you don't know, they are a nonprofit organization that builds epic costumes for children in wheelchairs. But what she talked about is not only are they now working on um, making them fun from the outside, it's so great for everyone to see, and the kids yeah. are so good about everyone looking at their costumes, but now they're making them more adaptable from the inside, more having adaptive buttons, so it's enjoyable from the child on the inside as well. And I thought that was like, like we were talking about, how do we get better, how do we move forward, how do we continue on, how do we grow the community, and so I just thought that was really wonderful to listen to her talk about that. I, I thought so too. Yeah, they, they mentioned that when we, when we dropped by during our, our visit to the playground and there are a couple methods through which they were making it more accessible yes. right I, it, it, of course you, you know the the size of of the button that they were showing but also uh the cost mm -hmm. making it more cost accessible um so yeah it's just just huge and of course uh super super heartwarming super heartwarming 100 percent. yeah we we got a chance to visit a lot of interesting places uh, throughout the year. Yeah, I, I see we have some, some B-roll of the Oh, the, the VIP lounge. Here. Yes, there's a VIP lounge this year. So if you want to feel fancy, we, if we didn't even get come to, hang out in the VIP lounge. Yeah, we interviewed. If you're VIP. We'll get y'all VIP. Right? We, saw, <laughs> we saw Manish. Uh, we interviewed him right outside of the VIP lounge as we were setting up. But yeah, it's a, it's a nice space. We, have some, we had some robots uh, roaming around in the playground. Uh, technologically, I would say, and you know, uh, really, uh, I'm checking myself with bias. I felt this was the most uh, it, sort of advanced playground that we had. Um, just tons of different robots, different capabilities. And uh, it was, yeah. a, there were so many students and young people just busy, busy, busy around the shop floor, really into it, really excited. And I was like, oh yeah, this is, you could feel like the success yeah, of it. The bowl it felt, it felt really list. fantastic. Yeah, Chris has shown us uh, that, that bowl that they, they created. Oh, wow. It's interesting, kind of in the lead up to 3D Experience World, like Chris was putting on the toolpath for that and, and getting it all, all good and ready. Uh, we'll have to check in with Jen to see how many people have participated in, in, a, in Model Mania, right? Uh, she, she mentioned a, a funny factoid to me off air, so I'll tell it to you guys, that on day one, there aren't as many people as you would think uh, oh, participating really? in Model Mania. Yeah, and, and she, I said, why do you think that is? And uh, part of it potentially was that uh, people might be procrastinating, <laughs> a little, little bit intimidated. I was intimidated just standing by the booth. Uh, but maybe they're thinking like, hey, man, if I, if I mess this up, I don't want to be going day two, day three, knowing like I don't have my chance anymore. Aww. So they keep it till day three <laughs> when they're like, all right, it's now or never. I chance. have to do it. I'm, I, yeah. you know, I'm in <laughs> Dallas in this case. I have to do Model Mania. So I thought that was kind of funny. That's fun. That's pretty yeah. good. But you have to do it. You have to do it. You have to do you it. Have to do it. Yep. Yeah. So day three, she said, is by far the most attended of all the uh, Model Mania I'm days. I'm trying to get in Model Mania at the last minute so they don't miss out. So if you want to beat the crowds. Out. 
That's right. Go early. Yeah, go true. Early. Yeah, run on cool. loudspeakers. So if anyone wants to do model media, you can probably, right probably get there now. So, so what else? What else we got, Tracy? I mean, what, what other uh, types well, of? Well, uh, I just, I just say one more thing. I know. I mean, because we could talk forever about the <laughs> sure. highlights of our no, days I, I, because I we yeah. have a good time. I love to chat with you. Like you said, we both see it from different sides. Um, Oh, and speaking from my view from the stage in general session, there's actually a VIP section in there as well. There's VI yes, wow. there is VIP seating in general session. That's kind of cool. So something to think about for when you're here next year. VIP seating, pretty yeah. pretty nice. So if you're so you know if you're if you're watching you know we're winding on the stream here. I just wanted to show that QR code one more time. Great, yes. If you're watching today, this is this is by far you know the longest we, we we're streaming throughout the three days. Although we have purposeful streams the next two days. Uh, so look out for that on our YouTube. Uh, yeah, there's a QR code right there. If you want to stay in the Perfect. know, just like it says there, uh, stay in tune with all the news around 3D Experience World 2025 as it's released. Uh, we will make sure you remember. So just go there, sign up, and we'll make sure to get you, uh, get you the updates. Fantastic. But yeah. And we'll keep bringing the live the top, top five, but to top 73. And, you know, we're, we're going to keep telling you like, our favorite parts of the day, and it includes everyone walking by right now and getting to say hi. 100%. So tomorrow we'll be back. Uh, just, just to close up, uh, tomorrow we'll be back uh, fresh in the morning. We'll have Lonnie Johnson at the Amazing. desk as part so of our pre-show. Uh, we have day two general session, which is R&D themed. So if you're interested in the software side of things and how things are being developed and some of the most interesting use cases there outside of the walls of, of SOLIDWORKS and DASA mm -hmm. system with our actual customers, uh, definitely check that out. And then at a more specialized yes. level, we have these That's other right. streams. That's yeah. Right. We have design uh, as, as one stream, a, a full design domain session mm -hmm. uh, for design applications, use cases, and uh, design software using customers. And then something very similar afterwards as its own stream for simulation. And then uh, next up, we have manufacturing with some amazing uh, keynotes. I just actually saw some, some individuals from the manufacturing stream recently. So uh, we have a lot of great content in store for you guys. Fantastic. Uh, yep. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. Thank you, Tracy, thank for you. Oh, it's stopping my pleasure. by. It's my pleasure. Thank you, Jesse. This is my top five hanging out with you. <laughs> yeah, thank yeah. you to uh, Ian, our producer. Uh, amazing work behind the scenes. Uh, he's, he's always zipping around. Thank you to Kramer, our production crew. Thank you to all of our guests. And we'll, uh, we'll see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow.